Man, oh man, we tried to fix that spaceship and... Oof. Man, I think the bank has been doing something to it. We owe so goddamn much on it. We're so far behind. It's just... We might need to upgrade. We might... We might just need to upgrade, guys. It's... It's how it is. It's just... It's how things are, alright? When you steal money from large institutions with no intention to pay it back, it's just what happens. By the way, what's going on, guys? Happy to see you here. Happy Thursday. It's fight night. Are you guys ready for this? I fucking am. All right. I wanted to get way more practice in before this duel, but apparently this is going on. It's going to be me and Llama right off the bat. This guy's ready to go. He's ready to fuck. Ready for the smoke. And we're going to give it to him. By the way, RH, big cheers to you, man. Thank you so much. RH legend tier, bro. You are an absolute legend. We've got not only Strimmer versus Strimmer going on right now, but we also have two title fights. One going on a little bit later. And then Vegeta is going to have to get that title tested against Nightfall. And man, oh man. It's going to be rough. This ain't going to be easy. $9.99 from Fax. Spaceship repairs. Thank you. We're going to we're we're actually going to do that. We're going to put those right towards it. We thought we did it this week. The flux converter was more like a fucked converter is what it was. Replace that thing. But <laughs> apparently it's something else. Anyways, man, big cheers. Thanks so much, Fax. Really appreciate that, man. All right, uh, look, this is the card. We don't have time. Llama's ready to go, and we need to follow suit here real quick. $9.99 from yeah. Fax. Spaceship repairs. See? See, it's already repeating itself, but I'm glad it did, man. That deserves a thanks again. I, I really appreciate that. Look, I had to swap out and grab this because uh, I don't know if Llama's trying some cheesy shit. He's on his sorceress. So, uh, yeah, like, we need to be ready for anything. And, uh, this will make, this will ensure that we are. You know, it's just how it is. Look, I don't, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to, Impossible. I don't want to hear anything that you guys have to say about that. This is pro level play. You tell me you wouldn't play at the best of your ability if you had Mr. Lema SC. Trying to pull some juck fuckery on you. You tell me you wouldn't play at your the best of your ability. I certainly would. Okay, wouldn't be caught with my pants down, so to speak. No siree. All right, we need to get ready. We changed the uh, we changed the rules just for this duel. I mean, uh, the rules needed some updating, and uh, they recently caught some updates because of just they needed it it had been a long time and uh long story short uh we can sorb a lot more now which is really good actually uh extremely good so we can sorb a little bit more now which is handy You, you, look at him. Look, is he crying already? Is he? Is he fucking? What you need? Look at this. We just we just started this game. He's already complaining about the map. What is this, dude? Dude's already complaining about the map. All right. We should be looking good. Look, we we just gotta we just we just gotta jump in. All the we, we gotta make sure we're not on those, huh? <laughs> make sure we don't have our, our inventory filled in those fucking things. <laughs> oh man, that would have been a that would have been a mistake, huh? That's glad we glad we didn't do that. That would have been horrible. All right, let's check. Hold on. We got to make sure we're all jammed up. We're not. 
We need uh we need 125 cast. It's just how we got to roll. Uh Yeah, that's good. We don't have cannot be frozen, but hopefully hopefully we don't need it. $50 from M Power tie for hosting. J Whoop Datas. Send him back to single player. Damn straight M Power 50 bucks. What? Bro, that's what that's what we're going to do now. That's what we're going to do now, bro. Thank you so much for that uh dude, we got a we got a special cheers waiting for you right after this. This guy is like reds to go. We we're going to jump right in. There ain't no there ain't no hossing around. There ain't no hustling around, if you know what I mean. Did we already tag him? I think we already tagged him. I think we already get him with some. Oh, yeah. He's also cut open from that. Oh, he's so fucked. He's so boned. 1-0, baby. <laughs> he's so boned. Oh, wait. He says he needs okay. charms. No, just the open wounds. No poison. Or maybe... Maybe one poison. One... 1x451. Yeah, 1x451. Bro, it's not even it's one poison charm. How do you how do you feel about that one poison charm? How do you feel now? Legit Ooter. Is that too much? We're just I told you the skills were on point. You always got to keep people guessing. He thought I was going to poison. That was the thing. He specifically challenged me this week. And I, I knew he was ready for the poison, dude. So, I mean, we're not running any more poison than usual on this din. You know, the 451. Gotta have it. Hold on, we're, we're locking it in. We gotta be we gotta be fired up and ready to go. Bro, I, I think this is just the weapon to have. Uh we we were running with grief, but as you go, you, you guys know we love off just off meta weapons. If we're going to beat Llama, we got to think outside the box. We got to do some off meta shit. And I think this is a pretty good sword. Like. I think it's pretty decent. But there's also that one 451 that's going to make him think that it's poison. Like it's going to get hit and he's going to he's going to think that it's poison. That's right. That's right. Max knows what's up. Max knows what's up. All right, it's 1-0. Oh, that's that was open wounds right there. I was on sword side when that hit. He's caught. He's caught. I just saw him doing some speed runs with a uh, with a din. 
you should know this class in and out by now. We gotta be careful. Hold on. No pickup. We can't be We gotta we gotta park the pickup in the garage. Nice shot. I, d I didn't expect him to kick around. Too old, baby. Hello. We just getting in there. We just getting in there, man. He was ready. Uh, it's it's first of four. First of four. Yeah, wow. We're off to a good start. By the way, another big cheers to M Power, my dude. We got a few more where that comes from. We were we was on a tight crunch right away. Mr. Llama, very busy man. You know, he just got done going for a world record. He might have got it. I I I uh, fell asleep. But he might have got it. So we've we've got to be ready. This guy ain't this guy ain't nothing to fuck around with. We cut him we cut him open there, I think. We def hit him with a hammer there. I heard it. There was nothing else spinning. baby we on point today I just woke up man I, I just woke up I'm, I'm well rested I'm well rested my arm is feeling 50%. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Here we go. Bros, I, I don't feel like this was fair. I don't even feel like it was fair. I I just woke up. And he's been speedrunning all day. Alright, one more. Double or nothing. This is for all the marbles. Yeah, I, I figured we got to give it to him. Bro, we can't just easy him like that. Bro, it's... No, this is gonna... This is gonna be fucking easy. Do you think I would bet my marbles? If I didn't think I had it? If, if, I, if I thought I was gonna lose? What do you think? Llama's gonna hustle me? You think Llama's gonna hustle me?
perfectly placed hammer. <laughs> Man. The invis hammers. I placed that one purposely. Five, four minutes ago, I knew you were going to be there. He says, all right. He says, now the pressure's off. Let's do it. All right. All right. Fun duel. Fun duel. Let's, let's do it. He says, the pressure's off. The pressure was too much. That was a straight 5 0. Bros. It's on. Yeah, now is the real duel. Alright, hold on. I I feel like I feel like people are gonna say something about that. Did you get the record today? I was watching a bit. Yeah, thought thought you would. This one I'll use my correct hands. Okay. Stop going easy on me. I I, I want you to I want you to treat me like the monsters you try to slay for world records, all right? Damn, bros. This is insane. By the way, what's up, everybody? Big cheers to you. Another big cheers to Empower. Let's tip one back to this guy. 50 bucks. Him and Fax are going to get these spaceship repairs underway. I'm telling you. Next week, that thing's going to be fixed. Another big one to you, man. That was, that was what it was. I think we... We had just, we had just come off from some sort of interstellar uh, time redux experience known as like deep sleep. Woke up not knowing what fucking year it was, and then M Power comes in like that, right behind Fax, and I'm like, "Y'all are ready. Y'all are ready for this Thursday night, ain't you? Because I am too." All right, let's just beat up on Llama real quick. This guy wants to smoke. Oh, I lost my keys.
Bro. Bro, we getting better. Uh, 85-15. Yep, we running that 85-15. Yeah, rules got changed for this duel. I mean, they needed... They needed change. I'll go. Str I'll go straight seven five. I'll, or yeah, I'll go. I'll go straight seven five. It makes sense on Sork, dude. I easy everyone on ESFB. It's not even fair. I'd hate to do it to you, but I can show you if you'd like. Dude, he don't he don't even know, bro. That the the ESFB that shit is wild, wild. Like I I don't even think he knows. How asinine that is. Like that. Oh, all right, all right. Sec. Switching back. He's got to land the meteors, though. Meteors are where it's at. Like the true, the true fireball champion lands meteors. I should have gone I should have gone I should have gone this view for you guys. We did some new view shit. Oh, I got a bow. Nine, ouch. Or like or like two meteors and an FB. Gotta get good at the meteor, bro. It's a fine art. Requiring requiring forty percent lates. And 60% skill. I'm, I'm, just I'm just teaching him the ways. Alright, he says one more. Now that I know, I will play diff. Alright. Go, bro. Here, he's going to play differently. Oh, I don't have 125 anymore. I switched off from 125, I think. Yeah. Oh, we got Oak. There you go with that meteor. He got me with one. He got me with two. Now we're like a fireball away. What? We got too cocky with that FOH. He says easy. 
See? Much different. Bro. Bro. I didn't just lose all my marbles, did I? Good duels, brother. Good duels. Hell of a guy, man. Hell of a guy. We had to, we had to just whoop, whoop up on him real quick. Keep him honest today, you know? That's just what we do. We had to keep him honest. Wow, bros, so let's cut to it, huh? Holy shit! What a slaying! What a slaying that was. We had to give him one at the end. Come on. Come on, dude wasn't gonna stop doing until we gave him one. Yeah. He wasn't... He wasn't going to stop dueling until we gave him one. Yeah, the baby could wait until he got on the board. Exactly. That's what Moo Girl's there for. I'm sure I'm sure in the background he's like, yeah. He's like, keep baby Lilith occupied. Daddy's got to unembarrass himself. I'll, I'll be right there. He did all right. No, that, that was fun, man. That was fun. Uh, last time when we were doing, uh, some of y'all might have noticed that we were doing on his on his stream when he fired up that fire sword, dude. And like, I was doing with like minimal minimal fire resist, just because I could tell from the second that he was wearing a uh, an obsession uh, versus Din. I was like, he's fucked. I was like, he's he's straight fucked, dude. Like, I I had no idea. That's the thing. I, I actually had no idea what he would be up to today. So I actually just implicitly made that sword. Here, I'll show it to you, dude. Like, I, I implicitly made this sword because I had uh, no idea what he'd be up to. Like, I didn't know if he was going to ES it. And if he ES it, if he was going to, like, overclock it or what the hell he was going to do. But, yeah, we we came fully prepared. I wasn't scared at all. Now, put it this way, all right? I know, I know some of y'all might be thinking 85-15 is too much. And Maddie can attest. You can ask Maddie, you can ask Joby, and you can ask Maddie. All right? I beat him and his brother on my ES Fireballer with both of those guys chasing me around the moor on a din. All right? You can ask them both. It happened. Don't ask them, actually. They'll never admit to it. ES Fireballer busted, dude. Like, if if that was me on an ES Fireballer, I would have fucking got my ch shit pushed in. So I'm like, yo, dude, I gotta come prepared in case he brings a Santiana my way. He didn't. Like, luckily he didn't. This weapon was, I'm not gonna say useless versus his Sorceress, but it certainly wasn't as powerful as if he had an ES Fireballer. Like, I, I would have much rather have had grief that entire duel. Uh, but yeah, I'll sh I'll show you what the what the ES Fireballer looks like. Like this this girl, man, I'm telling you, like she's just a fast clipper ship. I see you guys, y'all are ready too, man. All right, shit, shit, we moving fast, we moving fast. Here, let me uh, let me pop that up, dude, and I'll uh, I'll get ready to go. This is this is J versus this was this was new on the card, right? Dr J versus Trafalgar. I'm happy to see Trafalgar here, man. Yeah, let's uh, let's cut over to this first. Let's not keep these guys waiting, right? Let's cut over to this, and then I'll show you guys Santiana the Fast Clipper ship right after, man. I'm telling you. She's the type of girl that I hope personally to never find anybody as good as me on the Fast Clipper ship to go up against. I don't know how to beat it. I, I don't know how to beat it. Besides open wounds. Besides to do what... Uh, who was it? Was it Syncor? Was it Punch? I don't know. So one of the GG barbs came out, whooped my ass with some open wounds on Santiana. And I was like, well, I guess we got to do it. I guess we got to do it like that. Yeah, ES better versus HDN all day because ES can tank like seven hammers, maybe more, depending on how frequently you get hit by them. Like you, you can tank a lot. Like on my ES fireballer, I, I laugh when Dins start getting aggressive, like they're going to get me or something. Like, uh, I'm just like, LOL, dude, what are you going to do? Hit me with a hammer? LOL. Like, come get this meteor. You know? That's just how it is. 
$20.24 from Botosaurus, all year long baby. All year long baby and as many times as Llama wants to challenge for it. All year long. Botosaurus, thanks so much, man, for the 2024, brother. Holy shit, man. Thank you so much. And another big cheers to M Power, my dude. I can't believe that generosity is huge. Thanks again so much to you too, Fax. Look at these guys. These guys are actually jamming. Like, we ain't... Who Who is this? Am I wrong about this matchup? This ain't... Tr we've never... This ain't Trafalgar, is it? This is... No, this is J versus Havito. We got Jay against uh, against Trafalgar up in there as another match. Jay has got two matches on the card here tonight. Jay is going up against Havito PvP on a CS Zon. And he's landing them hams, dude. He's landing them, them hams like nobody's business. He didn't even get touched. Holy shit, Jay is a sleeper on the Din. This is the Din Nation, man. Dins are off to a solid start today. We ain't trying. We ain't even trying to fuck around. You sign up on a Din... The world is your oyster. And man, oh man, that's wild. You guys are off to a... Dins are off to a great start, man. You gotta represent this... This underprivileged class. You just have to. There's no way around it. We ain't... We ain't never been in a good spot, you know? DJ, kill that. We need some DFC music. It's fucking fight night. Bill! Yeah, fight night music. Gifted mod wins, please. What? Should be a good watch. Root is on an ESFB tanky. Tanky ESFB. Bro, I think... Uh, Oh, no shit, that's you, that's you, Jay? Oh shit, this is Jay. This is... Bro, look, I now understand everything. In case y'all were wondering who M-Power was, it's fucking Jay right here. He's, it's Jay on this din. Now you, now you see the connection. You see, we're, we were both feeling it here tonight, man. Dude on this din just playing like a savage. Oh, and he gets the combo, dude. Is he going to get it? Dude, look. There it is. I almost got this versus Llama. Did y'all see that? Oh, man. Big hits, though, from Javito. He's got to be careful of that, man. That shit hurt. Bro, did y'all see that? I almost did it versus Llama. I had the smite going down. I thought I had him swirly, but I didn't. But regardless, I still got the FOH and the stomp going down. Bros, step by step. I shall become, with my new arm, when it's fully ready to go, I shouldn't have the sling off tonight, but I do, okay? It's a conscious choice that I've made. I don't need you guys judging me for it, too, okay? But the point is, th there it is, man. It's now 2-0 in favor of Jay. And if he keeps this up, it's going to be 2-0 in favor of the Dins tonight. Big cheers to that. All right, all right, Root, Root, Root already calling Jay out. See, this is how you know you've got some skill. Jay comes in here, starts tearing it up. And then Root starts calling him out. When you start getting called out, that's when you know you've got some skill. Yeah. Yeah, see, you got to get used to it, Jay. Before you know it, Mr. Llama is going to be knocking on your door every week, looking for that win, hoping you, hoping you just... Injured or something. Before you know it. Get used to it, brother. Never gets old. Yeah, Jay is actually really good, man. Like, in all seriousness, man. He's getting that He's getting that combo down. He's getting those smites. By the way, uh, I I also want to say, in all seriousness, for Mr. Llama SC, I, I act like a jackass. But really, I only act like a jackass because I, I feel like 90% of the time I'm not going to win. Uh, you know, it, it it always feels weird when I do win. So, first of all, I want to say I, I apologize for that. I actually thought I was going to get creamed. Oh my god, dodge avoid evade for the win! That's got to feel bad, man. That's got to feel bad. Yeah, I thought I thought he was going to I thought he was going to cream me, dude. Uh, like 
he had just picked up that ES Fireballer last week when we were jamming some duels, and the dude picks shit up quick, man. He's he's really good. Y'all y'all who have seen him on the Necro know this guy's good. So when he was on the ES Fireballer, like I didn't want to switch it up and like do something different because I was like, ah, oh, dude, he's he's probably expecting me to be on a Dan, but I really didn't want to be. Like especially if he had practice, I'm just like, oh, I really don't want to be on a Dan. Like it just it's bad. Like I. You know, so I just assumed that I was gonna get beat. I hate acting like a acting like a dumbass, and then I win. It feels bad. Like it, it, it doesn't feel right, right? Like it's it's more funny. It's it's like way better if you lose and you're a jackass. Like totally thought I was dead. So first of all, big big shout out. Big sorry to Mr. Lumass C, dude. I thought he had it. But additionally, he has gotten a lot better on that Sorceress. I think he was both pressed for time, like under pressure for time today. And he'd also just come off like a long stream running on the h in. The dude was like, dude had to jet. But even in that, even in that sense, dude was a savage. Like the way he landed a couple meteors at the end, which I gotta, I can't stress this enough. That's actually hard to do especially against somebody who knows the ES fireballer who knows the class oh my god those guys going toe to toe but Jay gets there making it 3-1 close one dude but especially against somebody who knows the matchup like it's hard to land meteor and he did it a couple of times like it won't be long couple of things dude I think in that specific matchup if he would have gone ES I'm I'm probably boned but even if he didn't, right, I would say with maybe another week, he's like top tier ES. Guy learns quick, man. He's good. He's really good. But yeah, so big shout out to Mr. Law Messi. I appreciate I love seeing this guy jump into DFC events. One heck of a guy. Absolute savage. Uh, you know, good good pal good dude and uh like i said it, it feels bad acting like a jackass and then winning like just want to i want to let for the record i didn't i didn't play i thought i thought i was dead i thought i was dead <laughs> like, thought i was toast so yeah but dude that, that was that was wild that was wild. I, I, I thought I was toast so bad. I, that was actually one of the reasons I kept the sling off. I was just like, I mean, it's going to be in the way. Like, when I was doing speed runs, it was like catching the keyboard when I would try to, like, move my hand and shit. I'm just like, all right, just don't catch the keyboard. I'm not going to use it much, but just get it out of the way. Like, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I thought I was so boned. So, yeah. Yeah, to, to be fair, I, I kind of feel like a jackass. I might I might switch it up. I got some whiskey in the other room, but uh I'm in I'm in no hurry. I'm in no hurry right now. You know, who says there isn't something in this Red Bull? Yeah, I, I got a I got a bionic arm. We need the sleep to count, dude. I'm making some good progress, my physical therapist says. Range of motion. I went in for a physical therapy appointment today. Range of motion is getting really good. Nice cut there from Jay. Incredible cut, dude. He's actually really good on this thing. He's got that lock sneaky. He was going for it, but he noticed he noticed there that uh, Javito was walking down. And uh, it, he he wisely just chose to give it up. He's like, I'm not, I'm not going to stomp into the... He had the lock on the Valkyrie. So he just gave it up, dude. That's that's some high level din shit right there. He ain't he ain't trying to get surprised by that walk up. Ooh, he's going in for the smite here. He's trying to get that three piece combo. Now I haven't played this matchup enough on a din to know, but I'll tell you this: if it was me, there would be no shot I would ever be walking in to trade a smite for a potential CS. Maybe two of them. It seems dangerous. Now something like that that makes sense. 
And with how often they dodge, avoid, and evade, I almost think that, like, you could just fire FOH away. They're probably just going to dodge it anyway. Which which will uh, put them in, in essentially stun lock. Bro, I did quit smoking for a while, but, uh... Oh, man, nice walk down there from Havito. But, dude, it was like three days after surgery I, I picked it back up. I was like, man, there's some things that are hard to give up. Nice cut there from Jay, making it a quick 4-1. Unbelievable, man. Not only with a generous donation, but with a nasty win here right off the bat versus Havito. Interesting. Back and forth match. Good duels from both these guys. Well played. Good quick one right off the right off the bat. Man, good duels here so far, huh? Hold on, we gotta we gotta put some notes down. We gotta we gotta do this right. I think this might be Butters here. Let's let's tune in into Butters and I'll I'll start actually taking notes for fight of the night this time. How's that sound? This, uh, Llama v. Cooley, and we've got Jay versus Havito. That was very impressive on a straight H, Dan, I gotta say. The skills of Jay, that was actually very impressive. He, he didn't even go with, like, the, he didn't even go with grief, which certainly would have been a way that cheesy players like myself would have tried to do it. Dude just went straight H'd in and got there. That's impressive. Gators versus Chu also going on. Oh, shit. I don't see it. I also have streamer mode on, so I only see the first letter of people's names. But I don't see a G or a C. In fact, I haven't seen Chu 30 in the DFC ever since... Uh... Man, I can't remember. I think it was probably a close duel versus my Din. Made him reconsider. Had to go back to Sin Boot Camp. I ended up giving it to him because I didn't want him to quit. But I think that was ever since then. He's had a lot of training to do. Chew is on Tort. Dude, no way. It's, it's... Bro. Did Tort versus Gators already happen? Did that seriously happen? Bro... Don't tell me we missed that. That was actually a sick, sick duel that I'm uh, that I was really looking forward to. That's uh, Tort is like I believe undefeated in the DFC. Guy's moving up quick, dude. He's high up in the ranks. Finished four one, and you won. Holy shit! That was a that was an NVD duel too. Shit, shit is wild. All right, this is Butters. He wasn't too thrilled about this Din v. Din here, but I'm telling you, Red Rum versus Butter on Din v. Din. I'm not exactly sure what build they're on. We have seen Butters on, Butter on a VT in the past, but it, it doesn't look like he is. He might be on an H Din. Looks like possibly H Din here. No, oh yeah, I'm sorry. It wasn't VT. He's, he's always been on straight H Din. These guys are both H Din v. H Din. Ooh, man, big hits already from from Mr. Red Rum. Man, them hams. These guys have an H map as well. Pretty decent. I actually hate it for, uh, for Din V Din. I almost feel like it's too big. Oh, man, nice stomp from Red Rum. Red Rum going in, shooting that uh, shooting that oak, trying to clear up the pets for these potential stomps or rando hams that he's going to be chucking up. It's possible. I was going to say, it, it It might be possible that Red Rum is low, but it, because I saw him back off there, but it looks like he might have just been going for the mana. He might be clear. Like, he, he, might be, he might be full. It's hard to tell. He certainly won't be pushing any pressure, likely, with any stomps, like... You know, usually not worth the risk if you're full or or not. Nice blind spot there, though. Now we're going to get to see if Red Rum is actually on a mage and if these FOHs do some significant damage. They do. 
They do. That was an actual FOH. This dude's on legit mage build, which I think is really good for this matchup. He did 110 damage with that FOH. I would certainly make sure, if I was Butter, to be stacking up that 85 light res, maybe with a T-Gods, because uh, that FOH is certainly doing something. That's, uh, that's something to write home about right there. Yeah, Gators, that was that was actually a pretty high-profile match. Gators versus Tort, and Gators just took it 4-1. It was like, it, it was legit. Like, Tort is is uh, very good on the Necro. He's been racking up the wins on the Necro, just kicking mad ass. And I was like, all right, man, it's time. It's time that this guy gets, like, you know, a, a real good, like, top five opponent because he's just tearing, he's just ripping people new assholes, dude. It's not even close. And, uh, yeah, that was, like, I'm impressed. I thought that would actually be a lot closer. He, he is really good, man. Ooh, look at that. Not taking no shit this time is Butter. Dude, or, or, originally not thrilled about the Din v. Din, but now seems as though he is online, even up the score at 1-1. These guys throwing down. Bro, I don't know. Uh, I think Tort is Tort, but the fact that Tort is getting called uh, Gertie and Chew, look, that only happens to the best of the best. Y'all know. Uh, it happened to Go Gators before, and look where he is now. Top 5 DFC dueler. And I'm pretty sure Tort is in there as well. Like, I'd have to check the rankings, but last I knew, he was pretty high up. Like, he's been kicking some ass. Like, firing it up right now. Like, dude is, dude is a, a savage. Firing up the good old DFC dashboard, which, by the way, you want to check that out? See your ranking or anybody's ranking. Oh, yeah, dude. These guys are both. These guys are both top five. Bam, there it is. Courtesy of sound. This guy's got some nasty dashboard skills here, and thanks to him, we have the nastiest PvP dashboard in all of existence. With the most savage, comprehensive history of data to back up decisions, rankings, and everything. Yeah, so you, you see how good that was now. Tort versus Go Gators, that was number three versus number two ranked. Or, I'm sorry, number number one ranked versus number two ranked. Like, that was big. Sound number one, dude. Number one. Yeah, dashboard is nuts, man. And there it is again. Butter making a big comeback here. I wasn't sure how to feel about it after that first round. I wasn't sure how he was going to do. He he was looking a little he's looking a little slop, I'm not going to lie. But now this guy's back on track and ready to go. Now taking a look at it from Red Rum's perspective. Doing the walk of shame back to the bod here. It's now 2-1 in favor of Butter. Oh, dude, I was... I was... We had to do a llama right off the bat, dude. He had places to be, people to see. Little ones to take care of. We had to jam slam in Alabama. We had to go. I knew it would be that way. I don't like doing it like that. You know, just waking right up, jumping right into it, but we had to do it. Oh, wow. I, I see what he did there, though. He was ready for that stomp. Red Rum was ready for that stomp, man. 3-1 so far in favor of the man, the myth, Butter. This guy, I think, significantly underrated in the DFC. And, and only in recent history, really going all in on the Din. And really showing off the skills here today. He actually just got the three-piece combo of against a Din, which is very interesting. He almost paid the ultimate price for it there, though. It's a it's a scary combo to do when you're HVH because theoretically, uh, if the Din starts spinning, concentration gives a chance for your your attacks to be uninterruptible. So even if you're stunned or anything, they can't be interrupted. Like there's a chance they can't be interrupted. So 
and it, it's pretty significant. Usually, what is it, like between 20 and 40? I don't know. I haven't checked in a long time. It's like the little known ability about concentration. But uh, it, it just makes it so that there's a chance that when you go to stomp, the dude's spinning and that your FOH didn't stun him. Yeah, it's wild. That's crazy though, Go Gators. Good win, man. Good win. Tort, Tort's a savage. Like undefeated in the DFC. Dude's really making a name. I thought I thought it was gonna be a sleeper. Like I thought it was gonna be like Go Gators goes in unprepared. Like thinking he's just got he just got himself some rando. And then it's it, like he goes up against Tort, who's like absolutely nuts. I honestly thought it'd be a lot closer. Especially with the classic NVD matchup. But then again, even on DFC rules, the data would suggest that even with 20 spirit, 20 spear, all of this shit, no restrictions in that matchup, Druid has a slight advantage. The data just shows it. It's slight. It's the most fair of, of anything. But it is slight. And now we see Butter is in a little bit of trouble here. But the good thing about this match is it ain't done till it's done, man. He's just got to avoid these rando hammers. He can't get caught in these rando hammer fields, which it looks like Red Rum is trying to trying to lure him into now. He's, he's crossing the danger zone there. That was a dangerous territory to cross. We, we certainly saw Red Rum spinning some hams up there. Oh, man. Speaking of danger. Now we see Butter trying to pull this off again. Again, a super risky play. And there it is, man. Red Rum fires back, gets in the pocket, and cinches that round right up. Yo, is there a melee game up, by the way, that people are chilling in? If there is, just, like, send me a PM uh, and let me know. And then what we can do is, uh, I'll, so that way people, like, when they're ready to duel, we can just, like, easily cut over to that. Uh, I do see Jeep streaming, though, so we'll, uh, we'll cut over to that next. But if, if people are all in a game, I had a, I, I think I had one up earlier. Let me check. I, I didn't, like, clear anything, but, uh, I certainly had one up. Like I said, I wanted to, uh, oh my god, what? I looked away for a second! And Butter got there, man. Holy shit. Butter originally not thrilled about the Din V Din, but this dude comes out on top. He ain't messing around. Cinches it up. Dins are on a streak here tonight. This has been three D three Din wins right back to back. Now, granted, this one might have been a little stacked. There was no way a Din wasn't winning this one. But I just want to say, Din players are the future. And, and that is what Butter is showing off here today. Dins are just the future. All right, let me see. Uh, let me see what's going on here with Jeep. Uh, I do see you too, Tempest. Me and Tempest got a duel to finish from last week. A good old melee duel. All right, here we go. This is uh, this is Jeep versus. Let's double check here. I think I think I know who it is, but I just want to make sure I don't want to be wrong. This is actually a big high profile one. Yeah, Jeep V Trees, man. These guys are uh these guys are savage. This is a melee match between two very highly ranked individuals in the DFC when it comes to melee dueling. Jeep V Trees. Jeep most recently, last week, challenged for or he was in about four the uh, DFC title. Look at this. I think he was stunting. I think he was just stunting right there. He could have ran around. Legit ran. To show, you know, to get those easy hits. But I think he was trying to show how difficult his character is to hit. A little, little bit of stunting going on, if I, if I do say so myself. 
All right, and here we go. This is round two of this melee matchup. And there it is. Jeep gets there. He does proc the, the Fortitude armor yet again. Uh, I'm going to go into... Uh, this is just in straight ZPK, I think. Oh, shit. Let's, let's jet over there. We might be able to get some... Might be able to get some high-def footage. High-def close-up. Yeah, there we go. All right. We up in here. Let's cut over to it, man. Impossible. All right. We're going to get some real, some real footage here now. Y'all are going to see some real duels. Back and forth, we're going to see the life totals. We're going to see how good, how close this is. Unbelievable. Dude, Jeep is just tearing it up. It's now 3-0 in favor of Jeep. We're going to have our fourth consecutive Din win here. No matter what happens. Fourth consecutive. All right, and here we go. Wow, Jeep yet again. Jeep yet again taken. It's now 4-0. Holy hell, man. This, this is pretty high profile, but as you guys know, Jeep's character is just wild. Like, this, this guy, he ain't messing around, dude. Like, he is decked out when it comes to this. These guys are, uh, so it looks like Jaw in game here, or Trees is going to make a little bit of a swap. He's going to be changing something up. Uh, you might be able to see from Jeep's character here, he has a nasty, uh, legendary mallet. This must be, uh, I think we saw it last time. This is some sort of fool's e-rep weapon. And man, oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, he's showing it off. This is, this is what it looks like. All right, let me get out of, uh, let me get out of this mode here real quick so y'all can see it a little better. Uh... Wow. This is wild. Yeah, this this is... Bro, I remember this being worse. Was this new? This might be new. This That might be a new one. Oh, man, these guys going back and forth. And now, trees turning it around. That was what it took. Whatever change he made here, that's going to make a big difference. He's doing something. All right, and here we go. Jeep ain't taking that shit for an answer, though. One to five in favor of Jeep with that nasty legendary mallet. Y'all might have seen it before. Look at this, though. Cruel, fool, IAS, E-Rep. Man, that thing just stings when you get hit with it, man. And it is so hard to hit this guy. This defense must be through the roof. 1-6 in favor of Jeep, the previous title challenger. Who is holding a candle to this guy? Bro, I, I'm, I'm beginning to think that in the DFC, we might be seeing some of the similar names up at the top. Because man, oh man, the ones that are good are real good. Let me tell you. Real good. Like, these guys are decked out, man. And Trees is good, too. Like, tr we've dueled Trees before. Dude is insane. Now he's, now he's swapping some more stuff here. He's swapping some more stuff. He's changing some things up. Although, I will say that most recent setup of his there was really working quite well. But, man, I'm, I'm telling you, this this weapon from Jeep, this thing is, this thing is baller. E-Rep... It's only one socket, but I mean, that's because it can't really be anything else, right? Like, it's it's Cruel Fool, uh, and what's the other one? Cruel Fool. Something is preventing this from being two socket. I think if they are, they can't be Cruel Fools and Artisans. Like, it just doesn't work that way. I think that they can't spawn in the, they come from the same tier of roles. There's something weird that makes it so that when when something is cruel and full, it can't also be uh, mechanics is is the mod name. But yeah.
Jeep. This guy. Is this Kramer? That's Kramer right there. Kramer on this barb, man. We've got the we've got the whole we've got the whole city right in this game here today. The the all-star legends of melee up in this game. Kramer back on his feet, I should say, in the in the DFC. This guy, I think, uh just the RNG gods weren't really too kind to him the first couple of matchups, but also he had some pretty tough opponents. And now he's back into it, dude, on, on a winning streak. And just looking to tear it up in the DFC. Really looking to come at people and let them know. Let them know who's boss. All right, and here we go. Jeep v. Jaw. Trees v. Jeep. Who's going to get there? This one's close. This one is very close. And there it is. There it is. Whatever change he made, man, this might be just what Trees is going to need to make a big comeback here. Because right now, it's 2-7. In favor of Jeep, previous DFC melee title challenger. Oh, we got ganked. I don't even know how that happened. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume it was a glitch. I have no idea how that happened. Well, I thought we were so far away. I thought there was no way that was happening. Does Cooley count as one? <laughs> yeah, who got me? <laughs> All right, at least it was the winner that I took a that I took a hit from. <laughs> there was no way we were even close to that, though. All right, here we go. Wow, man, whatever change trees made is certainly paying off here now. Big comeback, now four seven, still in favor of Jeep. But this is incredible, man. I'd love to see what this guy did for a change and what he's... I'd love to know the logic of what he's swapping back and forth between because I think there's a lot of melee duelers that they will make swaps, but they're never very profitable ones. And this one right here has made a big difference for uh, trees so far. And there it is, though. Jeep now back on the winning streak himself. 4-8 in favor of Jeep. But yeah, it seemed like a pretty significant change. Seemed like something that is really making a difference. More big hits there from Trees. Unbelievable, dude. 5-8. This is a hell of a comeback. I mean, it was looking pretty bad in the beginning part of this. But whatever he has switched up, man, this is certainly this is certainly the, the play to be right here. This, this, is, this is the build to be on. All right, I'm, I'm definitely out of the way of this. There's no shot I'm getting hit. Oh, my God. And another big comeback from Trees. Huge comeback from Trees. He was even behind in that round right there. He was he was behind in the round. He got he got chonked early on, dude. But he came back. And there it is. Jeep getting there. Now 6-9. Jeep needs one more win to secure his victory here. I'll beat a very close one. This is how I expected this to go. Trees, a very decorated, very vicious melee dueler in his own right. Looking to not go down so easily here. And there it is, man. Big comeback. Oh, shit. This is a meteor. I shouldn't have casted that. We might have to move directions here. We might have to... Santiana just desecrated this area of the arena. Look, who invited the fire sorceress to a melee duel? She desecrated this entire arena. Set the damn thing on fire. What is she doing? She just, she wasn't, she hasn't hit anybody with a meteor in a while. She was just missing it, I guess. All right, here we go. I believe seven, uh, seven, nine in favor of Jeep. Jeep off to a great start here. But still a very close one. Oh my god, dude. What? That is wild. And it's now 8-9. Eight, 8-9. Nine. Eight, nine, no win by two unless it's a title match. This is a big comeback from Trees, man. And to put this into perspective, you know, Jeep was not only the most recent melee title challenger here, 
against Vegeta to, to, you know, go for that first ever DFC belt. But this guy is just infinitely a savage. And there it is, man. Finally, he gets there. Very good duels. Very close duels, dude. 8 to 10. That was wild. But he gets there. Flawless victory in that last round, man. Really cinching it up. GG. Uh, let's check out the gear. Mind if we see the gear y'all ended on? Yeah, we'll check it out. All right, this is Jeep's gear right here. This guy, absolute murderer in melee. Ooh, man, these gloves are so vicious, man. He, he, they're, they're 2010s, but he also has the near-perfect ED roll on that. There's that beautiful hammer we were looking at. was really wondering about what this diadem was. That's beautiful, dude. 29 strength, 240 15s in that 2 pally, 2 open socket, Vizzo. Beautiful. Nice stat ring here. A 4015, perfect SS. Uh, a perfectly rolled Fortitude in all of the right waves. I mean, it's 29 res, which everybody worries about the res on Fortitude. It's really about that life roll, man, and that's really what, what it comes down to. And a perfect in every way that matters for Dungos, especially for melee. He's got the 140 enhanced defense, 40, 15, 13. Beautiful, beautiful setup. Whenever they whenever they bust out the High Lords, much like we kind of pointed out uh, briefly in the most recent video about these AR setups, that's when you know they must have a very sick uh, rare weapon that they're, that they're rocking. Yeah, just very nicely done. Let's check it out from Trees here and see what he's got. See what he what setup he landed on that gave him this big comeback. Okay, this is what it was. He swapped to a uh, a very interesting uh, rare crescent here, e e rep crescent with fools mod, cruel fools, uh, one socket that he put the low rune in, uh, another perfect in every way that matters fortitude. He's got the helm much like ours. Uh, oh, actually, I, I say much like ours. No, this is way better. He's got the base life roll. Uh, two socket Vizzo with 10 deadly strike. Beautiful helm. Armageddon Veil. Gotta love the name too. 213 Gores. The uh, perfect storm shield with a 4015. Looking, uh, he, he kind of switched to a very similar setup there. Also perfect in just about every way that matters in melee. 32019s for this guy. Two perfect Ravens. Yeah, you see, actually, Vegeta had pointed this out. Technically against the rules uh, to go dual Raven, but we're going to change that. Don't worry about it. This is, like, pretty common in Melee. Uh, so, look, rules are fresh. We're going to switch this up. This should be allowed. This should be okay, especially with a High Lord setup. Uh, so, look, I'm glad people are just doing it uh, because they should. Like, don't worry about them too much. DFC rules are just guidelines, all right? General guidelines beautiful gloves here though he's even has the ar bonus on these gloves look at these two 2010s with the ar bonus and 15 strength those are beautiful that might have been possibly one of the one of the, the sleepers that he switched to right here that could have been the secret sauce beautiful dude yeah those are those are nice gloves insane man all right, let's check it out. Good duel from these guys. I'm glad we were able to pop in uh, and see that one live. But you know who else I see live? I see Mr. Dazer, the reigning defending two-time DFC champion now. And I think we're going to have to cut over to this guy, see exactly how this one's going. If y'all don't know, this is the title shot. This is Dazer trying to defend it again. Is he going to be able to do it? Hang tight, because we're about to find out. Will Dazer remain the DFC champ? And here we go. In, da in this corner, we have Dazer. Uh, very likely on the hybrid sin for this matchup. He's going to be going against the rising star Jin Shin going up for his fair shot at the title here tonight. This guy certainly deserves it. He has been, man, from the second that Jin Shin joined up in the DFC, this guy has been, he's brought the legend with him. His reputation has preceded him. I was warned, I was told from the second he stepped foot in the blood war against some of these savages that this guy ain't no joke.
And he certainly isn't. Tonight, challenging Dazer for the title. Is he going to get it? Let Cooley check my screen to see if it works. All right, let's check it out. Uh, this is Jin Shin. All right. Yeah, looks like it works. Looking good. Oh, did y'all do ZVS already, Primo? Oh, shit. Wait, what? What, what, what? Bro, we put, uh, we put Stegius. Stegius has, uh, a pretty sick druid from what I understand. And, uh, we've been trying to put him up against and, and see some matches here in recent history. I'm very curious as to what he's got going on. What's, uh, what's happening with this very unique build that he's on. He says, just don't put me up against the din. And we tried hard not to. I hope I didn't... I hope whoever made the matches didn't forget about that, you know? It's the polytheist? Wait, what, what? Is that... Is that what we did? Yeah, that's what it was. Okay, I was gonna say, that's that's a good one. God, this card is so good. We, we didn't spend any time going over this card. This card is actually savage. Like, I was, I was impressed at how well it came together. All of the matchups, like, I mean, all of them were just nasty. Right down to melee, I'm like, man, all of these make sense. They seem pretty even. Like, they're right there, man. And this right here is Jin Shin. He is, I believe, on the walk zone. Yeah, this guy is on the walk zone. So it's going to be a bit of a different matchup than we saw in Muchez versus Dazer for the title. Jinshin, an absolute savage. He's done uh, some some damage here so far, but the challenge with being on a walk zone is uh, you're kind of you're kind of gonna eat these traps if you get a good player like Dazer setting them up here. A little bit of choppiness. I'm gonna swap over to Dazer, see how this one looks. A little bit of choppiness from Jinshin's screen there, but yeah, well, you're kind of susceptible to all of the traps being set up around you, and there's there's very limited angles you can go. So what we're gonna see from Jinshin very likely is that he's going to try to stay out in the open. They have an H map here set up very well for this match. Uh, and I think we're going to try, we're going to see him try to stay in the center as much as possible. Because the more he gets towards these corners, the more he, the less angles he has to get away from these traps. But he's already very low. Days are really putting the pressure on there. And just pinching him right to the wall. Does Jin Shin have the answer to this, man? These guys said that uh, they're going to do two FT5s uh, because these matches are typically quick. After the first round here, what we'll do... Uh, well, theoretically, if it goes 5-0 in favor of the champ, it's over, right? But assuming that this is going to be maybe closer, what we'll do between rounds as these guys switch servers and get their game set up and everything, I also do see a couple of people jamming green lungs up in there, jamming his duel. We can swap over to a melee match. I think Dazer is max trap. Did he go max trap for this? Damn, dude. To not see Dazer, you know, being a world girl is very interesting. Yeah, he might be. I caught a little glimpse of that. I couldn't tell if it was a buff claw or what. But that one on the offhand did look like a trap claw. Like, I, I, I can't I can't tell if it was a buff. It was very quick, but I haven't seen chaos, man. Well, I think it if if it goes 3-0, it's going to be the same thing, right? Because uh, due to champ advantage. Due to champ advantage. When you're the champ, you have to get beat. You can't get tied, right? There is no tiebreakers. You have to get beat. And uh, so because of champ advantage, if, it's a, if one of the rounds is a complete shutout, the champ wins. There's no way his opponent can come back. If his opponent shuts him out in the next few rounds, like complete shutout, the champ still wins because there's no tiebreakers. So I'm actually pumped that they're doing FT5s here because it actually, I think, benefits. That's going to benefit Jinshin. It's going to give him more of an opportunity to get used to Dazer's style, figure him out, and he's going to need... It, like It's going to start one step at a time. He's going to need to get some wins. He's going to need to get his first win to make it so that this is not a shutout because Dazer is playing very well. Yeah, Dazer's, Dazer is on a roll here. But he did eat a uh, guided arrow very early on. Yeah, okay. I think he just whirled. I think he just whirled. I might have missed it, but I think he whirled. I think there was a slight whirl there.
Yeah, and now Jinshin also also taking some damage. Let's see if we can cut over, see his life total. Yeah, he's very low. Well, about 30, 35%, I would say. But so is Dazer, man. Dazer's taking a couple of shots here, too, and a nice name lock from Jinshin. Jinshin is and has proven to be in the DFC quite a savage walk Zon. Uh, and he is the classic style uh, of Zon. The, the type of Zon that you would see back in the days of LOD, right? Like back before the Tele Boa was the meta, right? You saw the hard hitting, the the swift dancing walk Zons using fortitude. And that's exactly what Jinshin is. Uh, he's very good. So far, 2-0 in favor of the champion, Dazer. Both players playing very well. The score so far cannot speak for the sheer skill of these of both of these players. These guys are, are savage. What we're seeing is the top of the top. Two of the top duelers in the world, let alone in the DFC. Whatever these guys choose to do, they are the top of the top on their class. And they're going at it. Yeah, he did. Okay, I wasn't. I wasn't blind, Kreider. Okay, that's what I thought. I thought I saw a couple of close range, real short whirlwind hits there. Yeah. Okay, and I just saw the chaos too. I saw a claw that had ohm in it. Like, dude moves quick, man. His his cubo skills are on point. It's like flash. It's like back and forth, man. It, it's very quick. Uh, but I did see a, a, an ohm in there. Yeah, there it is. Nice whirl right off the bat, dude. He's looking to cut him open. This is the exact strategy that Dazer implemented versus Muchez in his first title match. Uh, coming back from a long, long time outside of the DFC. Uh, and we saw that strategy just bouncing in and out. Very quick, short whirlwinds. Uh, likely cutting his opponent open. Doing some damage. Making them move, most importantly. Uh, and then following up with some traps. Now, the interesting thing about... Uh, uh, about Jin Shin's playstyle versus Muchez. Muchez chose the opposite strategy here. There's a couple of different ways you can approach this duel if you're a Zon. Uh, and one of the ways is you could play like Jin Shin here and go for that big heavy damage so that when you finally do hit your opponent through their claw block, it's just vicious damage. Uh, the other way, though, is to try to prevent them from setting up these... these uh, encampments of traps around you and the way to get out of that is to switch to uh to the telly boa and just sort of increase the range which does give you an out if the duel starts if you start getting low it gives you the outs in the in the in the event that you can teleport away and just spam that multi forcing your opponent to catch you right uh it makes it so that a player like dazer has to get on his bike has to get on his bike and chase and has to get up close chuck those whirlwinds uh, and make it happen he has to put some of that pressure on. But Dazer, no stranger to that, man. That's what this guy does. This guy, top-tier Sin player, playing very well here tonight. So far, 3-0 in favor of the current champion. All right, here we go. Look at this. Dazer laying out a white carpet for himself there with the shockwebs. Character named number one. Look, I'm not going to call Dazer conceited on this sin. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say such a thing. I, I wouldn't say that. But this guy certainly knows he's good, as he should, man. Very decorated sin player. Many, many tournament wins behind his belt. And look at this. Just the way he dances in between these guideds. Not afraid to get in there with that whirlwind as well, setting these traps up. And very interesting there. Uh, Jinshin was happy to exchange with only a couple of traps up around him. He said, you know what? Like, uh, instead of trying to run away and to try to outmaneuver these, I'm actually just going to put some guidance on you. Like, I think that was a good call. You can kind of rely on your dodge, avoid, evade a little bit uh, to get you there. And sometimes you just got to take that chance. Big hits here early on. And there it is, 4-0 so far for the current champ, Dazer. Unbelievable, dude. This is a this is this could be a early stoppage. Dazer laying the stamp down, dude. Yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, it was it was pretty close uh, versus Muchez. Muchez, I think, racked up. What was it? Was it like 4-2? And every round was very, very close. And, you know, I was originally questioning the Tully Boa style, but now I see why Muchez chose it. Because even a player like Jinshin, when you're going up against 
a savage sin like Dazer. This guy will trap you, and he'll trap you in the most creative, awkward ways. He's teleporting around you in circles, you know, keeping the pressure on with Whirlwind. But before you know it, there's five traps set up all around you, and it's it's uh, hard to get out of. Look at this. He's boxing him towards that wall. This is this is looking bad early on. Jinshin wisely gets out of there. Nice jab there from Jinshin. And it might be 4-0 right now. Oh my god, big hits from Jinshin though. This could be this could be the big break he's needed. Also very low. Claw block for the win, man. Claw block just blocking those jabs that would have easily downed any lesser player there. Any lesser class, I should say. Oh, and there it is. Not quite a shutout. And he gets his win. Unbelievable, man. That was looking. That was looking like it was going to be an early stoppage. But just in the nick of time, Jinshin defends himself, comes back to it. And we now have a fight. Yeah, and especially in Teams Crowder, people can protect their Zon, right? You often see this. People teleporting in, hammered in, protecting their Zon, like, you know, typical camp team. Uh, you know, they'll have a, a walk Zon with a Din camp in it. And oh my gosh, man, that is, that's a rugged combo. Uh, when you have players that can protect you at close range, it's pretty vicious. But yeah, 1v1, what we've seen is that the Tele Boa is just strong. But then again, to be fair, we've never seen a, a Zon quite like Jinshin that has so much experience on the walk Zon and pulls it off quite like this. I love that he's just impulsively starts by the wall. Like, this dude just says, fuck it. Like, starts right by the wall, says, come on in. Come on in, we got this. Now currently 4-1 in favor of the champ. Big hits there. Might have been an open wounds hit. He he uh, caught Jinshin. Dazer caught Jinshin with his bow out. It looks like that one hurt. He kicked around a little too long in those traps, I think. Getting a little too comfortable, a little too ballsy. Now wisely walking out. Dazer goes in for the whirlwind, but misses. That was bow side, too. I mean, that's just the power of both of these classes. Both of them have these, these very annoying skills if you've ever dueled against them. The Zon has dodge, avoid, and evade, which makes her impervious to any attack. Basically any attack. Uh, because she can just she can just hop out of the way of it. You know, she can just move to the side, right? You got a big meteor coming from outer space. No fucking problem. She'll just move to the side. Oh, shit will miss her. Like, and the same thing with the Sin Man. She's got that she's got that weapon block, and she does the same thing to most attacks. It's it's some of the most annoying shit ever. But both of these classes going up against each uh, each other here, you really get to see it in full display, man. And there it is, 5-1 on this server. Hard to tell if these guys are on EU or if they're on uh uh, or if they're on America, yeah. Okay, so it looks like they're on EU. They're on Dazer server. These guys are going to switch it up, make another game on NA. And while they do that, let's cut over to Green Lungs. This guy with a melee matchup right here. They might actually be in the game. I think they're. I think they're in my game. Let's let's check it out. Let's check it out from the actual arena, shall we? This is solid. Yeah. Yeah, I say I say we just go right to the real arena. We ain't we ain't decking round today, but Green Lungs ready. Get a hostile these guys. I think it might be Green Lungs versus Kramer, I wanna say, if, if memory serves me well. I think. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Green Longs versus Kramer. So we get to see Kramer's barb, man. I think both of these guys might be on a barb. If this is Green Longs, oh my god, this is this is big. This is gonna be some BVB action. Way better in melee, in my opinion, than uh, BVB and HLD. If you've ever seen BVB, where people, you know, both players taking it seriously, ain't trying to mess around, uh, it gets pretty wild because they just whirlwind and it's like two ships sailing past each other in the night. Man, neither one can hit, especially if they're BVAs. They're taking it real serious. They both got seventy-five percent block and all of that. Man, it's so hard to hit. Four dollars and ninety-nine cents from Jared. 
you're out here doing the Lord's work. Jared, Thank big you, cheers sir. to you, man. Face. Big cheers to you, brother. Thank you so much for that five spot, man. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much, brother. You were too kind. Is Kramer on? Kramer's got... Is that Leviathan? Dude had a green armor on. What is this? He says wrong armor. No, I think you had the right armor. Santiana was looking for someone to match that beautiful green Shaco here. Beautiful green Shaco royal look. Those green boots too. Look, Santiana, she matches. She don't mess around, boys. Okay, right, and here we go. Round one of Green Lungs versus Kramer. This is wild. I think we can get pretty close with this one. These guys are just straight zerking. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna walk around. We're the referee here. We like Herb Dean. That's that's who we are. We Herb Dean up in this bitch. All right, here we go. Big hits early on from Green Lungs, and now Kramer making a big comeback. Oh, and there it is. Green Lungs making a statement in this BVB early on. Unbelievable. That's big, man. Kramer, uh, Kramer, a lot of experience on this barb, too. I mean, this guy, we've seen his gear before. We've seen his setups. This guy, he, he's he's got something to write home about in that build right there. This guy don't mess around. All right, here we go. Kramer trying to make it work, trying to make a big comeback here. It's all RNG when it comes to this. You know, you're all rolling the digital dice, and it all comes down to, over time, how well is your character built. And that's what these two barbs, who look very similar to each other, are really showing off. Green Lungs over here on the Fight Network. Uh, that's Green Lungs. Kramer on his uh, namesake barb. But these guys going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Just in sync and everything, man. Barb combat the way barb combat should be, and a big hit from Kramer. What is this, Juves? I love it. Just saves him town trips right here. And you never know when you're going to need them. Like, if I went up against Vegeta, my belt would be stacked full of these. Right? And if nobody was watching... Oh, shit. What? Whoops. You know, that's just, that's just me, though. All right, and here we go. Round three. It's now 1-1 in this barb matchup. Who's going to take it? See if we can get a little closer to the action here. I think these guys are single target hits right here. So it's like click and hold. And it's it's single target. So we don't have to worry about like residual damage. Like we get pretty damn close. We can see this action for all its beauty and glory up close. And it looks like Green Lung's off to a big start early on. But this could go either way. It's very, very close. Looks like Kramer might even be cut open. Might have taken some damage there. Kramer with a big comeback. Now 2-1 in favor of the DFC vet. Big comeback there. He wasn't off to a great start early on. Is that what he's got? It's both of these guys. Yeah, must have F Carapace. Well, and you can tell because it, it has that Iron Iron Maiden proc. So yeah, very good, very good estimate about the uh the F what is it death's carapace or whatever whatever it's called it has the uh chance to proc iron maiden on it that's what we're getting hit with up so close here yeah there it is we can get obnoxiously close to this duel that feels good that's at least what kramer has on i haven't seen yet the proc from the fight network aka green lungs but he very well could have it as well they they look very similar, but but uh, Greenlung could also have Fortitude, very popular armor, and really pays some big dividends in melee. Like that could be that's some big damage. But Kramer getting that big damage in there looks like both of these guys, depending on the the intensity of the roll, could be one hit away. Very very close. Who's gonna connect next? And there it is, Kramer for three one unbelievable yeah black hades okay that's what it is that's what it is black hades all right wow nuts dude repeat of dawn fry yeah that's exactly what it is it's dawn fry versus uh yoshihiro Th that's what it is 
these guys just pinning each other against the cage and throwing those bombs willy-nilly right up against each other's face. It doesn't matter what you look like in the morning. It just matters the entertainment that the fans get today. And that is what we're seeing between these two barbed titans here in Kramer and Greenlong's. Greenlong's trying to get back up on the, on the horse here, trying to get back in the winner's column, trying to take this from Kramer. Kramer trying to climb his way up to the ranks. Very likely could do this. This guy is a legend in the melee scene. Trying to get that title shot versus Vegeta. Which would be a very interesting match, I gotta say. Kramer versus Vegeta. Both of these guys on... Uh, I would say it's hard to say what is meta, what's non-meta. But certainly not the traditional builds that you see from a lot of people starting up melee. A lot of them jump on zealots. Mainly because a lot of people are more familiar with the Paladin than they are with the Barbarian. A lot more comfortable with the skills anyway. And plus that Zealot feel just feels right, man. It takes a very special player to jump on this Barb, figure it out. Uh, and and see the, to see these guys going toe-to-toe -to -toe like this is just wild. These guys really pulling it off. Really put on a show here today. Pretty sure Vegeta uh, would, would wreck me. Oh, word. I don't know, man. You never know. It comes down. It just comes down to the RNG. You could have a very lucky night. You never know. Vegeta is just... Man, that guy is, that guy is just on a roll. All right. Let's zoom back in here to these two titans going at it. I love this arena, man. It's so, it's so easy to watch different duels. We can just bounce back and forth in melee between, between many different people all on the same screen. Shit is wild. By the way, another big cheers to uh, Jared, bro. Thanks again for that five spot. And another big cheers. We're cracking open another one here for Jay. What? And Kramer yet again with a four. This guy, 4-1, man. This guy is really showing up. This guy's really stunting here. Really showing why this guy belongs at the top. I hear some swinging. I hear some din swinging. We got Noah versus somebody versus Smoke. Looks like he got that smoke, bro. All right, here it is. Another big cheers to uh, Empower and Botasaurus. Everybody with the kind donations tonight, man, means a lot. Yeah, I believe it's 5-1. I believe 5-1 is correct. Yep, 5-1. Thank you guys all so much for the kind, generous donations to keep the spaceship alive. We're going to put them right towards spaceship repairs. As you guys can see, the intro cutscene a little shaky. Uh, I think it's only because now we're traveling at 6.5 times the speed of light. Spaceships have been slowing down as of lately. You know, so we're going to get that figured out. And that's all thanks to you guys' generosity. Really appreciate it. Big cheers. Botasaurus, Jared, Empower, Bex. Thank you guys. Much, much appreciated. Uh, yeah, they're definitely worth keeping, DC. They're they're uh, best in slot on a lot of uh, on a lot of Oridins. They're extremely rare. You certainly want to keep them. Kramer in some trouble early on. Having trouble connecting on his opponent. There it is, the first hit, but he's got a long ways to go, man. He might even be attack or take damage death. Yeah, I was going to say, man, he might even just be in a, a tomato potato pickle. Like, it doesn't even matter if he hits. He's just done. There's There was no outs there. Kramer was so low. But he got there, man. Like, uh, now, this could be green lungs. Could be him coming back. Could be him getting back on the horse here. 5-1, now 5-2. Still in favor of Kramer. All right, let's get in. Let's get in real close to this. This is wild. How often do we get to see duels in such high intensity, high resolution, high definition, up close and personal? You can hear these barbs breathing in this close quarters combat. PvP the way it should be. Kramer with a big lead early on, but it's going to come right down to it, man. Oh, and there it is. There it is. Now 6-2 in favor of Kramer. Very good duel back and forth. These guys. Wow, titans. Absolute titans on these barbs. Apparently, we're going to need a, an armor that uh, of, the, of the Black Shade when we make this barbarian i think the i think the uber speedrunner level 99 barb that we have we're gonna have to make him a melee barb look at the sword god this fred looks fucking dope dude look at this sword he's got tell me that doesn't look nasty dude like that sword is wild yeah and he's showing it off here look at it 
Glyph Song. It's a Balrog Blade. Beautiful, man. Gosh, so pretty too, man. It's even got the rep life. Not like it matters too much in melee, however, just very cool abilities there. All right, Kramer off to an early start here in the eighth round. Or I'm sorry, in the ninth round. Big hits from Kramer. But it ain't over till it's over, and there it is. All right, I believe. Let's see what the score is, just to make sure. All right, so this was this would have been 5-2. This would have been 6-2. 65 Swedish Krona from Jakob Malmgren. UMPH, 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 UMPH. That's what it is, man. Mm, 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 ah, mm. That's what it is. It's you can you can hear it. Jacob, thank you so much, man. Big cheers to you, brother. Really appreciate that support. Green lung in trouble early on. Kramer, the score right now is 7-2 in favor of Kramer. Kramer looking to just finish early here. Looking to get an early stoppage. Prove the dominance of this barb. And he's off to a great start. 8-2 so far. Man, I can't wait to see what this barb has got, man. Like, we gotta we gotta check this gear out after, because damn. We might we might be interested in putting ourselves together here. A nice little melee barbarian, and we're gonna need some guidance. We're gonna need some ideas to steal from people, okay? And it looks like this is the barb to follow. This is the barb we're going to need to check out. These duels from Kramer. Wow. I, I'm actually kind of curious, too, with the uh, with the setup on a Barbarian. Uh, it's, it's probably way different in Melee than it would be in, you know, any other Barb variant that we've ever seen. The, the semi-useless skill that you've seen in a lot of other instances in Iron Skin, right? That's probably quite important in Melee, and I'm sure a lot of Barbarians max it. Same thing with Shout, too, right? Very important to have that defense just about, you know, as high as you can get it. Now, Kramer! in trouble and there it is the dude comes but look at this he's got those full rejuves he don't even need to go to town he ain't trying to waste no time green lung right back in this he says i don't kiss akara bro we don't need that hoe for nothing that's right and here we go back to it now it is eight three still in favor of kramer green lung's got a long ways to go man the road to a comeback is a long one, but man, it tastes so sweet. Can he get there? Big hits early on, but it's probably pretty even between these guys. It looks like Greenlong might have actually been cut open there or just taken a couple of low hits. Landing some hits, evening up the score against Kramer. Unbelievable, dude. Kramer slowly pulling ahead here, but now the score's evened right back up. And we keep bouncing back and forth between the life totals here, seeing what each player is at. You'll see a little bit of shade differentiation in the name bar right there. You'll see, like, for example, Kramer. You'll see that little bit of red on the left side of the bar there. That represents his remaining life total. And, man, it's getting low, but so is Green's. It's practically gone. And there it is. Kramer gets there, making it 9-3, I believe. Maybe 10-3. Yeah, it might actually be. We, we might have missed one round there. GG, man. Kramer gets there. Let's check out this gear real quick, man. This is savage. I've got to see what's going on with this barb. This might be something that we have to replicate. We have to emulate. We have to get behind. Oh, ooh. Ooh, dude. You love seeing it. Breath of the Dying for that nasty IAS. And there it is, the Steel Carapace. Okay, that's what it was. This wasn't Black Hades. This was Steel Carapace with that Iron Maiden when struck. 40-15 in this. Perfect. I don't know exactly what the perfect defense is upped, but I know 220 ED is perfect. That might be perfect upped right there. Uh, hard telling, not knowing. But man, oh man. Yeah, perfect Annie, perfect Torch. Of course, 213 Gores, a 100% perfect upped re its face i don't think it's perfect up to defense though the actual base defense rolls and i don't think that rolled perfect i could be wrong i could be wrong i don't know the actual perfect up defense on that I, I guess in my mind i'm thinking of an f so never mind it could be i'm not sure uh but looks good either way the 40 15 red jewel in it man that's pretty 
two perfect Ravens, High Lords, and a near perfect 260 Steel Runs, 60 ED, 20 Strength. Beautiful. Oh, Perf is 504. Okay, I, I didn't think, I was going to say, I thought it was in the 500s. I was like, it could be in the 500s, but I could be thinking of F. Yeah, wow, there it is, man. Both of these guys rocking those nasty up to Ariat's face. Very rare to see that on a Barbarian. Oftentimes, they don't dial them up that high because they don't need them. A lot, of, uh, a lot of regular PvP Barbarians can't wear them. Like, it's just too much strength. But yeah, beautiful gear here, man. We're going to have to take some notes because this is this is the barb we're going to build next. We might have to do some theory crafting. Beautiful setup. Thanks for uh, thanks for showing that off, Kramer. GG, man. Good duels between these guys. All right, let's kick back over. We've got... Did we did we miss the, the culmination of Dazer versus the challenging champ? The champ challenger? <sighs> I can only imagine... We know how that one went. I can just only imagine. I could be wrong. But I can only imagine. All right, and here we go. Let's cut over. We've got another duel going on here. Is this... Hold on. Is this in that actual game too? Is this... Uh, this is Agro Mati. Oh, man, I see Foozer and Steez. Hold up. I'd like to mix it up from Melee for a second. Just just for a second. I see Steez ready to go. I see Foozer ready to go. Is Polytheist and Steez happening? If so, dude, A, that's super early for Poly to be on. This could just be an older duel from last week. Oh, okay, so that's what it was. That's what it was. It was 5-1 on EU and 1-0 on NA. Okay. Thanks for the update, Max. Yeah, and that's basically all it took. All that he needed was just that one win. Wow, this is incredible too. So this is uh, this is Noah versus Agro Muddy. Now, now this is uh, uh, Noah is. Let's see here. That's uh, yeah. That's I was gonna say. We know who this is. This is Shapendi, my dude. And these guys both savage. This was this is a very close one here too. Uh, a very, a very influential duel happening right here between two zealots. Dins are undefeated tonight, let me tell you. Dins have won every match that they've been in. Yeah, and I think this is also in our game, so we could cut over to this. And uh, the beautiful thing about this is we might be able to check out the, uh, check out both rounds here between melee and we might be able to pop over and see a couple of duels happen all at once. So this is, uh, Shipendi. I believe he's on Noah right there. Uh, this guy is a savage. We've seen this, we've seen this happen before. This guy ain't no chump. All right. He knows what's going on. And man, oh man, he's off to a solid victory, solid start so far. Paladin. Yeah, it's 1-6. It's 1-6 in favor of Shipendi. Wow, big comeback, though. I thought he was going to have it. Now, now is it 1-7? Oh, my God, dude. Shipendi really showing off the dominance on the Zealot here. He ain't messing around. All right, let's see if we can cut over to Foozer. I think Foozer might be might be jamming and slamming. No, it looks like he's just got his, his screen up. I also see... Uh, I'm going to try not to get hit. I think this is as close as we can be without getting hit. 1-8. In favor of Shipendi. This guy, man, the undeniable. This guy always, always looking for duels. Always looking to get uh, into some melee matches in the Discord, man. Always asking for that blood in the melee scene. And there it is. Looking, looking for a big comeback here. Is aggro Mari. I don't play hardcore Will the Wisp. I think it's a waste of time. Uh, that's that's why I'm not. I I'm not actually unaware of anybody challenging me to that. But I still wouldn't do it because it's a waste of time. There's no dueling in hardcore. It's all PK. Holy shit! Bro, Agro Mahdi coming back. 3-8.
Uh, we're just in ZPK right now. Yeah, no, like, I used to PK in hardcore back in the day, Willow. And there it is, cinching it right up here. Noah, Shapendi, now 3-9. Hold on, if you're going to swing at me, let me get my ES up, bro. Let me get my ES up, bud. All right, at least, at least let me get my ES up. Yeah, I used to PK on Hardcore back in the day, but, like, I just got sick of rebuilding characters. What are you going to do? Have one good duel, and then, like, you have to rebuild your character? There it is. Shapendi cinches it up. A solid big 310 win for this guy. Killing it. Let's see what Shapendi's rocking here, man. This is interesting. This is Din v. Din. Almost, almost flawless there. He almost went with only one loss. Very curious to see what he's got. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, dude. Oh, beautiful sword. Beautiful sword, dude. With that base AR on it, too. Ooh. Ooh. What is this? He's He's got a... Oh, my God. Interesting helm. The what the hell is the jewel this is a 15 okay he couldn't put an ed jewel in this helm because it spawned with an inherent five minimum damage so what he had to do was put a 15 15 in it a 15 is 15 max and then he put a bear rune in there this is a two socket two pallet inviso very interesting uh nicely rolled steel wrens there and he opts to go with the 645 35 here Instead of the 320 20, a little bit of added attack rating with that. Look at the cost of a little bit of life. Two perfect ravens, high lords. Uh I love seeing the non-perfect gear, especially when it wins. Not even a perfect Phoenix here, but a very nice sword. Very well put together, Dan here. 2400. Not I don't believe quite perfect on the shaft stop. Upped, but a very nice looking one. 2400 defense is the goal. That's kind of what you want to aim for. Beautiful, dude beautiful setup and that's the difference man when you can use those high lords and those dual ravens that's usually the difference it usually means someone is good enough they you know when you can use high lords that means you've got yourself a decent weapon and that is that's the goals of a lot of melee duelers right there is is find themselves acquire a very nice fool's weapon like this just beautiful beautiful setup and a very good duel man that was that was savage yo let's cut over to foos or i'm sorry to steez this boy looking like he's ready. He's looking like he's ready on this, on this here druid. Okay, this is this is uh, Tempest. All right, this is Tempest. Okay, okay. I think I know what he's doing. I think I know what he's doing. Do y'all see it? He's got a very interesting druid. He said, "Don't give him a paladin," and I think I know why now. This is a summon druid. Bro brought a summon druid to the DFC. What we're going to see from this guy is we're going to see him teleport in. And he's going to tell his pets. He's going to say, get him, boys. He's going to teleport in. And he's going to step out of the way. In pure Steez-ish fashion, we see the first ever summon druid in the DFC. I would expect no less from one of the most creative PvP players in the on the entire planet. The guy that brought you the first mosaic sin in the DFC. Are we going to see the first ever summon druid kill from this guy? He's taken a couple of hits early on. He's it, and dude, I'm telling you, Tempest ain't no chump when it comes to this either. Tempest is a savage player. Like this guy knows what he's doing. He's a very good sin player. So this is going to be a, a pretty big test against this summon druid. And the interesting thing about how he's going to hit is all of these all of these crows that you see flying around his head here that's those are ravens that's a skill called raven and uh if you really max it out on a summon druid that's actually what does all of the damage and it's not the bear you know it's not like the wolves that are doing it it's all those crows like the ravens that come out and tag your opponent that's what does all the damage the interesting thing is they can't really be interacted with like so so they won't trigger the traps like they won't get killed by traps or anything. you can't interact with them so, like, what we're going to see from, uh, you know, you can't battle orders him either. Um, but what we're going to see from from Steez is he's going to get in there. And he's going to be like, get him, boys. He's even got a little bit of twister up. And he's going to hope that those uh, those ravens get in. They they get through the claw block. 
of Tempest. Now, a very interesting thing that he could do is try to close the distance and possibly walk around Tempest and see how far he can get with that. It's dangerous, though, because you're staying in close range of the traps, but teleporting around him is also dangerous because Tempest can get that Mind Blast lock off, and what that will do is it will set the Druid off just enough. You see those, those swirlies around his head? He's getting Mind Blasted, be it by the Shadow or Tempest Actual, and what that does is every time he goes in and he, he stays on the teleport plan, he just gets pushed off of his game plan a little bit he gets stunned which keeps him right around for those traps i wonder how much of a different game plan it would be if he teleports in as far as he can go and just lets the ravens do their work because the other thing is if you keep teleporting around those ravens ain't going to do any work they're not going to get close enough to actually do it uh you're going to have to stomp you're going to have to stomp at your opponent get in real close um and try to avoid the traps and hope that the Ravens just immediately go, get through the claw block, get through everything. Certainly an uphill battle. But hey, I mean, I didn't want to do it. But he just said, don't give him a din. All right? He just said, don't give him a din. I, we, I knew, I didn't know he was on. Oh, man, those were some big hits early on, though. He has actually got a couple of hits with those Ravens. That's actually a good point. Technically, but because of the DFC rules, he couldn't. Technically, he couldn't. Uh, we might have to fix that. We might have to make it so that you can full zoo it if you're not a NATO druid or uh, if you're if you're specifically a summon druid. Yeah, technically by the rules he couldn't. I think originally when we made the rule, we were just like, wait, doesn't that hurt summon druids? And then we were like, lol. But bro, all right, this is this is what I'm gonna do. We're going to make an emergency rule change, and if Steezish, if Steezish can hear us, if people can hear us, dude, this guy can go full zoo. This guy can go full zoo if he wants. Emergency rule change. We see what he's doing. We see what he's doing. New rule in the DFC. If you're a summon druid, you can go full zoo. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought we would see it. I, I said we were done making last minute rule changes on stream. I take it back. Full zoo, baby. That's what it's what the people want to see. I, yeah, exactly, exactly. Levram knows what's up too. They don't really help because they just give you the opportunity to get those pets name locked, and then you start getting mind blasted. Especially when you're super low on life like this, not a good thing. Yeah, can you imagine summon Druid in a title fight, bro? Don't tell Duke that. Don't nobody tell Duke that this is a build. Duke will be in here, claiming lates all day. He hasn't thrown an attack. Nobody tell Duke. All right, I'm, I'm going to see if I can pop into this game and just let him know. Uh, let him know he can go full zoo. See if I can crack the password. Oh my god, I'm such a good hacker, dude. Santiana is such a good hacker. Steez, you can go full zoo. Emergency rule change. We'll allow it. We'll allow it. All right, here we go. Now he's going full zoo, baby. The pet's coming out. There we go. Let's see if it makes a big difference. First ever full zoo druid in the DFC. Man, oh man. Can he get the first kill, though? I feel like it ain't a real class unless you get the first kill. Here we go. Is it even a real class if you don't get the first kill? And I ain't talking about one that Tempest just sits there and lets him have. I'm talking about legit dudes trying to kill you. All right, that's what I'm talking about. I ain't talking about no easy win type shit. What an incredible, incredible bout here so far. Yeah, I think this was from last week. I think we matched up Steez and Tempest last week, but uh, it was a very weird week last week. If you guys remember, the servers were down. Oh my god, what? 
He just stays on top of him, dude. He just ate those traps. Stayed on top of him and ate all of those traps. Those those pets almost just like three tapped the sin. Holy shit, and he's going in again. The thing is, he loses so many pets when he comes in. Like, he's got to get a good stomp. That was wild, dude. That was so much damage. And, and believe it or not, they might actually eat some trap damage. And here it is, the druid with his full zoo of pets. And he's, like, Steez is doing a great job of, of, like, not really taking much, like, damage. Even Like, at low life, he's playing a little bit more cautiously. So in these exchanges, he's being, he's being a bit more cautious. So when he, if he doesn't get a good stomp, he just goes and resets, right? Like, re-ups on that oak, has that bear. Make sure that when he does get a hit, it's going to be a good one. And I love what he did, though. He just held down teleport in his opponent. Just, like, kept tele, tele locking. Like, that was wild. Now he's looking for that angle, looking to get on the inside. Tempest not trying to give it to him, though. Tempest says, all right, man, I know what you're up to. Come get it. Oh, my God, and he gets there! The first summon druid PK! Steez! What? The most creative dueler in PvP history. Summon druid OP. Summon Druid new meta. That was wild. Dude, Tempest didn't let him have that either. Tempest was low, and he's like, dude, I ain't fucking with this. He was sitting there in five stacks. He's just like, look, man, I know what you're doing. Come get it. And fucking Steez did, man. He just came right in, and he's like, get him, boys. Those fucking crows just come right in and pecked his eyes out, man. That was wild. What's wild? Yeah, Steez, Steez is like... Man, he's got some of the most creative builds. He was the first player to ever pull off a mosaic kill in the DFC. Meaning he had to charge up with his mosaic claws, hunt his opponent down, and finish him with mosaic. Like with an actual kick from mosaic. He was the first player to do that in the DFC. Now he's the first player to get a win on a zoo druid legit bunch i identify as a summon nato druid <laughs> look official rule change to come all right but for this game right here we're doing an emergency rule change official rules to come we're gonna have to figure out the wording so that we don't see any hybrid nato zoo druids we don't need that shit Can you imagine how S-tier druids would be if we still allowed full zoo like we did back in the early days of D2R when it got launched? Man, so what that means, full zoo, right now, you see that on Steez's screen, he's got both sets of wolves. It all gets compacted when he teleports around. Like, all of those pets go right to the same pixel, so it's hard to see them all. It's almost like a summon necro where all of the summons just go to the same pixel that you teleport on. But, like, all of those pets, man, he's got so many. You can see him up in the upper left corner of his screen. He's got the bear. He's got three dyers. He's got five ravens, five spirit wolves, and an oak sage. Dude legit has 15 pets coming in on every exchange, dude. And that first exchange was very interesting. All he did was just get in and hold down Telelock. So if his opponent tried to get away, like if Steez tried to get away, he was going to be right on top of him. And now he's just looking for a perfect angle. Man, those things those things hit way harder than I thought they did. Bro, has anyone tried an Amplify Damage Pet Druid? For Uber Tristram? <laughs> I feel like we gotta try that next. Is it better than Fury? It can't be, right? It's just gonna keep going after all of the fucking minions that they summon. No shot, it's better. CJ's in ch CJ in the chat. Yo, what's up, man? If I didn't quit, I'd have brought my Geddon Summon Druid. Oh, man. Yo, CJ, what's up, man? Big cheers to you, brother. Good to see you. 
I've killed Declon with a melee Ellie Druid. With a with a with a wait with a melee druid or or a, with your Ellie Druid on OG D2. That's actually impressive. If you did it on an Ellie Druid, melee Druid makes sense. We we see a lot of D clone kills on melee Druids, like the the Fury Druids. That may, that's like probably meta for killing D clone. But on an Ellie Druid, it's actually pretty impressive, especially on LOD. Yeah, that's sick, CJ. So glad to see you, man. How you been? Bro, I sent you a message for DFC 100. I'm not sure if you got it. I see the big AFK status on the Discord. And I was like, dude probably hasn't logged in in months. But I was like, the people want to see this guy. Nice telly lock here. Beautiful telly lock, but I don't think any of those crows hit that time. He lost all of his pets and paid dearly for it. It also looks like Tempest has swapped to Plague, which is going to lower the resistance on hit. Uh, and from all of the hits of these pets, that's big. Uh, all of his pets are going to get cursed. He's going to get cursed. Those traps are going to hurt, dude. And that exchange certainly was not in the favor of Steez. I believe it's 1-1. One, one. I believe this is a tie game. Fortnite? Oh my gosh. Fortnite Fortnite streamer now? You, you streaming it? Or just jamming on the Fortnite no stream? He says, oof, you downgraded, man. Every You ain't playing D2, bro. You alright? You, you downgraded, bro. You done... You done... You lost your mind. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Dude, I'm actually really happy to hear that, CJ. I love that you guys have found something that brings you together in the gaming world like that. I feel like, honestly, knowing what I know, dude, that was the, that was the best of both, right? Like, that was the best possible thing that could have happened. Like, some sort of common interest in the gaming world between you two. Because now, here was the thing. Here was, here was the conundrum CJ was running into before, right? Game time and girl time are often separate times that compete for attention. And one of them gets pissed if you don't give them enough attention, right? But if somehow you can... You can much like an eclipse, bring the sun and the moon together in perfect harmony. It's a beautiful sight. And that's exactly what he's done. GG, Willow. Appreciate you popping in, man. Dude's given up sleep for this. He's sacrificed. What I love about Willow Wisp is that for DFC night here, he's made the calculation right he's gone in he's made a calculation before he he came in today and he's like all right dude dfc is going on i do have to work tomorrow but you know what i can do it on three i can do it on three hours of sleep no problem dfc is worth that bro big cheers to you for it oh my god big hits there from both players a good exchange but now now, there it is. I was going to say, he might be Shadow Bay PK, the summon druid in Steve's Shadow Bay PK, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure, it's free heals. I think uh, I think Tempest is pure trap, though. I, I think he has the, the ability to go Whirl Girl, but the thing is with Whirl Girl, you kind of need... If, you, if your game plan is to, like, leech life off of that, you kind of need a ring to help you get there. It's it's not like a not like a din in the sense of, like, yeah, I'm just going to zeal and uh, leech life off of these pets, right? Instead, you, you kind of, you really do need to, like, focus on the gear. And the Sin has very limited spots to adjust her gear for leech. And one of the only places is you could throw a little bit on the boots if you have nice blood boots. That, you know, and you don't typically care about the life leech roll on those either. But, I mean, it's a small place to get them. But where you're typically getting them is from your rings, from your caster rings to maintain the 102. You're looking for two of them that have 10% uh, life leech. But, yeah, if you have those, it could be pretty nasty. But then, e then and even then, you still have to do a pretty significant amount of damage. Like, your, your hits have to count. But not, not I guess not as much on pets though. Like you're 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 gonna do some pretty decent damage to pets anyway. 
Melee title match next. Oh, GG Nightfall. Thanks for the heads up, man. Is that in uh is it is it in the ZPK room? Can I pop in there for that? Can we see it in the high def? I'm gonna make a whirlwind Natsin on Xbox. Easy 50 DR high res. Yeah, very easy to hit those metrics. You're kind of pigeonholing yourself into either teleport charges or deflight to get around, though, especially to chase people in PvP. But PvM is probably okay. It still gets, you know, pretty outclassed by the mosaics in. And, but, you know, a fun build. And that's what it's all about, man. It's all about being different, having fun with it. Uh, I, I would love to see it in PvP. I have actually seen a couple of people do it in, like, pub games. I've seen Max on it before, of all people, right? I've seen Max pull out a Nat Sin. Uh, and actually do pretty surprisingly well with it. Back in the days of LOD, before before we really got into D2R, we actually had these meme duels. Uh, I believe it was actually a stream that we did, whether it was with Llama for the arena games or, or what. But uh, it, was, it was like these meme duels where the teams were set items only. And, and dude, like if you would have asked me to do such a thing nowadays, I could tell you exactly how it would go, but I didn't know back then. I didn't know that there would be very few people with the means and the ability. There's a lot of people with the interest, but there's very few with the means and the ability to actually deck out, as weird as this sounds, set characters, right? And to actually theorize effective game plans. There it is. He says, get him, boys. Teleports in and walks away. He says, these boys will do the rest. Hard to tell exactly what he got for hits there. I'm going to see if Tempest is streaming, if we can get a peek at his life total. Doesn't look like he is. But man, oh man. All right, so we've got the melee title match after this, and then me and Tempest got some beef to settle in melee. All right, we've got some beef to settle. We might cut over after this. This is solid, man. I'm so happy to have seen history be made here. It's currently 2-1 in favor of Tempest. And we have Steez, the summon druid, trying to make a comeback, trying to... Trying to be the first summon druid to rack up a win. The melee, the melee duel might not last long. We might actually catch the tail end of this after. Oh, Max and Lamp also ready. GG, dude. Wow. Anyone, anyone streaming that one? GG. My Armageddon Raven Druid is OP. I can be defensive or aggro in this fight. I'd Telly Stomp walk down. While she tries to hit my Ravens, Bear, Geddon will get chances to hit. Chain Telly if she runs. Yeah, that sounds amazing. So is it, it's kind of like a, a summon hybrid. Like summon shaman hybrid. It's like a legit shaman. Like you're summoning pets and you've got Armageddon coming down. God, that sounds ridiculous, dude. I, I actually love it. <laughs> I actually love it. It's literally AIDS. <laughs> Bro, that's so wild. We're gonna we're gonna have to be careful with how we phrase this. I, I gotta say I love seeing the summon summon druid here. I'd be lying if I said that making a rule about some sort of full vo this full zoo exception I'm not a little worried about. But we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it, man. The the more that's allowed, the better. Yeah, that is, that's wild though. I might have to experiment with that a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a new druid next ladder season, name it AIDS. It'll be a shaman, shaman summon hybrid. Didn't do full zoo, just the ravens. Okay, interesting. Well, I, I would imagine too, if you're going hybrid, you kind of have to distribute your points in a meaningful way. And the Ravens are certainly what do all the damage anyway. Like, the Wolves aren't bad, right? But the Ravens can't be interacted with. So it's it's like, those are the best ones. They can't interact with them, they can't kill them. And they just go down and they hit. They're like they're like the AI hits for the Druid, right? And now Steve's in a lot of trouble here. Very low. Hard to tell exactly what Tempest is at. Hard to get a life check. This is almost like the... 
it's almost like the the shaman druid in the sense that you're not often doing life checks with it because when you do if if you ever get in the spot where you're doing life checks you're doing chain tele stomps and uh that's that's probably that's probably bad news for your opponent anyway now temp is pushing the pressure looking to finish he knows he has his opponent low but the thing is man those ravens can hurt it's like we were saying they do the most damage when those ravens come down and hit man even in lld there's some like there's some uh weird summon builds in lld that are pretty savage and druids sort of do the same thing steve's hunting for that name lock but he just keeps getting picked away by that mind blast and now steve's going to shockweb it looks like looking to use some looking to use some shockweb techniques yeah he's he's looking good too he, he's he's in pretty good health he's like probably 95 percent he knows that it's just a duel of attrition at this point, and he knows if he's patient, he can get there. And he certainly has uh, he has no reason to go in and aggro necessarily. And now, now you see Steezish at uh, just about Mind Blast PK here. Not quite Mind Blast Shadow Bay PK in one, but uh, with a lock, he's in a lot of trouble. And with all of those pets, man, that's gonna be a that's gonna be an easy order. As soon as as soon as Tempest sees him on screen, you know that that's what's coming. He's going for that lock, dude. He's set. He's setting up the traps just as deterrence, but he's going for that lock. I say that, but it's very possible. It's very possible that Steez has prepared for that and actually has a lot of integer damage reduction on. I'm not. I'm not 100 sure. Hard to tell. We've never seen a build quite like this. There. Yeah, and there it is. There it is, baby. Holy shit. That is just wild all right let's uh let's do it very nice to see this duel here we might actually still get to see the uh the tail end of it but i'm gonna try to cut over to uh to zpk let me check zpk real quick and see if uh <laughs> no oh never mind okay hold on let me i'm not in zpk all right good stuff that was like uh, okay yeah game is full all right, so we'll, we'll have to cut back over to Discord and watch it from these guys' perspective. This is Vegeta versus Nightfall for the Melee Championship. This is for the title. In this corner, we've got Vegeta on the legendary Fury Druid. Okay, there we go. All right, thanks, bro. I'll be right there. Yeah, we'll check it out. We'll check it out. We're going to go for some high-def gameplay here. This is going to be epic. Lycan, a.k.a. Nightfall, versus the reigning, defending DFC Melee Champion. This is going to be wild, man. Two Fury Druids going up against each other at the top. Now, as you might know, both these guys, very decked out players. Nightfall has spared no expense on this druid, and he's been tearing people up left and right with it. And as we know, Korn, aka Vegeta, just a savage, savage druid that has been tearing everybody up on his way to the top. And he's really hoping not to stop here tonight. But Lycan, aka Nightfall, off to a great start, taking the first win. And there it is. This could be big. This could be big. Making a statement early on is Nightfall. Trying to claim DFC gold in the melee division. From the Savage, the so far undefeated Vegeta. Can he do it? All right, we got to be careful here. We don't want to get in the way of these theories. We don't want to be we don't want to be adding any sort of reasonable doubt to this duel. Oh my god, big hits! And there it is yet again! Oh, does he want me to hit him? You want me to kill him? Alright, I, I mean, I will, but he didn't have the Fort Brock, so I mean... But Santiana's just... She's bloodthirsty, man. She's like a vampire bat. She just looks for that opportunity to get the kills, you know? She's... It's how she rolls. She'll take him where she can get him, man. She ain't been in the moor in a while. And you put her on referee duty, you know what to expect. She's going to be killing people. If she gets the opportunity, that's exactly what she's going to do. Yeah, celebratory fireball. Okay, so that's a that's an interesting observation too, Botasaurus. You see two different setups from these druids. You see Korn, a.k.a. the reigning defending Vegeta champion here, 
on the Oak Sage setup, going for that added life total. And now he takes a win. He takes the win and gets there. And you notice it takes a couple of fireballs to take him down with that Oak Sage, man. But we have Nightfall going for the pure damage setup with the Heart of the Wolverine. Two very competing Fury Druid styles here for the championship. And now we're going to get to see that when they go up against each other one, which, which is the one that comes out on top? Is it going to be the Heart of the Wolverine or is it going to be the Heart of the Oak? And it looks like the Heart of the Wolverine can't stay out of the battle. Really costing, really costing some damage here. And, uh, and Nightfall is felled for a second time. I believe 2-2 now. Yeah, exactly. This is a championship bout, so you gotta win by two. But that Heart of the Wolverine just wants so much action, he keeps popping in and getting clipped by that Fury. And when the Druid loses his pet, man, that... That ain't no good. Staying closer so spirits won't grieve. Yeah, there we go. Oh, and just as he says that, then he loses his Oak Sage. And as soon as the pet goes down, man... Oh, and he morphs back! That is something you can do in, in FVF, dude. In Fury v. Fury, you can do that. You can morph back. It's, it's the only exception. So when you see these guys go to one, typically in any other melee duel, the Druid can't morph back, right? It's too cheesy. But when your opponent can do it too, well, suddenly we have a real duel. We have a duel of timing and skill. And now it's 2-3. Two, 3-2 three. Three, two in favor of the challenger, Nightfall. All right, and here we go. These pets trying to stay out of the way this time. Big hits early on from Nightfall, trying to take the DFC gold. But a big comeback. Can he maintain? He can't. Unbelievable, dude. It's now 2-4 in favor of Nightfall. Vegeta off to a rough start here. But he still has the ability to swap out, change some weapons if he wants to. Now he's summoning the heart of the Wolverine. Interesting. He's going to put this to the test. I noticed a slight little change here from the champion. He isn't necessarily making a change in the gear, but a change in his strategy. Both players going for Heart of the Wolverine. Now let's see how much of a difference that's going to make. Big hits early on from the champion. Now making it 3-4. Wow, man. The damage output from that Heart of the Wolverine is very, very noticeable. That was a fast kill from the champion. Yeah, very interesting choice. Yeah, I think he's going to go with that again. I think he's going to go with it again. Big hits early on from Nightfall, but return fire from the champ. And there it is. Evens up the score just like that. And now we've got a duel, boys. It's now 4-4. Four, four. Heart of the Wolverine is where it's at. I think this is the this is the biggest challenge early on that either one of these players has has, has had. Certainly Vegeta, the champion, Mr. Corn here in game. Yeah, it's it's wild. So e even even the champion making the swap to Heart of the Wolverine here, sort of. I don't know if conceding is the right way to describe it, but certainly showing the sheer power of that summon. And he gets the best of him yet again. Now he's on a killing spree. Ever since he started summoning the heart of the Wolverine, man, he's really turned this duel around. I mean, three duels right in a row. This is wild. All right, let's crank it up, Bill. I'm going to need something to get us fired up for this very close title match in the melee division. Can Vegeta hold on to it? He's off to a rough start. And now, Lycan, a.k.a. Nightfall, trying to come back. Look, I don't know if he wanted to get killed, but we just killed him anyway. Santiana, a bloodthirsty vampire bat. It's just who she is, man. She wants she wants in on this too, baby. She, she came here to play, but she didn't come here to play. If you know what I mean, if you catch my drift. All right, here we go. It's now... What is the score? It's 5-5. Five, five, back and forth. Big hits from the champion early. And a big comeback from Nightfall. Nightfall with an unbelievable comeback there. Now 6-5 in favor of Nightfall. Trying to take the crown from the champion. 
can Vegeta defend his title here? This is... It's so interesting to see all of the melee druids that we've seen rise to the top. Like, we have seen some nasty druids, man, and it's really hard to take care of them. Like, there's, there's just very limited options that a lot of characters have. I mean, that massive life pool, the massive life total. And a swap back from the champion, but it's not quite enough. And there it is, man. Wow, 7-5 in favor of the challenger. Nightfall trying to take it all. And this guy, again, spared no expense, man. We see we saw this guy's gear last week. Nightfall really put some he put some spark in this build here. Lycan, aka Nightfall. He's got himself some 45 life shapeshifter charms in the inventory. A perfect uh uh the, the helm. What is it? The shapeshifter helm. Oh my god, and a quick finish there. A quick finish from the champion. Now 7-6. Yeah, the Cerberus is bite. That's what it is. Uh, a perfect Cerberus is bite. I'm not sure if it's 100% perfect, but perfect in all the ways that matter. The 120% bonus to attack rating. You typically don't see that in any other Druid build, but in melee, just so happens that that is very, very useful. All right, and here we go. Champ versus Challenger. Someone lost their Oak Sage, and there it is. The champion evening up the score. It's now 7-7, seven, seven, man. This could go either way. We have never seen the champion sweat this much with a back and forth battle. Bro, I think we're going to have to level a druid to 99 next. Just so we can go tear up the ZPK rooms. After this, we've also got Lamp versus Max. Uh, it looks like Steve's might still be going on. If this finishes up early, we might cut back over to that after we check out the, the winner's gear here and, and check out the, the ending of that. I know I could tell that was going to be kind of a... It's an opportunistic, sort of longer duel. We got Steve's trying to get on the inside, and we got Tempest trying to keep him at a distance. Uh, you know, so that could be a, a very, very long one, which is good because we're able to pop back and forth between the two. And there it is. The champion gets there yet again, now making it 8-7. Let's see what we can do. We might actually just be able to pop in regardless. Hold on. We might we might be able to do this. Oh, fuck yeah, we can. Right in between rounds. We can just see Steez doing his thing. We can check out two duels at once. We see Steez here. Lower res and everything. Getting hurt. It looks like he's about Shadow Bay PK here real soon. It ain't gonna be long. Let's cut back over to the championship out here. Oh my god. And there it is. It's now 8-8. This is a tie game. Win by two because it's a championship bout. Unbelievable, dude. What a close duel. And we've also got Steez here. Certainly Mind Blast PK. I'm gonna I'm gonna Oh my god, and there it is. Hard to tell. I think Tempest might be Tempest might be ahead on this one. That's for sure. Certainly a certainly a close duel. In the exchanges anyway possibly not on the scorecard but the exchanges could go either way all right and here we go big hits from the champion early on and just like that now makes it nine eight look we don't even question anymore we just shoot fireballs at the winner santiana just getting her licks in man it's kind of what she does you know like she man we haven't played santiana in the dfc ever since the injury you know, ever since the surgery. Big hits from the challenger early on, and a flawless victory. Oh, we just launched the meteor. Look, I don't know. If you leave Santiana unattended for long enough, she's set shit on fire. I don't know why she does it. But it's probably time we move out of this area anyway. Look at all these damn ears. Just sitting there in a pool of fire. Molten boulder crashing from outer space. She sent that one from up in the spaceship. Like that thing left a crater. Oh yeah, yeah. Tempest Tempest is dueling uh, Steez. This is the title bout for melee. Oh my god, big hits from the challenger. 
It's now 10-9 in favor of the challenger, but you do have to win by two. You do have to win by two in a championship bout. Nightfall trying to take that DFC gold from Vegeta. This is back and forth, man. Is Vegeta going to get dethroned in DFC 106? Big hits from the challenger. And a big comeback from the champion. It's now 10-10. We have never seen such a high stakes close duel in the DFC ever before. But this is why in the championship bouts we go best. We, you, we say we got to win by two, man. Because eventually it's going to come down to this. Two very well-built, well-constructed characters rolling the digital dice against one another. And how is it really going to go? Big hits for the challenger early on. And a quick, nearly flawless victory. Yeah, he's fine. He's just going back to town. He doesn't want that Santiana slap. Or maybe he does. We'll give it to him. We'll give it to him. We'll get he was waiting. He was waiting. He was waiting for it. It's now 11-10. In favor of the challenger, Nightfall technically one win away from taking the title, but he's got to win by two. Yeah, Lycan right over here is Nightfall. And then we have Vegeta as Corn up here. Corn taking the high ground. Big hits from the champion. Big comeback from the challenger. Nightfall trying to cinch this up. This might come down to a morph. Oh my god, they've killed each other. That would technically end the duel, so it's a draw. Unbelievable. Wow, what a close bout. It looks like at least one of these guys is on death, which may be the reason for such a post-kill PK there. Uh, that that launch of uh, lightning on death, chain lightning, doesn't do much damage, but it does enough to do one damage on a high roll. But I'm, I don't even know if it came down to that. Those guys might have actually just connected at the same time. Wild, dude. Right, and here we go. And there... What? Wow. It's technically not over. It's technically not over. <laughs> it's technically not over. <laughs> Uh, okay. CL kill doesn't count. Alright, that kind of makes sense. I actually like that. I actually like that. CL kill doesn't count. Because it's kind of cheesy to get that win afterwards. I, I totally agree. There it is, man. And we have a new DFC Melee champion. In Lycan, aka Nightfall. Absolutely savage. What a hell of a fight. Very, very close between these two incredible bout man the closest duel that we've ever seen vegeta in and who would have thought in a mirror match versus lycan aka nightfall the new dfc champion let's check out what this guy's got he was using death look at that perfectly rolled death uh it's in a 15 ed base but no three attack rating on that and he is using metamorphosis dude this is the second time we've seen this Beautiful dual stack gloves on the 2010s. Yeah, this guy ain't messing around. Beautiful ring there, too. That's eh, not bad, really. Uh, it's got a couple of odd odd abilities in the resistance, but still not bad. A 100% uh, perfect fortitude. Gotta love that. Those are the charms we were talking about, dude. He's got a whole inventory full of those and some 3-2020s. This guy spares no expense, man. And the reason he's not using a fool's weapon on this is because... Uh, he doesn't need it. Like, he's going up against the Druid. Typically, the defense isn't as high. So that's why he's not necessarily relying on a Fool's Web. But, uh... This is not a perfect SS. 40-15 and a non-perfect SS. Gotta love the budget gear here. The budget SS. Non-perfect. Not 148 on the base. Just budget. 
Welcome to budget melee, guys. Get good. Yeah, get good, okay? This is... <laughs> yeah, he's got... <laughs> wow, nasty setup, though. In all seriousness, this is sick. Bro, what a hell of a fight. 100%. GG's, boys. That was savage. Let's cut over to Max versus Lamp. I believe this duel is going on right now. These guys, these guys weren't waiting around. They said, we've got some shit to do, and we gonna do it. All right. These guys weren't waiting. Ain't messing around here. Lamp is on a killing spree in the DFC on this Cold Sorceress. Now going up against Max on the Elephant Sin. This is like Elephant Sin versus Elephant Sork, man. This is, by the looks of it, full Vita Cold Sorceress with like full Sunder gear on. And what I mean by that is that he's got an armor, a lifer armor filled with facets. I wouldn't be surprised if he's also got a shield filled with facets. Really going full Vita, trying to punish his opponent and basically Sunder his Cold Res away. That is in combination with his cold mastery skills all of the skills that he has on his gear will also work towards ripping his opponent's resistance away this is basically a pvp sunder sork man plus three fury meta yeah that was wild man literally not possible to beat that unless you mirror match with another druid no shit you know what Give me the title fight shot. I'll take him down. All right, let's do it, Kramer. Kramer's back in the winner's column, man. Showing off. Just decking out that barb. Let's fucking go. Let's do it. Bet he still doesn't have blaze skill. Yeah, I, I would doubt it. The thing is with the cold sorceress, she needs all of the skills. It's a, it's a build where you kind of need to get to 99. Especially with the new rules in the DFC, it really helps to be at level 99. Whether you're going hybrid, whether you're going ES, it looks like, ooh, ooh, is he, no, he's, I was going to say, he's dropping Blizz. I was going to say, did he, did he try to, try to build an orb sorceress here? If so, the way that the DFC rules work is that you actually inhibit your opponent's resistance to cold even more if you don't use Blizz. So it's basically a way in the rules to try to diversify the types of cold sorceresses that we see instead of just seeing fucking Blizz sorks go in and drop Blizz down from like one and a half screens away. It sort of rewards the players who, tr who use orb only and don't use the skill Blizzard. Um... There's basically a tier list of what you can have for resistances. It's kind of complicated to explain, but it's less resist that you can have if your opponent is on orb. And if you have a Sunder setup, man, it could hurt. But it does look like Lamp is dropping that Blizz down. And this is a very, very cl interesting duel. Typically close, and it certainly has been in the past between Sin and Cold Sork. Max opportunistically looking to get on the inside there. But he still knows that versus a full Vita Sunder Sork like this, he's still in a lot of trouble if he gets cracked with that Blizz. It's very hard for... Oh, yeah, look at that. One Blizz just, like, it took 40% out of Max there. Yeah, pretty vicious. Yeah, and also a good observation. I use the word Sunder not... Likely not in the way that I should. A lot of people hear the word Sunder, and they think of Sunder Charms. It's also very possible... Nice hits there from Max. It's also very possible that Lamp does have a Sunder Charm for the Shadow Master. Because the Shadow Master can spawn immune to cold, and it can actually eat blizzards. Um, and it's... On top of Claw Block, you have a, a cold immune Shadow Master. Man, that is a pain in the ass for a cold sword. Yeah, Max is Max is doing a great job. By the way, what's up, Duke? We were just we were just talking about you, dude. We just saw the first summon druid in the DFC. And I was like, nobody tell Duke that this exists. He's gonna be calling lates on this guy all day. It was it, it was on Steez, dude. He just teleports in with a full zoo. We allowed a special exception for this duel. Full zoo, that's all he's doing. Teleporting in, letting the Ravens do the work. Teleports in, steps out of the way, get him, boys. I was like, don't tell Duke this is a thing. It's <laughs> for sure. It's yeah. <laughs> and there it is, man. 
Max gets there in that duel, chipping away at him, man, playing very cautiously, letting Lamp come in and try to look for an angle and punishing him for it. That's what Max is good at, man. He's so good on that sin. Max is one of the sin players that he's just a very discouraging sin player because he always has got the answer, man. It doesn't matter what build you're on. He's played the matchups hundreds of times and he knows what to do against you. He's not blind in any matchup. You can't surprise this guy. And he's just slowly chipping away at Lamp, working through that resistance, getting those big elephant sin style hits. Yeah, and he does have that Sunder Charm for that shadow. What you need? See, now in a week, you would be complaining about this matchup. <laughs> nah, man. I I'm pretty happy with where the, the DFC Cold Sork rules are now. There's, the data suggested there was certainly something that needed to be done for certain matchups, so we did it, and then left basically the other matchups well alone. Like, the cold sore gets so bad that we have to granulate it so much, but I'm I'm impressed. We did it with very few words, and we granulated it pretty well without getting too wordy. Big hits from Max, pushing the pressure there. Yeah, yeah, I pop in every once in a while, especially after rule changes. Well, the thing is, a lot of times people have some really good things to say after rule changes that, you know, you can... You can bring the data into it, and you can think of all of these situations, but it isn't until you hear the input from very good high-end players sometimes that you might think of something or be something might be brought to your attention that you might not have thought of, right? But Max is notorious for that. Like, we'll change something about the sin. Like, the, we, we actually lumped a sin change in there with the most recent rules and then just undid it because we're like, yeah, you're kind of right. Like, you know, it was uh, we limited the block on a sin to 66%, and he's just like, it doesn't really matter. Like, it actually doesn't make a big difference because of the way that the DFC is set up. Like, it, you're just never using those setups versus the matchups where it would matter anyway. And the matchups that it, you know, that people are cheesing with it. Like, you could just limit it in those, like, versus Barb. So that's exactly what we did. Like, it's just very good input. We're like, yeah, I guess that's kind of what we're really hoping to do anyway. Cody is alive somewhere. Saw him logged into Discord today. Good to hear. Yeah, we ain't seen him, Coolio, since the 10k wager. We ain't seen him. We ain't seen him in the DFC anyway. Might be on might be on Discord. We ain't seen him in the DFC. Hard to adjust the feet here with the one hand. I gotta consciously choose not to use the left. It's supposed to be in a sling right now, but we had a duel versus Llama, and we couldn't be as handicapped. We we had to we had to give ourselves the ability, but I still can't really use this thing much. Been playing an H10 on last epoch, dude. That's what I played when I played that too. I built an H10. It got me pretty far, but then I uh, then it then I eventually. It, it like shit out on me like but this was this was like months ago though that i tried it and it eventually shit out and i couldn't get any further with it and i was like well if i can't play a hammered in i can't play last epoch nice blizz there from lamp That one might have landed. He has to really pick his shots and get in and out versus Max. Because you know for sure that Max has you predicted and he knows where you're coming from. Every time you get in and you try to take that shot, you're going to be getting hit. You're going to be getting hit with some traps. And it looks like he's actually wearing Max down. Yeah, Max is pretty low. Gertie trying to get in, or uh, I'm sorry, Gertie, yeah. We, we wish we saw Gertie. Lamp trying to get in there, pick an angle. Lamp the Gertie killer. I can't carry you. Technically never happened in the DFC, but he's, but after the 10K wager, we, ne look, I'm just saying we never saw, we never saw Gertie again. I'm just pointing out the facts. Just pointing out the facts, okay? Look. 
It's just what it is. Yeah, Max is in a lot of trouble. Likely one Blizz away. And Lamp is doing a great job at picking his shots. He's he's figuring out Max's strategy. He's figuring out his trap patterns for the most part. I say that, and then he gets smashed in a two stack. See, now Max is adapting too, and this is what I mean when you're playing up against Max. He's a very discouraging player. Look at look at how he set this up. He now realizes that Lamp has a tendency to approach from the bottom like this. So what he does is he has five stacks of traps up, but he has two two stacks of two separated on the bottom with a backup stack of one on top meaning that if if lamp does surprise him he's gonna briefly retreat up top and then he's gonna teleport right back to his twos right so he kind of has him in a triangular pattern now max slowly pushing forward being very cautious though yeah, and Lamp is looking okay. I am like, you, you gotta remember, he's full Vita here. 30, 3,200 life with Oak. So he, he has a little bit of leeway here. He's trying to land that orb. Now, one of the mo most recent rule changes is that we actually just straight capped Absorb on, on Cold, right? It used to be that there were certain setups you could use, dare I say cheesy ones. I was using them on my Din, and I think they worked pretty good. But uh, they allowed 40% Absorb. And uh, we just straight canned that. You can no longer 40% absorb on any setup, but the rules did change in favor. Oh my god, and there it is! Lamp got there! Landed a very well-placed Blizz and tagged Max. Unbelievable. What is the score? I think we might have missed a couple of rounds of this. But I'd be very curious to know what the score is. Yo, hey, oh, by the way, what's up, Fax? Big cheers to you, brother. What can I do for Speaking of the Fax... There he is. Lamp, true champ. Dude, Lamp is very good. Uh, I think th the only reason, if I'm being real, that uh, people might underestimate Lamp and not take him seriously is because he's on a cold sword. Like, th the build in and of itself is one that I think often has people look in the other way. But Lamp is actually a very good player. Yeah, and things work a little differently now. I think it's a little more balanced. We made, like I said, we made some challenge. We made some changes based on the challenges that other builds were having. Just unwinnable matchups versus the Cold Sork, kind of made them a little better for them. But the Cold Sork is still just in a very good spot. Like it's, it's good. It's hard. It's hard to beat, man. Especially when you get yourself a, a player who's not only good at dropping those blizzes in the right spot, but it's also very dodgy. Right, can also get in there, knows the angles from which to approach, gets in there and does his job. <laughs> Coolie, stop, what? <laughs> well, are you talking about the cold the cold sort statement? It's not false, dude. You can see it in just about any just about any trap uh, chat conversation when like in the past when we see cold sorks go at it. And the fact that you have Coolio low cheering on a cold sorceress should tell you something that uh, lamp is pretty savage. You called lamp good. <laughs> No, Lamp, Lamp is good. He is, he's good. Like I said, I think that he often gets overlooked because of his build choice. That's And that's it. That's simply it. He has to hype his peoples up. Bro, it's... How often do we see Coolio Low say anything positive? Let's be real. We obviously know there's some sort of motive behind it. All right, well, let's just not focus on that for right now and just celebrate the positive. Okay, it's Coolio Low saying something positive. Sure, there's probably an ulterior motive. Let's be real, right? But it's so good. Ooh. 
Nice hit there from Lamp. He might have landed that, but it's so hard to tell on a Sin. Because the Sin, as we talked about in the championship bout, the Sin has that weapon block, right? It looks like he might not have hit him. I got a quick life check there when Lamp went for that name lock from up in the corner. And it was hard to tell if he actually dropped the Blizz on him and connected with that. But the Sin's got that weapon block, man, and that will actually block a Blizzard. You want to stay warm in the winter? Look, just imagine a barricade stream right now, right? If I was barricade quality good, I'd have this set up and ready to go, right? Some sort of cutscene. You want to stay warm in the winter? Most people would think of setting a fire for yourself, maybe even using an electric blanket or warmed gloves. You're real rich, get that heated steering wheel and heated seats, or you know what you could do? Cue barricade transition. Just put one point into weapon block, and that will keep you warm. That'll keep you safe from all the blizzards. You don't have to worry about shit. All you got to do is keep those claws active at all times. And that is how you're going to stay warm. Let's get back to the action. Just just imagine. Now just imagine sweet barricade graphics over such beautiful articulation of the discouraging feel of weapon block. And the absolute juck fuckery that it can block. That's, that's it. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Michael? Look, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Often overlooked because of the build choice. It's, I'm not wrong, right? It's like... It's like you can have a tier 1 dueler on a cold sorceress, but at the end of the day, they're on a cold sorceress. They're not a tier 1 dueler. You know? Yeah, Barricade really is, man. He, he's so good. And, and bro, dude, I was I was talking with him, and man, he's got some he's got some big big plans for like streaming assets and the the cool shit that he's doing. I won't I won't blow it up too much, but man, this dude's really pushing the limits. Like I, I'm talking, like when you think about best streamers in the world, right? Like the people that really take it to the next level, like on a world stage. You might think of like Doctor Disrespect and all of the crazy shit that he does, right? Dude, Barricade is on a different level. I think he's even better than him. When it when it comes to the actual effects and the actual things that he's doing with his stream, Barricade is wild. It, it's just next level. Ah, uh, no, not really. Not really, Eris. Like, Hydras are just too slow. You you might be able to set them up fast now in the in in uh D2R, but they're still just too slow. They fire too slow. People aren't just going to kick around and get hit by the Hydras. And you can see that if you saw the stream that Mr. Llama did a couple of weeks ago, I just randomly dueled him on his stream, and it was when he first built that Fire Sorceress. He was using uh... Oh, you want me to pull? I can't. Hold up. I, I thought somebody else was in there pulling. You, got, you want me to talk... You want me to do two things at once? Oh fuck! What is this bullshit? What it? What is this bullshit? Jeez! Fucking Jesus! Jesus! What was I saying? Oh yeah, I beat Lama's ass once when he was using the hydras. All right, but no, they're just they're just a little too slow. They're just a little too slow. Lamp's probably running a reasonable amount of rep by the looks of things. Alright, we got some mana. Alright, Primo, GG. Thanks for the help, man. Yeah, me and Primo up in here saving the duel. Getting some mana going. <laughs> Both aggro. No need pool. Get good, noobs. The thing is, it, it actually favors Max with no pool. He can just kind of sit in that five stack. Hello. And, uh, but then again, it also really doesn't favor the Cold Sorceress either because it costs a lot of mana to, dro to drop a Blizz down constantly. It, it's, it's a lot. And now we see Lamp very likely 
Mind Blast PK. A couple of good Mind Blast locks here, and this guy's going to be in the shitter. He does battle order himself up here, but he's still a good three lock Mind Blast away from pure death. And he knows it. He's going to try to make Max come and get it. But Max, Max isn't going to overextend. He's going to purposely extend just like that. I think he actually got there with a deflight. I think Max just deflighted that. Beautiful play. <laughs> Nambawan bullshit. What's up, Agromati? Circle around that Blizz. It's tough, man. Yeah, Blizz is on that cooldown, man, but... It sucks that it's on a cooldown, but it, it's it's kind of good at the same time. It sucks for the sort player, uh, you know, because you can't just randomly keep dropping Blizz down all over the place. But it's good because once you do drop that Blizz, if you're if you're the opponent, you know that you have a small window to kind of get in and not really be punished too much. Sure, the Cold Sorcerers could launch a couple of Ice Blasts if they're quick, but a lot of times you don't see that. For whatever reason... We don't see it. The Cold Sorceress almost always runs away when someone closes the distance to an uncomfortable, you know, in, a, in an uncomfortably close uh, proximity. It's very rare that we see, like, walk down Ice Blast. It may not be the best move. I'm not exactly sure why that is. Um, it seems pretty good. Seems like that might not be a bad thing to do, especially if your opponent is so interested in staying on your screen and staying close and only having some sort of close range attack to fight you with. Seems like within a couple of seconds that Blizzard's going to be right back up and they're going to be paying for it, but we often just don't see it. Yeah, exactly. Like Blaze, like you could you could mix it up and throw Blaze in there with some like walk down ice blast. That seems pretty intelligent to me. I just I'm not as experienced on a cold sorceress. I don't know why we don't see that more. Like, you know, you kind of antagonize your opponent, you try to bait them much like uh much like we do with Santiana, right? We we try to bait people to come in. If Santiana can smack a hoe with a meteor, how the hell aren't cold sorceresses baiting people in and smacking them with Blizz? I don't get it. Uh, I don't understand. Oh, I completely agree, Andrew. I had a, I built a cold sork recently, like, and thanks to uh, thanks to some help from Nightfall. I actually have some gear now. I have some charms and shit. And, uh, it, yeah, we're looking good. But that was one thing that I noticed right away. I'm like, dude, the reason why I love Santiana is because she got that blaze, dude. It's so good. Just gives you that massive run walk. Yeah, it's it's just really good. It's just so good. But you, you really don't see a lot of people doing it. All right, by the way, while these guys get set up for the next round, I do see Elk Brew over here. I'm not sure what these guys are doing. Elk Brew does have a duel tonight. Elk Brew on the card versus... He's got himself a duel against Punch, which is going to be pretty savage. Punch, I'm pretty sure, wanted himself another duel versus a very high-ranking Amazon. However, Kim Sulky, a.k.a. Jin Shin, was going up for the title and all the other Amazons, this guy's plowed their face into the dirt. This guy's really turned it up, turning it up with his new BVA build. So we had to match him versus Elk Brew. But uh, do I see him in here? Mind Goblin is Tempest, I believe. Uh, yeah, there's OG Punch right there. OG Punch, ready to go. Look at this, Elk Brew just not even healing? What, does he think he's got this match up in the bag or something? No, he's pulling. He's pulling. Can I identify as an Ellie full zoo summon? No. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, that was probably one of the reasons we uh, we shit canned it anyway. Can anyone make a central game? Primo! Yeah, thank you so much, Nightfall. That was, uh, we finally have a full grip in the inventory now. 
hooked it right up, man. We got some good swaps, too. Soon, I'm not sure if I'm good enough to bring it into DFC, but I'm certainly going to bring it to pubs and practice with it. And uh, But Blaze will certainly be... I need to get the girl to 99, man. The more I realize it, the more I'm just like, yeah, we need level 99. We need all the bonus skills we can get. But, like, Blaze has got to be in the lineup, man. It's too good. It's just too good. It's too good on a Sorg, man. Hard to catch those Sorgs when they got Blaze. Especially if they can really punish you with shit like Blizzard and Ice Blast, man. God. We literally are in it. It just pulled east. Oh, I see. Okay. I was going to say, I thought that was your... I thought that was a game Primo made in the first place. I thought we actually were on Central there. Maybe it pulled east because of the absolutely savage fiber internet that I just walked in with. Let me see if it's still pulling east. No, dude. Well, I don't know. 78 ping in my game. 94. No, this is still Central. It, this is I'm on fiber internet and I'm bouncing to, to like 94 ping. This is it's central. Yeah, it's that's legit. That's still central. Now it's 62. Yep, just checking it out. I don't know. It it's undeterministic of what it is. I'm losing my Fidium fiber. Goodbye, two gig. No way. Why? They what they just randomly take it away? What are they doing? What what happened? That sucks. Oh, moving. Oh, word, dude. Well, hey, congrats on the move. Sucks about the uh, losing the two gig, though. Hey, that really blows. I gotta say, ever since switching to fiber, dude, it's one of the best choices I've ever made in this house of anything. Maybe one of the best choices I've ever made in life. Hate to sound dramatic, but it's true. Nice, nice pressure there. From Elk Brew. Elk Brew, very, very savage druid here. This guy moving up the ranks. But Punch, very aggressive. And this guy is a killer in recent history. Let me see if we can actually get a, a shot of uh, Punch's standpoint here. Because it's so wild to see what he does, to see the angles that he picks. Yeah, here we go. Here we go, baby. This, this is the view. In this corner, we have to punch the Season 2 DFC champion making a big return here with these nasty chains. And so far, hasn't really got caught in the mix of a lot of these NATOs here. Nice chain zerk from punch. He does eat a NATO for his trouble, but... Oh, I see what's going on. Dude's got some nasty life leech set up for these pets. But I'll tell you, he's going to need them. Uh, we almost matched him versus Dio, but why I didn't was because we've seen this like in the last couple of months with Punch versus Dio, and Dio fucking tore him a new asshole. Like Punch didn't even take a round from him, I don't think. So that was the, I was like, man, we can't set him up like that. We need to we need to start we need to start this guy on the path of glory and see if he can do it versus any druid. So far, he's off to a good start, stacking up that life leech though, which will give him back a little bit of life in these. In these close range pet exchanges. Nice hit. And down goes Elk Brew. <laughs> Dio heard that. Do not underestimate Punch. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, dude. Gotta do it. I would totally do it. Do you know how overpowered druids are? You know how. Dude, do you know how. They have been S tier for a very long time, man. And it's not even close. Like, and it's just very few changes that have come their way in recent history. Very few things that you can do. Hey, hey Bill, pause it. Punch has got that in-game music. We don't need the dueling banjos. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's really cool to see Punch and the new version of the barb that he's on. Like, he has... He has made some adjustments to this Barbarian that has just really turned it sideways and is just jamming it up the charts, man. Like, we went from having a basically an unwinnable matchup in the Zombie Barb to literally having to apologize to players for setting them up when they chose a Barb and setting them up versus an Amazon. 
And for two weeks now, last couple of weeks, we've seen Punch actually take out two very high-ranking Amazons um, on this barb right here, which can apparently swap between, uh, you know, the max block BVA style and the BVC that he appears to be on right now. This looks like a BVC variant. I would imagine he's probably token for this matchup. Certainly not needing max block, not needing a big investment of points into dexterity. And with the DFC being what it is, you have the one fight each week, you might as well come in prime with your barb skills and your barb setup. Now, Elk Brew getting a little smarter with these Nados, trying to bait punch. And a nice exchange there. But if I had to guess, I would think Elk Brew has act did actually uh, lose out on that exchange. They might have dealt a pretty similar amount of damage, 50 percenting each other, but Elk Brew doesn't have the opportunity to leech any life back like Punch does. Punch has already probably leached back another thousand life off those pets. And as a druid, what are you gonna do? You're gonna give those you're gonna give those pets up? You you're gonna give them up? And you know, open the door to getting slapped around? You now you can have 50% block on your druid. That is certainly something you can do, and I would certainly suggest. We've seen that in just about every druid matchup, block is so OP versus a barb, right? So in any druid matchup, you probably want to take advantage of the rules and go to the maximum 50%. But what are you sacrificing to get there? Uh, you know, do you have the right gear to make it so that it's not a big dexterity investment? Are you still reaching the 163 cast breakpoint? All of these things are very important because on top of having that savage damage, the Barbarian also has some very nice cast frames, shares the same cast speed as a Sorceress, which is odd, but certainly useful. He's going for Zerk. He should use Dire or Bear at the moment, not Five Wolves versus Leech. Mind Blast sucks versus GG Barbs, or Max Block sucks versus GG Barbs. Uh, is he running Block or no? Hard to tell. Hard to tell. I... I haven't got a close enough here. We could actually, we might actually be able to pop in. See if Elk Brew is, uh, is wearing a Storm Shield or not. No, nah, it looks like Spirit. Yeah, he's on Spirit. But it, it could be, though, that he has some sort of gear that gets him to a pretty reasonable amount. It would be odd. It would be rare uh, to do that with Spirit. But he it very well could be the case that he has, um, he has the ability to get to close to 50% block without much of a dexterity investment and off from spirit. Be very rare, but uh, certainly possible. Yeah, oh yeah, Dio beat Punch with Punch on a BBC. Yeah, I would, I would guess somewhere around there so hard. So hard to come up with names now. Did you get that name back in the days of LOD? Yeah, I, I don't blame you. It's very it was very true back then. Even now, when everything's on the table. Nice chain there from Punch. Punch looking to get in with that whirlwind. Stormbringer, aka Elk Brew, is very low, but now Punch has been worked down by these NATOs, and Elk Brew is gonna make him chase him. There it is. Nice hit from Punch. Now 2-0 in favor of the DFC season two champion. Very spicy, very nicely done. He's even got, he's he's got the Dracul's Grasp on. You can tell from that proc of Life Tap, but also you can tell because they usually have a pretty big uh, amount of Life Leech on him, which is probably the primary reason he's using them, Punch, uh, on his barb. They have a massive amount of Life Leech, and if he just so happens to get pretty lucky and he gets that Zerk off, uh, he could very well proc Life Tap. Which is exactly what happened in that last duel. That's why you saw that life tap procked on him. That's that's really hard to do on a barbarian. Some people think that you can do it with whirlwind. You can't. Like whirlwind cannot proc skills. You actually have to legitimately proc that from an actual concentration hit or you know an actual zerk hit. And uh, that's exactly what punch did in that last round. Very very nice. Lucky. I can't carry anymore. That's the biggest challenge, Andrew. I've literally had to consider my PvP space in my stash for the last two years and slowly but surely clean it up. Like, slowly but surely, maybe getting rid of, like, an item or two a week that I'm never going to use, that I don't need, that isn't perfect, you know, and now my stash is okay. 
I only have one tab, I think, that's not PvP. You know, I, I used to have half of a tab that was devoted to some PvP swaps in the shared stash, but now it's two full tabs devoted to PvP. I'm almost a real dueler. I, I would agree, Go Gators. I think it's tough for a barb. I, uh, I mean, I haven't... I don't have the experience that Punch has on a Whirlwind Barb, but I would say I am probably the best. All right, this is, this is, there's not a lot of competition. I'm going to preface it with that, okay? There's probably not a lot of competition, but I think I might be the best Brawler Barb in HLD, okay? And even then, when a Druid starts stacking on a little bit of block, shit gets asinine. Like, you, you go from having a semi-reasonable matchup when they don't have block to being completely boned when they slap on 50%. Yeah, I think when you have two duelers like this, you know, going at it. This matchup is very fun. I think I think this is a very good matchup. Punch is bringing some big pressure. He's really good at those angles. He's good at that chain zerk, and Elk Brew is figuring him out. Like, Elk Brew is very good at figuring out his opponents as he's dueling them. He might give up a couple of rounds. He's almost like, he's almost like Anderson Silva in the UFC, right? Like, he's bouncing around trying to figure you out for, like, the first couple of rounds, but then he kind of gets a feel for your style. Uh, dueling him in pubs before too is like y you notice that like he'll he'll you'll beat him a couple of times you'll be like yeah 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 the stormbringer guy easy but then he like picks up on it and he's like oh okay this is how you duel this is your strategy and now that's what we're seeing versus punch we also got a we also got a d clone invasion this is big we're gonna have to go teach that guy a lesson i'm gonna get ready i'm gonna have the mercenary ready because D-Clone's gonna need a lesson in between the rounds here. We can't be letting him get away with this shit. He's invaded Sanctuary, and... We're not just gonna allow that. Alright, hold on. You might hear it in the background. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're just getting geared up. Geared up for the fight. It's central, so it's going to be a good duel. We're not we're not going to pot versus D-Clone. That's BM. Y'all remember how that went before on a, on a central game. We're not going to pot. A straight BM. Yeah, why would we do that? Ain't P, ain't me. That's right. I am overburdened. Oh, nice hit there from Elk Brew. A very... Dude, this is what he's doing, man. He's figuring out punch. And he's also punishing him. He's also making it so that... I mean, you would have never expected that from Elk Brew. But a very sneaky, aggressive change of pace there from Elk Brew. Actually stomps Punch, lands a NATO. Punch did not expect that. Punch in trouble, but Elk Brew likely in even more trouble. Nice, uh, nice up NATO wing there from Elk Brew. Those pets protecting him. He <laughs> said, Raymond says, shit, Annie, get wrecked. And there it is. Punch gets there again. Now making it 3-0. All right, let's let's uh, let's put an end to D-Clone's existence here, shall we? All right, he thinks he can just come in here. Look, we're on central game. We're not going to pop, man. This ain't... What do you think this is? A din match? You think... What do you think we are? A paladin? We just... We're just going to kill this guy real quick. We can't be having him invading sanctuary, okay? None of this bullshit. We got a perfect PvP Annie there, 2025. Just so, so beautiful. Hate to temporarily give that up to check what we've got here, but you know. When in Rome, we must check the spoils. I think that's how the saying goes. 
Uh, we didn't re-equip the shield, so this is probably a trash Annie. Yeah, 1911. I'd give it away, but let's be real. This is 2024 Diablo 2. It's more of an embarrassment to give that away. You don't want to be the guy on stream that accepts that. Because then everybody knows you're poor. And we're not trying to embarrass anybody like that. I can't carry anymore. I am going to switch games, though. What if he spawns again? What if what if the powers that be really decide that one D-clone spawn in the course of a night isn't enough? we got to be ready for it. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to accept that any. Then before you know it, you'll be camping, camping games just in case people spawn D-clones so you can get a shot at an Annie. And that's some kind of PVM poor... Poor bastard! You don't want to, you don't don't be that guy. Camping random random games, hoping decon spawns with fucking noob. What is this? All right, and here we go. This is round four. It's currently three zero in favor. Of the big bar bruiser punch now mixing in leap now switching things up nice chain zerk there from punch and a nice ct cast from elk brew to get out of there yeah whenever you see that barb start up with that zerk you should be ct tallying away and what that means is every once in a while uh you'll see this on a on a dueler's screen they'll pop up that that character screen like the stats screen or the skill tab you can really do it with any window that pops up on any side though what it does is it gives you leverage. It makes it so that you can cast your skills further, whether it's teleport or whether you're a trapper and you're just CT casting traps out there. Uh, Stadium PK did a great video on this and just explained the difference that you get with, uh, with CT casting. Great video to watch and a great explanation on the benefits of doing that. Well, one of the benefits, especially in this matchup, is your ability to do just that. You notice that when, when Punch got that chain on Elk Brew, like, he had that nice chain zerk right ready to go, and Elk Brew was out of there. Like, he was off screen so far that it broke Punch's lock. That's exactly what you want to aim to do with that CT casting. You want you just want to get out of there. A lot of times, that's most commonly what it's used for. People will use it defensively to teleport away and break someone's lock, and Elk Brew's doing a great job of that, recognizing when Punch has that chain zerk ready to go. Yeah, was that duel over? I, I wasn't 100% sure. We, we cut over to this. It looked like it was tough. I didn't know if it was over or not. Whoa, what was that? A Whirlwind and Chain Zerk? 4-0 victory from the Savage. OG Punch himself. And there it is. Yo, let's cut back over. I actually want to... These guys are still going. No, these guys are still going. This It ain't over. It ain't over. Still Lamp versus Max. It's 3-2 max right now. Very close duel. We got a lot of fights on the card. It all depends on how many people show up. We do have a few. Uh, right now, we have this one going on. We just we just saw the uh, the conclusion of Punch versus Elk Brew. Very nice, very aggressive duel. I'm glad that... Uh, I'm not sure if these guys waited or if the duel was still going on. Either way, I'm so happy that we got to, uh, that we got to see the tail end of this because this is a really good one. I didn't mean to fully cut over to Punch there. Uh, but man, it's it's wild to see that guy's skill, man. Wild. And this typically tends to be a long duel. Nice hits there from Max. Now Lamp in a lot of trouble. All right, this is a legit central game here. These guys did remake on a central game. It looks like uh, Lamp has got 93 ping. Hard to tell exactly. Oh yeah, bouncing back and forth between that and 110. Hard to tell exactly what the elephant, a.k.a. Max, has, but uh, I would assume probably similar. Punch is replying to me in Discord while dueling. Yeah, absolute savage, dude. What a champ. That's probably why he was sitting there and got NATO'd. We said he didn't expect it, but really we should have said he was just typing in Discord. Yeah, he's a savage, man. Absolute savage. Guy just answering barb questions. Yeah, here, let me send you my max roll build mid-duel. Yeah. Dude is a legend, man. He's so good on the barb. Polytheus, what's up, my dude? 
Bro. We've got an interesting duel tonight. We got to see Steez's duel from last week versus Tempest. And Steez is on a very interesting druid. We've allowed some exceptions for his druid build tonight. But I think there could be no better duel than Steez versus Polytheist tonight. That might be fight of the night. Which, by the way, we got to still keep track of this. Holy shit. Uh, we've seen Lamp v. Max. We saw Punch. The Elk Brew. We also saw... Oh my gosh, we had we had so many. The Championship Bout Melee. We also saw Kramer uh, versus Green Lungs. That was very good. That was the Barb. Barb Melee. That was a sick match, dude. Then we saw uh, Vegeta, the first ever... Uh, win by two, 12-10 matchup, Vegeta versus new DFC Melee Champion Nightfall. That was a good one, too. All very good matchups so far for Fight of the Night. It's going to be hard to pick on this one. We usually... We, we might do a vote. We might do a vote. We might switch things up. You know what? I think we actually should. I think this is how we should do it tonight. We're going to do two... We're going to vote for... We're going to do Fight of the Night twice, all right? We usually do Fight of the Night and Performance of the Night, but we're actually going to cost Cooley more Forum Gold today, but that's okay. It's the kind, generous donations of uh, DFC fans, okay? And we've missed a couple of weeks because I was a cripple. All right, I'm going to blame it on that. But this is how we're going to do it tonight. Uh, we'll vote on a Fight of the Night, Okay. And then, so you guys will get to pick a fight of the night. And then there's going to be the Cooley pick fight of the night. Like, it it may be the same fight, but if you guys pick the fight that I would have picked, I'll just pick another one. And that way it gives more people a chance to win. But also, that means we're going to need some more people up here in the dueling arena. You got double, double the chances to win some forum gold tonight. I know it's usually not the, the real prize. It's not the... It's not the big reason why people come. It's that DFC gold. It's chasing that DFC dream. You know, some of us just make the belt belt getting look easy. Right? But for other people, it takes a lot of work. <sighs> just kidding, man. It, it's tough. There's, there's some pretty high competition. But also, we all come to see the good duels, man. And that's what we get to reward today. There it is. 4-2 victory for the Elephant Sin himself, Maximus Prime, NYC Maxim, a.k.a. the Zychek, the Russian Phenom. Very close, man. That was a close duel. Max was almost dead there. One blizz away for sure. I wrapped back enough for hit number four. Sick. Lamp is actually CT casting so fast you can't see it. Boom! Look at this. Just in time, we got Sincor. Sincor popping in. Sincor versus Sawdust. Neck v. Barb. Whew. How is this one going to go? I'm willing to find out. Well, this was supposed to be uh, Neck v. Barb. It could have just been... Oh, no. I think uh, Sincor actually had signed up on a Druid. That's what it was. That's what it was. This one was an odd one. Uh, yeah, so Sincor... It looks like he was on a barb, but uh, I could have either misread that, but he meant to sign up on a druid. Doesn't matter. I think this is actually a really good match anyway. Uh, neck versus barb typically tends to favor the barb, uh, but, you know, neck v. druid slightly favors the druid, but it's a really skill-based, skill-dependent matchup. So we get to see an NVD here in uh, Sin Sincor versus Sawdust. Very good. Then we've also got Jay. Likely versus Trafalgar. Next, H Din versus Neck. That should be a fun one. And then I do see we've also got Vowels and Ninja Church on the card. Some add-ins there from uh, from Primo. By the way, thanks for adding those in, man. So BVC versus Hybrid Sin. More BVC versus Hybrid Sin. Sick card, man. Holy shit. Yeah, we've seen we've seen some stuff. Let's get. Uh, Yep, we've got Lamp versus Max in consideration for Fight of the Night, so we're going to do that. i got to put a reminder. We're going to do times two. Y'all vote, and I'll vote. I'm not, not going to tell you what I would vote for first, all right?
Speaking of Maximus. What's up, my dude? Trying to dig my roots back into this. Well, you're talking to the right guy. Root in and of himself. Very experienced dueler, not just in the melee scene, but also a savage HLD on many different classes. Hoping we get to see the uh, the ES Fireballer tonight, right? Root on ES Fireballer? He's got a melee match versus Tempest. Tempest also looking for blood versus me. Yeah, we've got Root versus Riz. ES Fireballer versus Sin. Now, I have both beat Riz on the ES Fireballer, and he has beat me. I think we need a catch match eventually. He figured me out in the last duel. It was close, though. 4-3. He figured me out. Last minute. Chat PKs on the daily as well. I don't know, man. That summon drew was deaf innovative. Oh, yeah. That's that's actually true. We got to write that down. Sorry about that. I, I forgot about that. Yeah, we got to put that down. Steez. Steez. Versus Tempest. Yeah, that was sick. That was the Summon Druid. Thank you for the reminder. Summon Druid. Yeah, wild. Yeah, we can't forget about that one. Wild. All right, and here we go. This is the classic. NVD. All right, who's going to win it? So far... We've got Sincor off to a good start versus Sawdust. He's landed a couple of shots, gets a nice stomp, and nearly flawless. Might have might have caught a little bit of uh, of a bone spirit there, but other than that, looking pretty good there. Dodged a lot of damage, stayed right out of the way. That was savage. Then Jay also live. Yeah, we'll, we'll cut over to that next. Looks like he's got... Whew, this guy's got quite the... Quite the lineup here tonight. We got us a melee match. GG. Y'all ready to go? Might be able to watch both. Tempest is ready to go for melee. I believe it's Root versus Tempest tonight. I think both of those guys are on a Fury Druid too. Turn it out to be quite the class. I gotta say. Turn it out to be quite the class. A lot of people picking that Fury Druid. Pretty pretty overpowered in the melee. We might have to be checking that out. Oh, dude, this is why we started a new game. Y'all see this? Right there. Whew. Right there, baby. Diablo about to reign again. About to invade the Sanctuary. He don't want none of that Santiana slap, but you know... We're sitting there. We're waiting. We're waiting. We might... Uh, you guys want me to put Santiana versus D-Clone down for Fight of the Night? I mean, we can put it on there if you guys want. But I think it was kind of unfair. Yeah, she's a fast clipper ship. Bought a PSS 4015 from Jin Shin because you laughed at my budget SS. <laughs> yeah, forget the fact that you had the perfects perfect everything else. Bam, there it is. A quick 2-0 so far for our boy Sincor on the Druid. Really putting on a clinic here in this NVD matchup. Sincor showing off the skills. But is he going to be able to make it happen? Is he going to be able to make this work? Is Sawdust going to be able to come back? He certainly has a savage player on the Druid. In Sincor. This guy, very experienced DFC veteran, but certainly experienced on this matchup as well. And you can tell by his stomps, his pressure, his double tellies. It's really looking good so far. Terror's about to be unleashed, boys. There it is. There it is. All right. We've got. We got a bonus duel here after this. After this round, nice stomp there from Sincor. Looking for that name lock. He's even got the screen shake going here. I'm surprised that didn't cost him more damage. Nice lock there from Sincor. What we're not seeing is uh, some walk downs from Sawdust here. He knows he's recognizing that he's locked, so he's, he's not really 
trying to engage in the walk down right now. I think he's trying to break that lock, but the thing is, you can you can easily get in there, and if that druid's got you locked, dude, like you can still do that walk down. I'd love to see more of that. Very, very tough opponent, though. Very unforgiving, as we can tell. Always looking for that lock, and his timing is very good. Sincor, very good on this druid, and there it is. 3-0 so far for Sincor. Let's go over and see how D-Clone's doing, huh? Let's see what this chump's up to. Man, I hate to embarrass this guy twice in a night, but I mean, if he wants to keep coming and invading the DFC, we can't be putting up with that. We ain't putting up with that bullshit. <laughs> no, no, no. All right. Yeah, no, this will be a good duel. We're not going to pot. We're not going to pot. We're just going to sit there and take it. We gave him his shot. He didn't capitalize on it. It's unfortunate, but true. All right. Let's hope this one's a little better. Hell, if the guy that spawned D-Clone got an Annie like we did, I don't blame him for spawning it again. Because that was bad. That was a horrible Annie. Stay a while and listen. We didn't re-equip the shield, man. This is bad. This is obviously a bad Annihilus charm. 15, 19, 9. I don't think we have room enough for that one in the stash, man. I don't think we got the room. If anyone, if anyone wants it, you just, you let me know. We'll set it aside for you. But Bax is gonna make fun of you. I just want you to know and understand that. Okay, it's that that'll happen. So be prepared. All right, you know, just in case they they pop it again, we might as well have another game up. I'm gonna do that in the background. You know, I'm not poor or anything. I just you know, it's it's, it's not it's an annihilus. You can't, you know. I'm not, I'm not poor. I'm not the poor kid. Come on. XB Dog. Wow. You, sir, are the goat. He says, Cooley, congrats on the world record, baby. You, the goat. Thanks so much, man. XB Dog, big cheers to you, man. Thank you so much. And there it is. We have a 4 0 victory for Sincor there, putting on a clinic in this NVD matchup. Insane, right back and forth, man. Just in and out, making it a quick night versus Sawdust. Yeah, and and on that, I mean, I don't think there was a lot of people competing on the bar, but let's be real. But that's why we chose our words carefully and said that we set the world record. It's really because it's there now. You know, it's it's there. Certainly the fastest. We took it seriously. We did our homework. No one, no one had sub two minute at it. But at the same time, it's now there. It's now there. Thanks so much, XB Dog. 15 months, man. Really appreciate that, brother. Big cheers. All right, let's cut over to Jay. Let's see what Jay is up to here. And here we go. What's this? What's this guy on? Is this. Who's Jay's opponent? I would assume that Jay is going up against. Trafalgar? I'm gonna guess. Yeah, I think I think Law is Trafalgar. Relatively certain on that. So that's that's about what we're looking at. All right, I say let's do it, man. Let's do it. Let's jam. It's time. Trafalgar. The player in the DFC without Discord. This guy. Pushing the limits of life and communication in the 21st century. Trafalgar harder to track down than the president. But this guy says, I don't need that Discord shit. I see the stream. I see you. Oh, look at the 16k hammer on this guy. I didn't even know that was possible. GG, Primo. Appreciate you, man. Big cheers to Primo. Dude making it all possible. Jay heard it was Trafalgar said, I ain't ready. Yeah, Trafalgar not having Discord. 
is like basically you know how like your dad back when like cell phones and the internet became a thing like, and then they were a thing for like a decade and your dad was like I ain't doing that internet shit and it was like at this point like Google was out and uh, he's like oh I'm like that's Trafalgar but with discord he don't need that discord shit he doesn't need that taking up unnecessary room on his computer yeah, six, just about 6K HP here with 16K hammers. Jay is kicking some ass, chucking mad hams. These things hurt. This is real. Like, this is some real damage. He even had a scepter there, so he was he was kind of flashing off his scepter. He was, he was showing the damage that he had on his hammers, which was 16K. And I didn't quite catch a good glimpse of his scepter, but I can assume it's probably a 5-5 a five five scepter, meaning that it's like... Plus five concentration, plus five blessed hammer. Which is wild if it is. Like, that, that's kind of crazy. You don't really see that a lot. Oh, man. Nice train there from Trafalgar. Oh, my God. Quick finish from Trough himself. GG. Jay goes down. Was slain by the law. Unbelievable. Big, big hammer damage. I almost want to see one of those hit. I almost want to see what they got. And this this dude's got a match, an inventory full of charms, too. He ain't messing around on this damn man. Looks like he might even have the Alder's Boots for the faster run walk. Trying to, you know, in case this turns into one of those walk-down battles. Jay's Deli, coming soon, near you. He's slinging some serious ham. You can get 16 with Hodo 2 in this matchup. Yeah, I was going to say, like, uh, you don't typically see it. Mainly because, uh, like, let's be real. Like, 12 to 14k hammers is probably good enough. Like, it, it isn't like you're gaining a lot more when you go to when you go to 16. I think actually 17, maybe 18k is possible on hammers. But, uh, it's, you're not really gaining much more, right? There comes a point where the utility of the other things that you do also matters. But in this matchup, it is kind of just hams versus magic damage. So, I mean, you know, versus the... Oh my god, that was two hams! That was two hams! And Law ain't no chump, man! Law's got a lot of life, too. I think he also might... Uh, dude, one hammer, one shot? No freaking way. Dude, that was a one hammer, one shot. Allegedly. According to Law, one hammer, one shot. Wow. Okay. All right. Yeah, he is he using 75 FCR? It looks like it. He has uh I don't know. He, he it could be higher though. If he's going to 16k, he's probably got SOJs or BK. He goes I'm prepared to die. It, it would be strange to see him on that, but if you if you imagine if you suppose that he's got the 10 cast on his scepter, right? He does have the gloves and the helm, with which, which I assume are going to have 20 casts on them, plus the spirit. So there's 85, and then all he would need is a, a, 20, a 220 amulet, and if he has Arachnid's Mash, he's got 125. So it's it, it looks as though, from a Din player, it looks like he's on 125. Oh my god, nice stomp there from Jay. Unbelievable, now making the score 2-1. Yeah. Bro, nice job tonight, by the way. Nightfall. New DFC melee champ. Yeah, he that's definitely what he's got. I'm I'm seeing it now. I'm seeing it. He's got the 220, he's got the Iraq. So I would I would assume. Well, he also has uh he might not have SOJs here because he has the Oak Sage, which tells me he's probably got uh Nature's Peace and then maybe an SOJ. Maybe not an SOJ. Maybe but I, I don't know what else he would have. Like you, you probably don't need the cast at that point. So I, I would guess probably Nature's Peace and SOJ. Yeah, that was that was wild though. Big hits on those hams. That time I think it took him two hams, but one ham almost almost did Trafalgar in. 
This this reminds me of like the type of din you would want if you were in a pub game trying to troll people. Like this is the exact din that you would want. You would want a belt full of full juves, and you would want a din that did 16k hammers, maybe more. Maybe you have yourself a nice barbarian friend that's gonna give you that barb bow, right? Oh, those hammers were good. They they one of those might have got stopped by the golem in the oak there from Trafalgar, but those hammers were good. Those were good position. No, they, they did. They got stopped. That might have been a nice hit there, too. Hard to tell. You got to get in and out versus that versus a necro. You got to be in and out of there, man. Especially if you stomp, you got to be up out of there afterwards. But he might have landed one. Hard telling, not knowing. It's hard to get a life check on a necro. Yeah, good question, Dan. Uh, that's that's what it is. When you open your skill tab and your skill tree like that, we talk about this uh, as, a, as a subtle reminder, because honestly, when I first saw this, I had no idea what was going on. But it's to give them more leverage on casting. So whenever you see them open up that skill tab or or the, the uh, you know, hit C or T, essentially, you'll also see him drag his cursor far past that screen. It's because it shifts your character over to one side of the screen, giving you more leverage on your cast. You can cast further when you open up a, a window on each side of your uh, screen like that. You also see some some speedrunners do that. Like uh, the real good speedrunners, you'll see Mr. Alama SC when he gets his like telly staffs and shit. You'll see him open up and do some CT casting. And uh, that's what it's called. And it just gives you more leverage. It makes it, especially with like uh, telly charges on a telly stick and speedrunning, you get more bang for your buck, right? You get more distance that you cover for your teleports. In PvP, it allows you to break locks that people have, or it allows you to push pressure, catch people a lot quicker, because you're teleporting a lot further per cast. Nice stomp there, and a nice a nice hammer landed from Jay. And another one! Bad teleport from Trafalgar ends up eating that one. It's now 3-1, I believe, in favor of Jay. Yeah, it's widescreen telly with extra steps. Exactly. Well put, Kramer. You know, I've only watched a limited few of uh, of Kano's runs. I talked about him in the most recent video that I put out there. But uh, I don't know if I've ever seen him CT cast. I haven't looked for it. But I wouldn't doubt it. Dude's like a world record holder and shit. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if CT casting was in Kano's lineup. I, I would be I would be looking for that, Dan. Next time you see him speedrun and you see him swap on like a teleport staff or something, especially if he's going to like Chaos Sanctuary, see if he opens up like you can do it with any window. You can do it with your with your inventory window, with your skill tree, like any window that pops up on either side. You'll see people open it up and drag their cursor past it. I wouldn't be surprised if he does it. Yeah, he does. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, I would be surprised if he didn't as a as a world record holder speedrunner. I, I would be surprised if he didn't. Oh, and another quick stomp from Jay, making it a quick four-one on this impressive 16k hammer damage din. Very nicely done from Jay. GG man, Dre J versus Trafalgar. Let's get that down in consideration for fight of the night. What else we got going on, man? I see Foos are up in this. Look at this. Yeah, he he is showing off. He switched to 17k setup here. It is possible for him to get that 17k hammer damage. He says, "Good fight. I need more than 2.8k life." Good fight, Trafalgar. Happy that uh, happy that you're able to get in there with that. Yeah, he's got some swaps for this, man. Very interesting. Dual stack gloves with light res. Those would be very nice Uber Tristram gloves right there. Open wound spell. Yeah, this guy's got some murdered in style, vanquisher style setups here. I like that. Number one VTPK, baby. Let me know. Yeah, those are good dual stat VTPK gloves. Also, you know, my mind goes right to Uber Tristram, but also just so happens to be good VTPK gloves with nine dex, nine strength, I believe they were 20 nines, 20 IAS, 9 crushing blow, and 22 light res. Very good in VTPK. Waiting for Sogi. He's on the phone. All right, cool. Yeah, no problem. He's probably talking with his wife slash girlfriend, just saying, look, like, I know it's, it's, to you, it's a video game. All right. But to everybody else in the world, it's the most important PvP event of the entire week. So. You know, give me some space, all right? Like, lay off. It's probably just giving the rundown of how the conversation is probably going. Likely. I 
Uh, it's hard telling. It like it, it it could go either way, Dan. Like some people do, but you really don't need to. Uh, there's in-game trade, but more commonly there's tradery that's big these days. Uh, but probably the biggest thing that a lot of people use is JSP. It's just the easiest place to find the stuff that you're looking for. You can make a post and uh, trade your forum gold for it. And you can get forum gold. You can technically buy it, but a lot of people don't because it's expensive. And the best way to get forum gold is just to find items early on in a ladder season and sell them for it. A lot of botters trying to set up their bots early on. Make them pay for the items you find. And then use that forum gold later on to buy your items. That's, that's probably what 95% of us do. But yeah, then you can also pay. Like some people pay. Uh, I, I've bought some items before, uh, just because it's easier, and I sometimes just don't want to deal with people overcharging shit on JSP. But the thing is, like, it's hard to find all of this shit, like solo self found. A lot of people talk about like solo self found dueling and stuff. It's not doesn't really exist. Like, if you're not gonna at least trade for the stuff that you need, you're probably never gonna have the gear that you need because you're never gonna find like an inventory full of peak home lifers and shit. It's gonna take you years to do that. But all of that considered, that's why a lot of people duel on non ladder. You don't see a lot of duels happening on ladder for really this exact reason because people make an investment. They go out of their way. They find stuff. Some people buy it. Some people trade for it. Some people JSP for it. Tradery, whatever. But it takes a long time. And you see some of these duelers, like uh, like Foozer here. This guy's got a sin where all of his charms in his inventory match. Now that's like next level junk fuckery. Like you're never gonna find that. You know, like that's that's the thing. Who's versus who? It's a good question. Let's check this out. This is Foozer Man versus yeah, so, uh, yeah, Sogi. It's Sin v Din. Sogi is on a roll with the Din dude, but he certainly has himself a, a very good Sin that he's going up against. This is going to put him to the ultimate test. I think it's also going to be. Uh, but Foozer always says that I hate him because like he picks a Sin uh, and gets impressed when he gets put up against like you know, the worst possible matchups that we can find. Well, the reason for that is because you picked a fucking sin. Like, it, we gotta we gotta punish you for that choice somehow. You know? And so that's what we do. But it's nothing personal. But now he's got himself what I would consider class advantage versus Sogi. However, Sogi's a savage man, moving up the ranks and really showing improvement on that din. So I think it's a good win for either player either way. Really shows the skill if Foozer can pull this off, because you, you do need a, a good level of skill on a sin. Uh, especially if you got a creative din player like Sogi, and a uh, you know, aggressive, opportunistic din player like Sogi. Actually, you know what we could do? I also think Tempest is ready to go while you guys wait. I think uh, I think Tempest is ready, ready to go. Uh, might be able to pop in for that. Oh, he's back. All right. There you go. Never mind. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say if if y'all just need some time, no problem. Well, I'll get that cursor out of the way. Just we got some got some important business to take care of. All right, there we go. D-clone ain't spawning again, is he? Just just keeping an eye on it. Just keeping an eye. Alright, Foozer Man, I believe. Is he is he from EU? Or is he is he I notice his game is talking in a different language here. He says sec phone again, damn. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Tempest, where are you at? Where's, where's this Tempest guy at? We got some time between a duel. <laughs> ring, 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 banana phone. This guy knows what's up. This guy been around for a while. All right, Tempest and ZPK. Let me see if we can get in there. See if we can get in or if the game is full while we wait for these guys. Uh, all right. All right, we're opened right up. Looking good. Good stuff. Okay, might hear some 
Tellian in the background here. Let me do this. I'm going to move this window over. Uh, yeah, there he is. Oh, he dinged 99. We were going to see about uh, watching this guy ding some 99 here. But uh, the duels have been right back to back and out straight here today. So we haven't really had the opportunity to the chance to do, to do such a thing. Uh, however, glad that he got to 99. He's going to need it. This, uh, this din is obviously a champ. Uh, we're going to switch to death. Or are we? Or do we switch to this setup? Do we need the Vizzo? We really don't need the Vizzo, do we? But we do need the attack. We've got a 40-15 here. We're going to need a... Going to need a Raven. What happened to my Raven? All right, there we go. I think we're looking good. Massive crushing blow. Deadly strike. I say we're looking good. This is what I'm going to take down Tempest with right here. I think I hit the break point. I'm not sure. I have... Uh, what's my IAS? I'm pretty sure I hit it. I have... Yeah, there's no way I don't, right? Like, I have more IAS now? Yeah, th th we're, we hit the break point for sure. Let's do it. All right, we got some crushing blow versus our boy, Professor Oak, a.k.a. Tempest. Look, I got to get back in the winner's bracket, in the winner's column here in Melee so that I can get me a title shot. I need to get me some DFC gold. Be the be the first double champ. All right, we got to get the click and hold action going on. Got to do this right. All right, here we go. Here we go. There we go, baby. There we go, baby. Close duel. But that's how we roll. Hello. All right. All right. That's how we roll, baby. Starting things off the right way. All right, y'all gotta kill me, though. Kill me. Kill me, because I got this frozen armor. All right, there we go. Uh, what all your charms? Uh, just kind of budget max AR lifers. They're not perfect. That's my best one. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. All right, here we go. Let's get this shit. We're 1-0. Oh, All right, here we go. Click and hold skills are on point. Not that round. Not that round. Just It's just the luck of the draw. It's just the luck of the draw. Even a blind squirrel finds nuts sometimes. All right, we're 1-1. One, one. Here we go. We won one. All right, we procced his fort, though. Now he's got massive defense. We got to get lucky with the click and hold. And by lucky, I mean just show off the skill. You can't morph back. Get the fuck out of here. You can't get the... You can't fucking morph back. Get the... Get the fuck out of here. Get out of here. Fuck out of here! Alright, here we go. We got this. Alright. We're 2 1. Alright, Proct his fort yet again. Oh, we got his oak, but it was too late. Oak got a little too froggy, a little too late. What's up, bud? Bud? All right, now we're 2-2 two, two. on Tempest's new level 99. All right, here we go. Oh, we got to kill him. Don't you be killing me. You got that armor on, bro. You got that, you got that chilling armor on. You can't be cheat. What are you, cheating? 
What are you- what are you cheating? What, you, what is this? What is this BM juck fucker? Look, look at this! Your frozen armor is literally ass to the entire game! Now it's a- now it's a bedlam! Alright. 2-2. Two, two. I- I think this is the right setup versus Druid. I think we've got the right setup. Two two. All right, click and hold skills on point. We're just doing the. We're doing the. Yep, there we go. Come on, come on. We were close. Two three. Two three. I think this is the new meta setup that I like right here. I am overburdened. This is the. This is the G face with the forty fifteen. We don't have it upped. I think it's, uh, we probably should have it upped, honestly. But then again, I don't want to waste my 4015 and have the roll be complete ass. Uh, I think 349 is perfect. And knowing me and my luck, it just would not at all be perfect. It would be like the furthest thing from it. All right, click and hold skills, baby. Let's go. Let's go. There we go, baby. 3-3. Three, three. All right, the Dru the Wolf Druid Killer, checking back in. We back in this. Oh, now he's switching some shit up, huh? Switching it up, I huh? go to a stash, switching it up. What? You can't handle a little bit of three-two action, Tempest? Gotta go switch. Gotta go. Gotta go to your sideboard. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. See how that sideboard does for you. There it is, baby. Four-two. We don't dick around. The Fury Druid Slayer. That's how we roll. That title is as good as mine. If I'm not going to beat... Uh, I got, if I'm going to beat one Fury Druid at the top, I got to be able to beat them all. Got to be able to beat them all. All right. I, I, I don't, I, I don't want to spoil anything. I don't want you to know my, my plan, dude. I'm going to take that title eventually, bro. I'm going to be the double champ somehow. But it starts here. Okay, it starts here. It starts here. There we go, baby. 5-2. All right. 5-2, baby. I was going to say, I was hoping not to lose that one. I was so close. We need a good early start. We need to get in, get fast, before Tampus figures us out. Click and hold skills of a champ. All right, here we go. All right, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, big comeback. Big comeback. We don't fuck around. Big comeback, baby. Come on. Come on, baby. Oh, close. 5-3. Five, 5-3. Three. Five, three. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah, we gotta go heal. We're just, we're hurt just enough where we gotta go heal. Alright, 5-3. In favor of me. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Click and hold. Click and hold. Like a champ. There it is. 6-3, baby. With one Fury Druid, down go they all. We still got a ways to go. We can't count the chickens while they're still in the eggs.
Right. Here we go. 6-3. Click and hold skills of a champ. We're not going down that easy. Come on. Big comeback time. Big comeback time. That's what it is. That's what it is. <sighs> Alright. 6-4. We can take that. We're still in the lead. For now. Uh, wolf transforms back into a human when they're low. Uh, when they go to one. Shit, sorry, bud. Oh, fucking A. Now I gotta kill you. There, we two for one. Two for one. That was an accidental click. But we gotta, we gotta kill you now, Tempest. Just how it is. All right, there we go. All right. Six to what? Four? Six to four? Okay. We've got this. Yeah, instead of dying, a druid will transform back into a human at one life. Oh, man, we got the oak. We got to get there. Come on, baby. 6-5. God, that's not good. He's trying to make a big comeback here, and I don't like this. I don't like this. It's fury, fury, druid nation, overpowered bullshit. Nerf the fury druids. Nerf them. All right, 6-5, baby. Alright, we got that oak anyway. We got that oak. Professor Oak is now oakless. He's oakless. There we go, baby. Seven five oh I gotta Oh yeah, I got the I got the chilling armor. I gotta get killed. Get him. Alright, seven five. The journey. To beating all Fury Druids starts today. We just have to believe. Down here. Alright, yeah, that makes sense. Alright, here we go. 7-5. Big hits early on. There it is, baby. Eight five. Bro, I might have the answer. I might have the answer to Fury Druids. You never know. I'm coming for that ass. I'm coming for that ass. That championship belt, Nightfall. You better be holding on to it. You better be enjoying it while it lasts. All right, here we go. Eight five. Click and hold skills of a champ. Click and hold skills like nobody else in the world. God damn it. 8-6. Close. These are all close, though. Eight six. Close duels. That's what it is. Scrap Bandicoot knows what's up. Avenge in the dens. That's how we gotta roll. In army, baby. I'm kind of debating if I'm gambling that belt right now. What belt? Like a... You trying to get like some... But what, what the hell kind of belt would you gamble? Oh, we got to kill him. Just going to make a druid for the title shot match. Barb has no chance. Why not? Don't worry. I'll, I'll beat all the Fury Druids out there. I'll take them out. 8-6, baby. That's the score. Click and hold skills of a champ. Damn, dude. 8-7. So close. 
Ridiculous. Overpowered druids. Doesn't even need oak. Ban oak on druid. Ban. Ban all pets. Doesn't even need it. Fuck's sake. Theory druids. LOL. All right, here we go. Eight, seven. All right, here we go. Big hits. Doesn't even need the oak, dude. That's so ridiculous. Eights. That's like the f eighth duel in a row we've canned the oak and lost. And, and like, this setup is sick. Like, it's, it's like 8k zeal. 15k attack rating, 25k defense, massive crushing blow and deadly strike. Oh, we got it. We got to kill him actually. He's got that he's got that frozen armor. And now I do too. Might as well just kill each other. There we go. Eights. God damn. Nine eight, baby. All right. 9-8. We're one win away. We can theoretically do this. Just need to smite a couple of times. Ah, uh, no. You can still go full full Zeus, these. Full Zeus, fine. Yeah, we're gonna try to work this into the rules. We gotta figure out a creative way to do it that can't be abused. Alright, here we go. We're one win away. One win away, baby. Come on. The journey of a champion starts here. 10 to 8. Finished with a very large life pool there, too. Duel wasn't even close. Boys, it's fucking... Whew. Better hold on to that belt, Nightfall. Better hold on to it. Because I'm coming for that ass. GG. Good duels, brother. Good duels on the Fury Druid Tempest. Glad we were finally able to get it in. Yeah, GG. That was close. Nailbiter, dude. I actually can't believe I won that. I thought just these Druids are just overpowered as shit, man. Everybody on them right now. They, they, these, guys are, these guys are tough. I heard that they really beat Barbs. This is Foozer, by the way. Foozer versus Sogi. Sogi on the Din. Uh, I don't exactly know the score. I have had this up. Oh my god. Big charge from Sogi. I told you this guy was creative, man. I told you foos are going to have his work cut out for him, and now he's cut open. This guy's going to one. It's too bad that Din doesn't have a mind blast, man. You'd be fucked. Towned. You just town. GG. Foos are just towned. He says, he says, I could drown this out. He's going to town. GG. And Sogi gets there. He, he was probably FOHPK. Uh, and, and, and it looks like Sogi might be on a VT. He might actually be on a VT. Yeah, he towned. Yeah, he, he was FOH. Now, now that I know that Sogi's on a VT, yeah, he, it was certainly done. He was FOH PK. I, I might in a bit, Nightfall. We got we got some people trying to trying to get their duels in here. So I, I don't want to keep these fine fellas waiting. Uh, and we've also got Polytheist coming up versus. We've got the duel of the off meta druids going. And we can't we can't really miss that. Definitely want to see it. Steez versus Polytheus. The duel of the off meta druids. Cooley versus Tempest on the card. God, that was sick. That was sick. We also have Montreana. I see him. I see you, bro. I believe he's got uh, melee and an HLD this week. Dude's got two. Dude's mixing it up. 
Bro knows the secrets. Bro knows the secrets, okay? There's a little bit of secrets. And unless sound has fixed this and differentiated between HLD and Melee, technically, based on old rankings of the sheet, the more duels you had, regardless of what they were, the more your ability to move up. So if you did like melee and HLD and you won both, it just counted as two wins. And based on the way that the HLD chart was working before, if you had, uh, I think sound might have changed this, but if, if you just had more wins, it would just technically move you up. Yeah, that, that's going to be an interesting duel. All right, and look at this, Foozer, really trying to get in. Now, technically, like I said, this guy's got class advantage, but he's really getting put to the test because Sogi ain't no chump, man. This guy is real. This guy's for real. This guy's real topped-in stuff right here. And he's showing and proving every week on this build, man, just stacking up the bodies. It's about time he's got himself a real good challenge, much like Foozer here, and same with Foozer. This guy's been stacking them up. He's he's had... He, Foozer's actually really never had an easy night. He's either had a... a Tough matchup or a tough opponent, regardless. And tonight is no exception. Boozer certainly has a tough target in Sogi here. This guy is going to be opportunistic. He's going to pick, try to pick him apart from the outside, and he's going to try to capitalize on the very few windows that Boozer's going to give him. Well, let's see what he does. Let's unmute this man. It's good to have some audio, huh? Let's see if. Let's see if. Oh yeah, Sogi. Sogi is stream in this as well. Let's take a look at his perspective. Let's take a look at Sogi the Din. Yeah, very opportunistic from the outside. And you can... Oh, no. He's... A, okay, he's on hams. Is he on hams? Is, or is he is he a hybrid? What the hell is this guy doing? He's He's got himself a grief. He's got himself a... Uh, looks like a grief berserker axe. That or he's gone real, real high tech here and has like some sort of... Uh, like open wounds axe for a smite so he goes in for the smite i'm just making shit up at this point i'm not sure if he's actually gone with this but with the way with how creative this guy is i wouldn't be surprised if he has like some open wounds axe much much like the open wound sword i was using against llama wouldn't be surprised if he's using something like this to try to set up like an foh three-piece combo and like with the smite he's just guaranteed to cut him open like goes through the weapon block and all of that because he's also chucking hams, which is confusing me here. I'm not sure if he's actually on a hammer dinner or if he's just kind of faking it. Like, because we see this guy go in for smites a lot, and his smites hurt. And he also has... Okay, no, so he doesn't have... This is grief. He's using grief because I also noticed that he's got the... Uh, he has Dracul's Grasp on, which is, yeah, for life tap. Like, that can help. That can be certainly a pain in the ass for a sin. But they also have open wounds on them. So either... Either he has some very special axe that has not, like, a subpar amount of open wounds on it. Or, uh, he has a grief. Which, based on based on how much his, uh, his smites are hurting and his charges are hurting, I would guess he has a grief. Yeah, and also, with, with those smites, it now opens up the ability for him to get in and, uh... And proc life tap off from the Drax. So a very very interesting din setup here. I love this, gotta say. And it's it's hard to tell how much his FOH is doing too. But it doesn't appear as though he's got any clean hits on Foozer so far. But Foozer is at like 90%. So I would imagine most of those are coming from FOH, which means that like that probably hurts too. Which really confuses me. Like I wonder what this exact din build is here. He's chucking hams, he's smiting. He's throwing FOH, and it seems like they all hurt. Like, a very interesting build here. He's full VT? Okay, so he is. That, that's what I thought. I thought it was like, I thought he was faking it before. I'm pretty sure I've seen Sogi just like chuck hams randomly, and Foozer Towns again! Foozer Towns again! He, he ain't trying to go... He ain't trying to get that FOH PK. He ain't trying to drop an ear out there in the more. He's gonna make Sogi fight for... What is this? What is this? Some... Some grudge shit? Yeah, you know what else is OP? Mind blast and, and weapon block. I say you just get used to it, bro. Foozer, you got... You got the most broken character in the game.
And it, yeah, Graham, it was definitely, definitely grief. That's what he's rocking. And especially now knowing that he's predominantly VT and he's just chucking the hams to like, he's faking with the hams. Like he, he's certainly faking with them. I'm not sure what the point of throwing those is. Like, I, I really don't know why he's doing that. It, is it like, I, I would guess maybe like if you're like, if you're, if you have your opponent, like you've, you've cut them open and they're at one and they just get rando ham hit. But, like, at the same time, you could just FOH PK him down. Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't really get the, the point of the hams. I, I don't understand it. Someone explain this. He, he's just faking them out. Keeping them, keeping them guessing. I, I, I have no idea. Oh, it kills Shadow? What? Okay. Really? That's some next level din shit, dude. If that's it, there's no shot. There's no shot a level one ham kill shit. And Invisa hams don't do, if they don't do shit, it doesn't matter. Like, why throw them? Why, you know, I guess you have unlimited mana, but at the same time, like, there's no shot those are killing Shadow. Like, one point ham, no shot. Zero percent chance. Yeah, that's what I would, that's what I would think too. I, I feel like in every instance where you're chucking hams, there's something better to do, right? I think like I think he's just I think he's playing head games with Foozer. I think he's keeping Foozer just guessing as to what's gonna hurt. Like it, it very well could be the only reasonable explanation I can think about him throwing hammers here is I've actually dueled him before, and like in a in a pub game or something. And when he threw hams, not knowing his build and what it did, I gave the hams false credit. I was just like, those might do something. And I I ain't touching them either way, you know what I mean? And it always made me wonder what the hell he was going to do. I still, up until the end point of the duel, didn't really know. And, and even now, I, I get confused as to whether or not he's actually on an H10. Maybe... He's setting it up for, like, future DFC matches where he signs up on a VT, but he's actually mad hammer damage. And, like, so people don't give his hams enough credit because they've they've studied his fights from the past. So, like, his hams actually hurt. He's setting, it, he's setting his next duel up. That's what he's doing. The, ha the hams have to do some kind of damage in his build for him to use them. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's it's goes back to like the bow argument, like Widowmaker, right? Like a lot of times, my Widowmaker on my din actually doesn't do shit. There are plenty of matchups where Mid Widowmaker doesn't actually do anything. Like it it can't even proc open wounds sometimes on some setups that I have. Like there's literal shit that it can do, but it just changes the way that your opponent plays. They just give it too much credit just just from what they've done in the past. And I'm thinking as a reasonable human being, that must be what he's doing. Like, he just must be trying to get in the head of Foozer by chucking hams, and Foozer just immediately responds to the ham. You know what I mean? And he, it, like, I... Maybe he'll run away, maybe he'll... You know, I, I'm just not sure. I'm not sure what sort of response he's trying to induce from Foozer that way, but, yeah. GG deal. Might be trying to upcharge that shadow now. Foozer keeping on the back pedal here. Foozer actually should uh, push the pressure a little bit. Um, like he he could afford to push the pressure, like uh, against a din. Um, a VT I guess is like it's a little iffy. You kind of have to keep your traps up, but a, a sin can always do exactly what Foozer is doing right now, and that is just stay way the fuck out of the way. The more you teleport around like that, like theoretically, if you get a good din that can actually catch you. The more opportunity you give them to catch you when you don't have traps up around you. Like, but if you slowly just kind of methodically stalk your opponent with traps, there's very few things that a din can do. Like, you have to be real quick because this whenever you go in, and you can see this from my fight versus Chu Chu 30 from way back in the day. Whenever you go in, whenever you think that you've got an angle on the sin, they'll just CT tell you away, and then that will happen. You'll, you'll eat one of the hits from Trap, and you've lost the exchange. And they'll just repeat that all the time. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to cut over to 
Polly and Steve's next, Dio. I think these guys have been waiting and ready to go for a while. Gonna cut over to that. I might have to. I might have to pour us out a drink here too. Might have to. Might have to re up. The energy drinks are good, but should only should only ingest so many in the course of the day. After that, there's not as much of a benefit. Going to rebow here is Sogi. Sogi down quite low. Over 6k life with that oak. Now Sogi's being opportunistic with the FOH. And that's how you gotta be. Loses that exchange ever so slightly. Just loses his oak. But that Mind Blast, man, that adds up. Sogi looking to increase the distance here. Looking to be very opportunistic. But man, oh man. Look at all these, look at all these pots all over the place. Boozer wisely gets out of that exchange. Quick eye there from his opponent. Okay, so now it's looking like, uh, it's looking like Sogi is still on CTA side. There we go. I was going to say that would have been embarrassing to catch him. I catch him with that CTA out. Now he's got, now he's got the right weapon. Might have also just been using it to try to rep. Because it looks like on the main side, he's got no rep. So he, he might have been CTA side to try to rep some back. Yeah, now now he's going in willy-nilly, just being like, all right, I'm probably going to lose this, but... Yeah, we got to get in there. All right, hard to tell what the score is. GG. Uh, not GG's. But we do know that Soe has at least two wins, and this duel was going on for a couple of rounds, I think, before we kicked over. I can't carry anymore. So it could be three two Sogi. Or it could be or it could be three two for his opponent in Fuser. Hard telling not knowing. But either way. Certainly, at most, a couple of rounds left on this. Wow. Wild, man. A close one. Sogi's actually doing really well. Like, he's got a tough opponent. Certainly doesn't have class advantage here. But he's really shown and proven on this stand. This guy is this guy is top-tier material right here. He's very opportunistic. Look at this. So many Shaco swaps. So many COA swaps in the stash. This guy is full VT for life, man. VT PK gang for life. Ah, uh, no, Salty. Uh, no, unfortunately, I should actually be wearing my sling today, but I'm not. Uh, it. My arm's feeling better. Um, my range of motion is improving quite a bit. Like, physical therapy session today was great. Um... It's improving quite a bit, but, uh, yeah, we're, we're getting there, but I probably should still theoretically be in my sling. I've got like an, a little over a week left on it. I took it off today. We were going up against Llama. We couldn't lose. We, we couldn't lose. We didn't want the cast catching the keyboard. Sogi is number one in VTPK, even in LOD. No shit. Didn't know that, Jay. By the way, another big cheers to you, man. Really appreciate that support and that generosity earlier on. Big cheers to everyone tonight. Appreciate the generosity and support. Botasaurus, Jared, Jacob, XB Dog, Fax, Jay. You guys are the best. Defended 60 times? Holy shit. Oh no, we were we were one arm for that, dude. We were one arm. We were in a sling for that. I mean, we were we were using the other hand, but it was very difficult. Like, it, my sling would always get caught on the keyboard and, like, move the keyboard and shit. I hated it. But we did it. I mean, you get used to it eventually. And there it is. Fuser now doing... Now giving him the gay is what I call. He's now giving him the gay. This is very... This is very discouraging for Sogi. Fuser giving him the gay. 
Like, just getting in, casting the traps, and getting out. Like, tough, tough game plan. Tough game plan to beat. But now you have Sogi chucking them hams. Dude, he's number one VTPK, chucking them hams. I gotta, I gotta imagine with such a high-level player here that there's gotta be a point. Yeah, and he is going in with that FOH. I think that FOH is doing some damage. Nice chain there. I like that he's staying on the outside, being very opportunistic here. Like, it, he's not playing Foozer's game. He's just like, okay, if uh, I see what you're doing. Uh, the FOH still does hurt. It hurts the sin quite a bit. Like, it, it's a noticeable hit, especially if you're a VT and you've invested a pretty significant amount of points into FOH. You're still talking about, like, 150 to 200 damage per hit on the sin, which is, like, it, it's not a lot. You're not going to, like, you know, it's going to be subtle chip damage over time, but it's certainly going to negate all of their rep life. It's going to make them, you know, if you harass them enough with that, it's going to make them try to switch their game plan a little bit. Try to come in uh, and p potentially give you an opportunity that you've been waiting for. And it looks like that's what Sogi's doing. N not not playing the, the game of Juck Fuckery. Had both my arms broken. Wow, holy shit, Odin. That's that's wild, man. That is wild. Now Sogi's bow has run out. I was gonna say he might be he might be going over here to rebow. That was a scary exchange there, running in, chasing with no bow. He, he he might also just swap to CTA and try to rep life back. But uh theoretically opens the door for a, a world of hurt. That, that could come back to haunt him. I don't even think he cares about his bow at this point. He, he doesn't have any rep life on the main side. I, I really don't even think he cares about the bow. I think he's just like, look, let's finish this duel. Like, you're... Like, I get it. You've shown me your gay card. With your traps and your running. Let's just finish this. I am like, there we go. Alright, he rebos. Finally. I thought he had just given up on life for a minute. I would have. Man, I broke my elbow skateboarding when I was a kid. Try pissing with your arms in two casts. Yeah, that's rough. No, at different times. Sprain both feet too, though. Rough play during the childhood. Yeah, this is the first time... Like, I've never broken an arm or anything. Like, but this this is... I, I tore a tendon. Like, I tore my rotator cuff. Oh, my God. And a big finish there. Patience pays off for Sogi. I'm going to guess he's got three wins now. We, we certainly have observed three wins from Sogi. So, we know he's one win away. Hard to tell how many wins away his opponent is. It is 3-3, three, three, okay, for sure. Yep. But, uh, yeah, this was, this was of all tendons to tear, you know, that aren't life-ruining. This, this one is pretty bad, I guess. Quite a, quite a crazy recovery for it. Good day. 9 out of 10 painful, pain scale, no doubt. No shit, dude. That's rough. That is rough. Yeah. Look, we're all messed up, man. We're all messed up. We're all falling apart. It's just what it is. Yes. It really won't, though, Maximus. Like, it, I mean, it, it's... PvP is not items. Unless we're talking maybe melee. Like... PvP is not items. Like, you could have... You could have someone with marginal PvP skill and give them the best items in the game, and you could you could practically just give Toshank enough enough items to get him to the max breakpoints that he needs, and he'll smash that player. 
Like, a lot of times when it comes down to the items, it's usually the prideful players that are trying to perfect their character. It's it's not the... It, it's oftentimes the good duelers that go out of their way to get good items more than it is the good items making those players good. And then, I mean, also when you combine that with the fact that, like, we've had in the DFC a DFC champion that did not use JSP. It's not to say that he didn't trade, but, like, you know what I mean? It's I think that's often confused that like JSP is just the reason for everybody's you know awesome items, which are in turn the reason for their skill. It's just not the case. It just it just so happens that like the most elite players oftentimes hunt perfect perfect gear. If, if the skill is equal, yeah, items can make a difference. They can. They won't make all the difference, though. Like, I mean, dude, it isn't like we're just new to this. Like, we've been doing this for, like, four years and watching straight PvP. And this is, like, a non-biased opinion on it. Like, because I honestly used to believe what you did, too. That, like, oh, okay, I just need all my gear to be perfect. I haven't hunted perfect gear in, ever since D2R came out. Why? Because I know it doesn't matter. I know that, like, the, there's holes in my PvP game that are way more important than get to, to fix than getting perfect gear. Like, NVD style. I have, dude, I have chars that I don't even play that have near-perfect gear, and I get smashed in every tournament that I duel with them on. And it's not because someone's... It's not because I have 40 life skillers and someone else has 45. It's because I fucking suck on NVD. You know what I mean? So it's... And this is from gear that people have given me that I'm still saying it doesn't matter. That gear is not going to make me a better dueler. There's holes in my game. Like on a din, bro, I'm one of the top performing dins of all time in the DFC. I, I don't own a 40 life Peacomb. I don't own a 25 uh, charm, like a 20 life 5 all res. I own close, but, but I don't own it. You mean to tell me there's richer dins out there than me? There certainly is. There's better, more well equipped dins out there. There's some dins that have beat me. But there's no Dan that's that's performed con more consistent over time. And I, I do not have perfect gear. Like, not even close. I have cool gear, but it's not perfect. Like, I, I've developed a style that my DIN game has very few holes in it because my lack of skill in certain areas has been patched by creativeness or cre you know creativity in other areas. You know, so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna lose this battle so I'm gonna fight this one instead like you know and that's that's the that's what it comes down to now yes yeah if it comes down to both players of equal skill that are both playing perfectly perhaps the items might make us a, a slight difference or maybe all the difference there of all the years we've done PvP we've never seen that situation happen we, we've never seen maybe maybe one duel we've we've seen and and it just so happened there that both players had perfect gear so like we the items didn't matter. Yeah, hand eye coordination, re reflexes, reaction time is all the most important thing. Like that's that's really what you're looking for, especially in duels like this right here. The sin has the advantage. It doesn't matter how perfect the the sin's gear is. She could be rolling with subpar gear here, but it's just because she has the class advantage. Like so the din if he has perfect gear or not, it doesn't really matter. The the, the fact that he's going to get mind blasted out of all of his teleports like that is just a pain in the ass, and he's going to eat damage for it. it. Doesn't matter. Like it's that's so often what it comes down to. So I mean, I I see your point that you know, man, it sure looks like all the best duelers have all the best gear. But my argument is, it's often the best duelers that are. Well, let's be serious. Sometimes prideful. But because of that, that same pride that makes them a good dueler is also going to be the same pride that they're like, yeah, well, I'm going to have perfect items. Like, and it's certainly that player that probably doesn't need them. For sure. For sure.
Yeah, I, I think, it, like, I think setting up something like that, bro, would be, it would be very disappointing for, for the people who believed in it. Like, it would be almost devastating for the people that believed otherwise. For the people that believed that the gear was the reason they were losing in PvP. In some miracle world where we could set that up, those people would be so severely devastated when they got smacked yet again by the people that were just good in PvP. Like, convincing people to do that or even starting something like that is next to impossible because people take pride in the gear that they've, that they've invested resources in and all of this. But even if we could, like I said, I think it would be severely disappointing for the people that thought it would matter. Like, soul-crushing. To be like, I'm still getting smacked. Like... Yeah. And, and trust me, this is coming from someone who used to believe that. I, I was like, okay, I'm gonna make a dueler, I need perfect gear. Like, I, there's no exceptions, I need to get it. I'm gonna be a PvP player, I need perfect gear. So far from the truth. Like, I suck on a Druid, I suck on a Necro, I know why I'm bad. I can tell you one thing, it's not my gear. I'll show it to you right now. I have matching 40 life charms on both of those characters. Like, they're not perfect, right? But, like, I should win way more than I do with the gear that I have. Like, dude, literally my boy Bushy gave me some of the most nasty Necro gear in the world. Like, bro, my Necro is probably worth 20, 30k, maybe more. I've barely ever won a Necro duel because I'm bad on a Necro. And by bad, I mean I'm probably better than 60% of, like, 60, maybe more percent of just pub players out there. But when you're talking about DFC, the people that are, like, next level good, all of your weaknesses will be highlighted. Toshank embarrassingly beat me on stream the other day with one fucking hand. Right? Like, it, just because I, I can't do what he can do. Yeah, yeah, you, you know what's up, Max, yeah. Like, you, you might have seen some of it. You you saw, you saw the budget Necro, right? The the mule Necro that I joke about all the time? Like, the the uh, the poison Necro that's a mule that has, like, 40 lifers matching <laughs> and, like, near perfect, a perfect fucking uh, D-Web and shit? That's, like, the mule. That's the mule. Like, yeah, dude, yeah, are you in the Discord, Maximus? Yeah, just like, just tag me if I'm around. Uh, every once in a while, I can pop in for some duels. I might, I might be able to either uh, this weekend or later. I am but yeah, I, I stopped hunting perfect gear for that reason. I'm just like, that's not, that's not the reason I'm losing. I, I know it. I'm being real with myself. It's not. Let me see, actually, it should actually be in the description of this, Max. It should be, like, if you look in the, the description of this video, there should be a link to it. We used to have commands, but they all break on YouTube commands. I don't know why, but, like, the, the Nightbot commands break on YouTube all the time. We set them up, they work for a stream, and then they break. And now we have Sogi pick, trying to pick his opponent apart from the outside, be opportunistic with the, with the FOH here. Oh, man, he almost paid the ultimate price there. Nice traps by Foozer, man. This might be... I, I think it very well is 3-3. Because the way that both of these guys are playing, you have you have Foozer not really taking any any big risks with his opponent super low, and you also have Sogi not, not really uh, wanting to lose this here. Oh, nice traps from Foozer. Ooh, nice traps again and a near miss there. Now Foozer is mind blast, maybe even Shadow Bay PK is gonna have to rebow and it might it might save him from one of those. But yeah, he just needed to get in. Oh, GG's. And there it is. Foozer Man gets there in a very close back and forth 4 3 duel. Wow. GG, man. Let's get over to Polytheist. Polytheist, the duel of the off meta druids. Wild. All right, let's check this out. Let's get that in there. Sogi versus Foozer Man.
Good duel tonight, man. And remember, at the end of stream, we'll vote for uh, the two best. Y'all will vote for fight of the night, and I'll vote for fight of the night. I see you, Primo. Holy shit. Rifles for days. All right, I'm going to check those out in a bit. All right. Duel of the off-meta druids. We've got a summon druid versus a shaman druid. Who will come out on top? If I had to guess here, what do you guys think? I would think that because of Polytheist's devastating and very consistent range, I would think that he might have the advantage. And the fact that he has pets here too that could potentially absorb some of the hits from the crows, you know, from the ravens, I, I would think that maybe the shaman has the advantage. I'm not 100% sure though. It's really hard to tell. Very little damage landed on Polytheus so far. But also, we've got some massive protection from Steve. Steve's got all those pets, man. He's got all these pets to protect him, but so far, man, he's get, he's getting eaten alive by these fire skills here. Fire and physical damage. He's going to need to keep that cyclone armor up. This is an interesting duel. A duel of the off-meta builds. A very interesting back and forth. I'm so glad we made this happen. This is we we put this together. Steez told me he was on a, a very weird druid. He, you know, not not your typical druid. So I was like, all right, man. He's just like, just don't give me paladins. I'm like, all right, but whatever this is, I know I'm gonna love seeing it versus Polly. And I'm I'm so glad we got to see it versus Tempest earlier. That was a that was a very close back and forth. Oh, Ventrilo from way back in the day, bro. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, so do do you have Discord downloaded? Like, I think you can just go to Discord.com and download it if you haven't. That's it's basically the new Vent. Like Vent used to be back in the day with like uh, with. D2, WoW, I think, used it at one point. Uh, now everybody's just on Discord. And uh, so if, it, like, you can download it there, and it's basically, I'm not going to say the same thing. It's, like, all of the best communication things on crack. Like, uh, it's it's just, it's really good. And uh, then when you click the link, it should just open. Yeah, I was going to say, it should just, like, open up the server in Discord. He should have one point into Hurricane if he's going to twist her for the swirls. Interesting. He has scored some hits. He has scored some hits on Polytheus. But he's still got a ways to go. And Polytheus is doing what Polytheus does. Whittling his opponent down over time with well-placed attacks. Getting him to getting them to chase and just finding themselves in that Armageddon. Which, I'm not sure how much that full zoo will protect from those Armageddon hits. One might think that it could protect quite well but polytheus is landing that damage man it could also be that uh it, it could be from the volcanoes it could be from the fissures that polytheus is launching hard to tell exactly where all the damage is coming from but yeah he, he's launching that fissure too like polytheus is on it man he's hitting you with so many shaman style attacks from so many angles bro another hit there from uh from steez those crows those wolves getting in I gotta love those twisters, man. It's an interesting, it's an interesting call though, Gators, with the with the hurricane too. Ooh, I think I think he's probably relying. Oh my God, nice hits from Polytheist, and down goes Steez. I think he's probably relying on those those pets like the the wolves, just hitting and knocking his opponent into stun. But yeah, I mean the hurricane would also do it pretty easily. Is a Tesla in too AOE focused to be good at duels? Uh, not necessarily. Usually, when you see Tesla dens, they're uh, they're usually trolling pub games. They're they're usually not serious. The problem with a Tesla den is they usually don't have uh, very good cast frames, or they usually have holes in their game that ranged characters can just pick away at. And there's a lot of ranged characters. 
like you know from the necro to the zon to the hammered in to you know like there's there's a lot of uh there's a lot of even the druid to some degree could kind of just kite the din into into nados so you almost need enigma to be chasing your opponent down and you you almost certainly need another type of attack right like you you can't necessarily it's against the rules to be too passive in in duels so you couldn't just run around and hope to nuke people with an aura uh it, you know so you would need some sort of attack whether it's foh or what have you something to aggress your opponent with and usually there's there's a lot of classes that can you know for lack of a better term outclass a tesla din just outrange them uh out damage them especially when you know what you're going up against if you know you're going up against the tesla din and you over stack your light res and put on a t gods suddenly the tesla din isn't really doing broken damage to you like it's just kind of fair damage and now you have just a less powerful din yeah yeah and if you if you have one that's like teleporting around or if you have one that's charging around sometimes it can be hard for the din to stomp them but let's say like you had a tesla din versus say my paladin i would just shoot a Widowmaker with open wounds and fuck tons of poison at you from a, a mile away until you chose to come in then i'd stomp you you know what i mean like that's that's how i would approach such a duel but that's just me uh, there's other people like a Zon would probably do the same thing force the You know force the engagement. Oh my god nice hits from Steez and an amazing chain Incredible PK from the summon druid Unbelievable that was a sick exchange right there. I was so happy to see that that's I think that's the exchange that Steez has been waiting for all night in all of his matchups That's exactly what he's waiting for is that nasty tally lock that is wild. Uh, Fuser just barely won that one, Ganja. It was it was close, but uh, Sogi eventually was felled by Fuser. So the Sin won. Yeah, I think Zon would have a very easy time versus a Tesla Din. I honestly think a Druid would too, like because the Druid. If if he stacks up his uh, his light res can just keep recasting cyclone armor, so he would also have a pretty easy time versus a Tesla Din. No real even need for pets at that point. They're all gonna get nuked. So you just keep your oak up maybe, and then just tell you stomp. Uh, a necro is gonna outrange the Tesla Din all day. A VT would probably be able to out damage, um, especially if you get a really good VT that can do the three piece combo. They get one smite in and then they FOH chain you and you're just dead. You can't damage them fast enough. Yeah, so it's it's not to say that a Tesla Din like couldn't be done in PvP, and not to say that it couldn't have some good matchups. But it's just so often outclassed by other more meta builds. Dragon Den FOH is kind of cool, but the problem again with the Dragon Den is you don't have teleport. You're, you're gonna have teleport charges, so you're gonna be you're gonna be stuck uh, trying to catch your opponents a lot of times. So any any opponent that has range on you will win. Like it's an auto win for any opponent with range. Auto win for the Necro, auto win for the Zon. Probably an auto win for a VT because they can just FOH you down. Well, I, I yeah, I guess yeah. Well, you you might be able to trade FOHs with them. But even even still, I think that if they can deal a lot of damage very quickly, they'll probably just out damage you. Yeah, I, I it's. We've seen it. We've seen people do it. I remember who was it? Was it? I want to say it was somebody here that you, oh my god, here it is, the chain again. There it is, baby. What? Bro, that is exactly what Steez is waiting for. 
It's now 2-1 in favor of Steez. Steez turning this around with these nasty chains with that summon druid. Yeah, we saw somebody do it with a with a dragon den at one point. Who was it? It was way back in the day. Early D2R. I want to say it was Steez too. I, I almost want to say I can't remember. I, I don't I part of me doesn't think it was. But there was somebody that brought in a Dragon Den, and what I loved about it was it was very different, first of all. But second of all, it had Charge, and it had FOH, so it had, like, a lot of offensive skills to it that, uh, like, it, it didn't have to late, which is what you would expect from usually a Dragon Den, that it, especially ones that you see in pubs, is they'll just, like, run around and try to let their aura damage and annoy people, and try to catch the people that aren't ready, like, haha, gotcha. Uh, but, like, in real PvP, like, people can prepare for it and get ready. But there was so many attacks from the player that was using it that it was quite diversified. And if you weren't ready for it, you could... Like, it was hard to prepare for all of it. But his... His motion was a bit limited. Whereas, you know, he was kind of charged. He would get outranged by, by uh, ranged players. And even if you try to match him up fair, like... And it's tough. It's it's tough. It's definitely an uphill battle. But who knows, man? I'm all, I'm all for it. And here's the other thing too, a Dragon Din is inherently BM for fire characters. So a Dragon Din would inherently be BM versus like Polytheist because he has fire damage and you have like 95 fire res. Like so that would inherently be BM. It would be BM versus a fire sorceress cuz you have 95 res just based on your gear and shit. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I, I mean, it's technically legal in the DFC. I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to see it. It's just we we've seen some people commit to it and have yet to make it a viable build. But it would be really cool to see, no doubt. Like I'm all for it. That's that's what the DFC is all about. I love seeing the shit. I love Steez's Steez's Druid here. Like seeing stuff like this just makes my day, man. Like. Steez's Summon Druid versus Polytheist Shaman Druid. What other organization can you see such wild duels in D2? Like, these, are, this is the best of the best, man. And who knows? There may come a day we see a Dragon Din making moves like this, too. My bet's on Steez to pull off such a feat. Large March is beefy Barbie girl. Jam Slam Alabama, baby. I ran in charging Dragon Den once, but I don't think you're thinking of me. I, I I know what you're talking about, Bruno. Yours was like a. Yours did everything. It was like your Den not only had the auras, but could also proc from destruction. Like I remember that. Nah, it was someone had made a full commitment to Dragon Den, like full decked out gear a nice caduceus with like all the skills that you would need foh uh foh conviction something else too yeah well what are we missing which one which one gavin was it yours Shit. Was that the... Oh, man. We got a, we got a few of them, dude. That was Din V Sin, GVN Sound. Was that what it was? Fuck, bro. Did you win? Sound certainly didn't have the matchup advantage, but he's got those Din skills. Challenge an opponent. Yeah, I was down 0-3 and came... What? Oh, my God. That sucks. We missed it. Oh, shit, bro. Yeah, congrats on the win, though. That's huge. That's huge. Now, Polytheus trying to finish.
Polytheus very close here. But the thing is, man, he has learned. He doesn't want to get Telly locked by Steez, man. That Telly lock is a death sentence. Steez looking for that. Looking every time you see him teleport in there, he immediately recenters that cursor. He's looking for a sick, sick Telly lock. Oh, Polytheus going in for the Telly lock there. This is a duel where I think both players see an opportunity in a chain telly lock versus their opponent. But I think that for sure, Steez wins that. <laughs> it's kind of wild. Man, what a duel. Man, makes me makes me want to make it true. It Get him to level 99. I can imagine Summon's probably better at level 99. Polytheus brings his Druid to 99. I remember when we were talking with him, he was saying this is this is the, the build to bring to 99. By the way... 129 Swedish Krona from Jakob Malmgren. Jacob! Jakob! Bro, big cheers to you, man. Thank you so much. That support is huge, brother. Polytheus took that round, evening up the score, making it 2-2. That's wild. Let's cut over. We got so many people dueling. Let's see if we can uh let's see if we can pop in to a root match over here. See if this guy's jamming and slamming. He's doing oh, root versus tempest is going down in melee right now. Oh, this is big. All right. Here, let's cut over to this. Tempest trying to make waves in the melee division here. While he does this, I'm actually gonna go re-up on a drink here. The the energy drinks are getting a little stale, dude. The body's hating them. It's just like, look, we need something different. Bro, let's do this. I'm gonna just gonna leave this up here for a second. And we're gonna we're gonna re up. I'll PRB boys. Damn! What are we missing? Look, I had to, I had to switch it up to something that was a little more thirst quenching. Man, when you drink too much stuff that like isn't water, or doesn't taste, you know, doesn't go down like water, it really, I think it's bad for your health. I actually also had to throw the sling back on. Arm was feeling some type of way. Uh, yo, yeah. Cheers! Just want to say big cheers to Jakob. Oh, dude. Big cheers to you, brother. Busting out the gym, the Mr. James Beam. Appreciate that support, man. Goes a long way. Coming back is truly... Yeah. I came back with a handicap. Just kidding, I always had that. I just came back with a bad arm. Alright, here we go. Bro, how is this one going? Is is Tempest just slaying root here? 
I honestly, dude, if Root, if Root loses, oh no, Root's winning. It's eight three. I think. I think it's eight three in favor of Root. That's really too bad because if if Tempest beats Root, that means by implication I beat Root and Tempest tonight. You know, in the rankings, which at that point we might just be able to justify a title shot. I'm just looking for reasons. Just, just looking for, just looking for reasons to give myself that title shot. All right, man, we got some good ones. We got vowels. We've got, holy, we've got a lot of people up in here. Let me see. Let me see what we've got. We've got Clint, vowels, Montreana, my guy, Root. Oh my gosh. Well, wait a minute. Root was slain, making it 9-3. Bro, this is this is actually huge. This is wild. Is 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 Tempest gonna win this? Gotta go through Root? Nah, bro. Root's gotta get on my level. In melee right now, it's uh the way we look at it is we, we kind of look at it like regular HLD rankings. It's just like the same amount of wins usually goes against each other. It ain't like I got to get through all of the Fury Druids. I just got to get through the top ones. Holy shit. Oh my god. GG's Root got there, man. Root wins in melee. Okay. All right, man, I was really hoping that wasn't going to be the case, but who knows? Who knows who we'll have to go up against next week? Bam. All right, here we go. We open back up in this round with Steez versus Polytheus. Polytheus down, might have caught a couple of chains there. It's very risky stomping his opponent, very risky stomping Steez, because all of those pets, man, are just going to come right after you. And they fucking hurt when they hit, man. Those Ravens are no joke. Like, that is some serious damage. Really cool to see, honestly. Pain to be on the receiving end of it, though. Man, oh man. And there's, like, nothing you can do about it. You can't necessarily kill the Ravens. The only way to kill the Ravens is to just let them swing at you. Like, and then they can so easily be recasted. Like, they, they basically die after 10 swings, is how it works. Yeah, this is this is nuts though. Man, oh man. So many people have joined the stream. I love seeing you guys here with us. Mr. Lama SC still chilling, probably in denial once his rematch. He was probably in a hurry before. He's he's gonna come back. One hundred and twenty-nine Swedish krona from Jakob Malmgren. Another one, just cause I couldn't beat Punch tonight. Hey, Jakob! Thank you so much, man. Hey, look, uh, you know I know Punch is quite an opponent, and feel free to take it out on me all you want. But bro, big cheers! I really appreciate that support, brother. That means a lot. We poured out the good stuff for you. We're finally into the uh, thirst quenching drinks here tonight. And uh, big cheers to that, man. Punch is a hard opponent, dude. Punch is a hard one. Yeah, that's uh, that's Elk Brew right there, guys. The kind generosity from our boy Elk. A brew for Elk Brew. Big cheers, man. Thank you for that support. That's uh that's that's awesome, dude. That's really cool. Bro, this is savage. I can only imagine. Uh, wait, so who won that one? I was do I was doing the cheers. Did I miss it? We're watching Polytheus standpoint. Did he win?
$5 from Macaroni 2. Let's go. Jewels, jewels, jewels. Duels, duels, duels. Macaroni 2, my dude. Big cheers to you, brother. We're busting out the good stuff. The duels, duels, duels is the number one thing on a Thursday night. Uh, bro, thank you so much. I see that's your first super on a live stream. I'm so honored, brother. That means a lot. Thank you. Strong supporters. That's key, man. But you know what? It's worth every dollar, even though I didn't pay anything. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate it, man. I'm glad you guys enjoy it and uh, support it. Man, we've like religiously done this for years now. So it's so good to to get that support from you guys to keep this going. You know, because uh, it means we're really doing something good. You know, it means uh, we've, we built something good here, and I'm happy to have you guys be a part of it i mean this the community that we started is now so much bigger than any of us right like but we did it and y'all have been part of the journey so i appreciate it i love showing up here every thursday night chilling with you guys it's like the highlight of my week always there's like it's very rare y'all know there it's very rare the only times that we've like canceled dfc in most recent history i mean besides like you know the, the fact that they're doing ladder resets now on thursdays which is stupid but uh it, it, it's been literally when we tore the rotator cuff and then when we got the rotator cuff fixed. That's the, you know, after surgery. This will be the only time that we've delayed, postponed, canceled DFC, bro. It's, it's a very rare event. How much to make some corrections in the DFC results of tonight? You know, I've never really had anybody ask me that. Uh, gosh, what do you think? Should I run this by sound? How much of a bribe do we need to take to compromise the results of DFC data permanently? I mean, everybody's got a price. I'm not above it. You know what I mean? We'll just... We'll just tell Punch we don't know what fucking happened, dude. Elk Brew's moving up the charts. <laughs> Can I have to... No, he didn't pay to win. What are you talking about? There's not, no such thing. <laughs> GG's Kreider, always good to see you, my dude. Thank you, my friend. Really appreciate you. Always good seeing you. I'm so uh, speaking of good members of the community, Kreider shot right here. Not only a big supporter of the Cooley channel and DFC for many, many years now, but also just all around community great guy in all all the of the diablo sense man so big big cheers to you thank you for being such a great part of this community dude have a great night appreciate you Kreider. macaroni i see you hold on the spaceship sometimes takes a while to update as you know, we travel seven times the speed of light. Takes a while to catch up. It, it, it'll come through. But look, if it doesn't... If we're traveling too fast and it never catches up, I want to recognize you for that, bro. Thank you so much for that uh, membership. Hell yeah, Scrap. Look, I don't even think I've liked it yet. Well, I, I gotta refresh. I'm number, I'm number 73. I'm number 73. Thank you for that reminder. Much appreciated, brother. Yeah, uh, you know, a lot of people are always wondering what liking a stream does in the ever, the, the ever esoteric YouTube algorithm. Well, it's very simple. It, it actually writes a letter to the YouTube team when you do it on a stream like this and it lets them know like I don't know why they do so I don't know if they read it but for every like someone whose job it is at YouTube has to read a letter that says this stream right here that was going on best PvP in all of Diablo 2 we just wanted you to know it take notes and anybody who's ever interested in such a thing just send them this way because it's very unlikely that they'll find anything better yeah, they and they have to read it. So, not bad for a click, really. It's like, just think of how much of someone's time 
You're wasting. That probably didn't care how about DFC or PvP, and you're spreading the word. With one click. Doing some damage. Big cheers to that. Nightfall, thank you so much, brother. I see you. That what what is up with this setup here? Do I have the wrong What's what's taking so long? So what's taking so long? They're not coming in at light speed anymore. But bro, I see you. Thank you so much, Nightfall, for legend tier membership, brother. Yeah, for sure. Appreciate that, Scrap. Bro, this is an interesting duel. Like, oh my god, and he gets there again. Bro, this is three wins. This is a 3-3 three, three close back and forth between two off-meta druids right here and two savage players on these off-meta druids. Like, we have Polytheist on the Shaman Druid trying to get there with a hybrid mix of fire spells and physical damage. Like, his spells do both those types of damage. And we also have the Summon Druid in Steez coming in with, with that bear coming in with those ravens. And man, oh man, he hits like a truck. Those ravens doing all the damage, man. That shit is wild. Wild. Yeah, big cheers to you guys, though. Macaroni 2 and Nightfall. Really appreciate you, man. And again, congrats, Nightfall, on the, uh, on the Melee DFC Championship tonight, man. That's big. That's big. Much, much deserved. From the second I saw that druid, I'm like, it won't be long. It won't be long. And there it is. Look, it always says zero. Don't trust it. This is what I mean. Shit breaks on YouTube. Plip Ploppers, official welcome to the team, courtesy of Nightfall. Nightfall, thank you so much, man. Big cheers to you, brother. This is the duel to rule them all right here. Between the two off-meta druids, it comes down to this. The final round. 3-3. Three, three. Who will take it? Which one is better? The Shaman Druid or the Summon Druid? For the first time, we get to see what the answer to that question is. Bruno and Mantra going melee in three mins. Thank you, brother. Macaroni with the gifted sub. What? Cried an official, official member of the Twitch and YouTube teams now. Official. Thanks to Macaroni too, bro. Thank you so much and a big cheers to you. All right, we're going to pop right into that, Montreana. I saw I saw that you were live earlier, too. I wasn't sure. Uh, thanks for the heads up, bro. We'll pop over to that. That's going to be good. Montreana popping into melee. Looking to, looking to climb the ranks. Looking to kick some ass. I wonder what he's on tonight. Barb? Sell it? We're going to find out. My guess would be Barb. I'm going to guess Barb. Montreana's just known for that Barb, dude. I, I wouldn't be surprised he converted this thing to melee. Just saying. We're going to find out. Hell yeah, brother. Big cheers, Nightfall. And also, thank you for the gear the other day, man. That was fucking sweet. My Colt Sork is looking good now, man. I, I might be a real Colt Sork here soon. Hell yeah, brother. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Look, there's there's some people, there's some people that that they don't like the they'll they'll turn down the hand me downs, right? All the solo solo self found people and shit. You'll never see me do that. Never, never, bro. You got stuff to give away. You know I'll put it to get. You know, Nightfall knows. Before he knows it, I'm gonna be making something that's like, look, I I trashed. Polytheist with the cold sorceress once. Look at what I. <laughs> yeah, he knows. He knows. <laughs> so Bruno solo self found for life. Look, I ain't saying there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not my style. All right? That shit's hard to find. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's ready to go. I, I think uh, Montreana says he'll he'd be on like three minutes. So I, I think we're we're about ready to go, Corey. We're gonna give this round right here, and then we'll cut over to Montreana. 
this is this is an epic round. This is the culmination of an epic fight between two off-meta druids. Like we have the shaman druid. I say off-meta, but like Polytheus is very highly ranked in the DFC, and this dude's never played anything but a shaman druid, and he's like top three ranked in DFC, top three, top four. Like, guy's a savage. Is it is it really off meta if you're like top five with this build, or is it now the new meta? It's it's really a good question. At what point does the build become? Uh, is it no longer off meta? Like, because you got to figure at some point the hammered in was off meta. You remember when zealots were a thing, and then someone comes in, they're just like, "Oh, look at this new build, man! I've got the hammered in. A little bit of a glitch here going on with the, with the concentration here." <laughs> We use this off meta hammered in build and now it's just all over the place when you see people doing pvm and shit you see a lot more fire druids now man it might be actually the way to go that was how surely Sirius got to 99 on a druid he, he made a he made a shaman druid well i'm telling you might be the, might be the new polytheus not in a lot of trouble so far he's done a great job at, at avoiding the tele locks of steez that, that has been what Steez has seen the most success with, is when he gets these Tully locks going and absolutely savagely punishes Polytheus on every frame of the Tully. It's wild. By the way, quick j Ra, My dude, thank you so much for that uh, Legend tier membership, my friend. Big cheers to you. Yeah, I'm so glad they kept it in, though, X. Can you imagine how bad a Din would be if we didn't have the Hammered in? Like, just, just think for a minute. If the Din didn't have the Hammered In variant, how bad would a Din be? Like, everyone's like, oh man, we have the Tesla Din. We'd have the, the Dragon Din. Yeah, that's probably what we'd have. We'd have a nice little P1 farmer. We, we'd have FOH now, like 20 years later. Like, in, in this, we'd finally have FOH that could do something in PDM. But even FOH now is outclassed by H Din. Like, any any non-noob player, after they actually get real gears, building an h in and not an fo h in Yeah. Yeah, I wish they would have kept the Shockwave bug in. I don't, I don't know why they patched that still. It wasn't like it was broken. One hundred and twenty-nine Swedish krona from Jakob Malmgren. Not a bribe. <laughs> Jakob! Yeah, not a bribe at all. Look, uh, Montreano, let's just uh, let's just do a couple of things. We'll put Bunch down for a win, and uh, I don't know what happened. We're just gonna throw down uh, that also Elk Brew won. I don't know how it happened. I don't know what happened, but uh, yeah, don't ask me. You didn't see it. Okay, you didn't say you weren't here. You were AFK. Trust me. Just just put it in the data. Don't ask any questions. Big cheers. Thank you so much, Jakob. Well, what happened? I hit the shrine. I was a little under fifty percent. Uh, if you want to continue. Oh, what happened? Did he hit the Did he hit the well? That's all right. Just try to fix it. Yeah, hold up. So these guys are in. These guys are in this game. All right, hold up. What was his? I'm gonna scroll back. What? What? What actually happened there? So he was. There was Polytheus. Uh, Polytheus is. We weren't actually looking at his point of view. Interesting. Okay. Now Polytheus is half. He was a little under half. I mean, I'll just go in and I'll just go in and smite. Uh, I'll just go in and smite C's. Like that'll be fine. I'll just I'll just go in and smack him down to half. Like it should be fine. And then whatever Polly reps back in the meantime, just because I know it's hard for Polytheist to like opportunistically get in there. So good at password cracking it's not even funny 
Just don't make games, bro. We'll we'll crack them. We'll crack we'll crack the passes. Oh shit, we gotta. Let me rejoin for Ravens. All right, <laughs> I was gonna say I'm getting beat up by Ravens. I'm get I'm getting beat up. Oh, I don't even have grief. Hold on, let me get grief. Not in town. I have the sword that I was meant to beat Llama with. Yeah, we'll just smack him down to half. That'll be fine. We'll we'll smack him down to half. We'll call it good. All right, good enough. It might be a little more than half. Here, we'll, let's cut over. But that's what you get. That's what you get. All right, good enough. Yep, that, that's that's good enough. That's close. Yep. All right, let's do it. Yep. Uh, dual fix. No problem. That shit happens, and it's in the rules. If it happens like that, players do their best to fix it. I think that was a fair fix. Well, the thing is with restarting is restarting still benefits uh, the way that I see it. It still benefits Steez to restart the round because all Steez needs and all he's been looking for the entire duel is a good chain. That's like what he's waiting on. And that's what Polytheist has denied him and tried to gain a slight advantage through like picking him apart in all of these exchanges without getting chained. So if you let them reset, then all of the work that Polytheus has done to get his opponent down to half is just like it all negated. You know what I mean? Like, and then you just get that because Polytheus can get one tapped here, or not one tapped, but he can get chain locked and essentially killed in seconds. And that's very it's very hard for Polytheus to do that versus his opponent. So instead it's just like, alright, what we'll do is we'll just smite him to about half, and then whatever Polytheus reps, just like we'll call that fair. Yeah, because he has to be opportunistic. The thing is, if 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 he gets chained, like Polytheus almost can't even stop and like and try to respond to it. A lot of times, what Poly can do is like he'll stop in the like mid chain and he'll throw like a molten boulder or something like that. And now, granted, he could try that, but if he does it and he stays in place and like doesn't try to get away, like that could be very bad. Like those ravens literally will pick him apart. Like, this is what he has to do. He has to kind of stay mid-range versus Steez. And Steez just needs a very, like, a very opportunistic chain. And that's what Polly has to do. He has to lead him into those volcanoes. That was very nicely done. Leads him right into that volcano. And even when he does, like, we're, we're talking, like, maybe 500 damage there. Like, you know, and, and that was just very well placed. Very well executed from Polly. Ooh, and a big hit there from Steez. That one might have connected. Let's check it out. Let's let's check and see what Polytheus is at. Now nah, he's looking good. Polytheus looking good. Yeah, I think Polytheus is in the lead, and Polytheus is now picked up on the cadence of Steez. Right, he's picked up on the cadence. He's now trying to lead him into a volcano. So if you see this, he's uh, Polytheus is kind of walking around a little bit, and when he walks, he sets up these volcanoes. Yeah, and he's doing some work versus Steez. Steez has got he's got his his work cut out for him now. Now Polytheus is actually encouraged to sort of telly stomp because the risk that he can take, he's probably going to get three chopped by those ravens, two or three chopped. But at the same, you know, depending on what they hit, if they hit his oak first, they could two chop him. But at the same time, like, he could easily get a Molten Boulder in in that time, like, while Steez holds down on that Tally Lock. So now, now Steez has an uphill battle. He's very low. He's he's probably going to try to at least rep back some. It'd be very it'd be very odd to see him completely push the pressure here. He might be just be trying to get in and let the, let the Ravens do their work from mid-range, which that's certainly not a spot you want to be in versus Polytheus. He'll win that mid-range battle all day. But I, I guess Steez is okay, like semi okay. He's he's really not horrible for life right now. He's probably yeah. Look at this. He's probably about twenty percent. 
18 to 20 percent dude and uh yeah so like he still has room to do the chain he still could pull it off but man time is ticking away he still has the option though and that's what he's looking for the thing is he's got to do he's got to do more than just the random stomps like every once in a while you'll see him try to get this name lock he'll try to do these stomps but it's very rare that the ravens will actually hit in that exchange like he he needs that nasty chain by the way congrats on your win foozer he's using twister to get the to get the stun uh because it, the twister can hit and make give the swirlies right uh and if he gets the swirlies and then he gets a chain lock uh the the pets because he's a summon druid, the pets will push Polytheist into uh, hit recovery animation, keeping him in one spot, letting the pets, like, pick away at him. And, like, giving him even more opportunities for the ravens to get in those big hits. So I would assume that's why he uses that twister. Yeah, he's a summoning druid, bro. Yep. We, we've allowed a special exception tonight so that the summoning druid and the summoning druid only can go full zoo. Yeah, leave it to Steez, dude. Leave it to Steez to come into the DFC with a summoning druid. He's like, yo, man, I got I got a really weird druid. Just don't give me a paladin. I'm like, alright. Alright, usually, usually that's an easy win for a for a druid. Oozer OP. <laughs> he caught him, Coolio. You caught him. Got him. He had to turn off his hacks for the stream. What did you expect? He might catch these hammies. That's right. You never know. We're gonna we're gonna have to give him a we're gonna have to give him challenge him with a true hammered in here real soon, Jay. Could be now now though if we're looking at this and being real about it steez is in a lot of trouble not a ton of life lap uh rife life rep on the build so there's been a lot of whiskey tonight boys i'm sorry uh, I, I i haven't actually drank whiskey in a long time and now we're catching up uh but look not a lot of life rep on his build and he's to the point where it's gonna be hard for him to chain like, it, it's going to be hard for him to get in and do what he needs to do. So he's going to try to be opportunistic. He's, he's kicking around on the outside, just waiting for it. We we can't look away. Polythe is so close. So close to cinching up this extremely close duel. And, man, bravo for these guys. Like... Dude, Polytheist has literally made a DFC career off from what would what could be considered the most off-meta successful druid of all time. And now you've got Steez coming in, making a very close 4-3 uh, duel. Bro, by the way, Steez, if you want to show off this druid, bro, if you want to show this guy off when you pick up your gear, I think there'd be a lot of people that would enjoy seeing what you're using as a summoning druid, man. Like, if you could flash that gear to us real quick, I think there would be some people that could appreciate it. Like, yeah, okay, Suicide Branch, interesting. Much like uh, much like Polytheus, he was using the same thing in this, much like a Wind Druid. Also using Crown of Ages for that DR. I like it. A 120, 28, 15. Oh, so close to being absolute godly amulet there. But other than that, dude, look at this. This is very interesting. It's practically almost the same gear as like a Shaman or even really for this specific matchup, like a NATO Druid. The only difference is he's got summoning charms. What has he done? What have you done with the skill tree, bro? You gotta show us this. You gotta show us what you've done with that skill tree. Okay, so this is base 20 in Raven. That's the most important thing. And I'd imagine he's maxed out every single synergy to that Raven. With yeah, exactly, because these things are hitting like a Mac truck. And that will take 80 skills right there. So the rest of them go into Oak Sage. Okay, and he's also got uh it looks like yeah, some some other some other one point wonders there, uh, in Twister and Cyclone armor, which is kind of what you see uh, from a Shaman build as well. Like, oh man, that's very interesting. What a crazy build, man! Thanks for showing that off. That is wild, brother. 
Crazy, crazy build. 4-3 against Polytheist. A very close back and forth. He says, thought I could do it for a sec there. Yeah, that was close. That was a good duel. I was very impressed. I thought for sure after that first round, there was no way. I thought Polly was just going to come out easy with it. But that was close. Yeah, super even back and forth. 4-3 is no joke. That's for sure. Polly was shaking his boots. Yeah, wild, man. Thanks for showing that off. Great build. Let's pop over to Montreana in his melee duel here. Looks like he's in his stash in the tank here a little bit. Could be trying to mix something up. What's he got with this dual sword? What's up with the dual swords? What is what is he doing? Oh, is he going up against... Oh, he's going up against Law. He's going up against Trothelgar. He's getting this in. Okay. Okay, I get it now. I was going to say melee, dual swords and melee might be a little bit of a... Uh, well, <laughs> a little questionable. Don't switch off from your bow gear just yet. You forgot to bow. That's going to be bad. He doesn't have that bow up. That's that's not good. Does Har the Wolverine add damage to Ravens? Good question. I actually don't know that. I actually don't know. That'd be a great question for Steez. Does it? I don't think it does. Because Ravens work a little different. They don't... They don't get the buffs that every other pet does like you can bow your wolves and your and your bear but you can't bow your ravens i don't think like fanaticism works with ravens yeah i was gonna like you can't really interact with ravens much like your your opponents can't interact with them you can't really interact with them think of them like ravens are like traps right unless you have something that's like boosting your you know that's that's directly boosting that it, it's really like like plus the skills it's really hard to tell oh my god dude montriana getting in there doing some work versus trafalgar bro is getting in holy shit close duel unbelievable dude montriana has come a long way dude trafalgar a seasoned vet popping in here the, the the dude without discord popping in here in montreana this guy has come a long way i remember the days i hate to out you like this montreana but i remember the days this guy was a little bit discouraged all right he was a little bit discouraged thinking that he wasn't making any progress in pvp right kind of coming into this completely green at one point trying out new things one of the most creative players in all of the dfc but dude, just to see that right there, he didn't win that duel, but just to see the way he played, that looked fucking good. Montreana might might run these off meta builds in his own right, but dude is getting good. Dude is getting good, man. I don't I don't know who he's been practicing with, but it's been the right person. Oh my god, big hits there. Nice hits from Montreana, bro. It's so good to see him doing this. So good to see him getting these, these close range hits in these very, very precise telly stomps. And this guy's on partial brawler here, too. He's chucking these, he's chucking some shit. I don't know what he's throwing. I don't, I don't know what's in those hands, but bro, he's throwing them. He's throwing them. Man, it's so cool to see that. And his opponent is low, dude. Trafalgar is low. Montreana trying to be cautious here. This is where I think, honestly, having something like an Oak Sage from, uh, from Nature's Peace could really pay some serious dividends. He's got his opponent very low, but now he's at, an, he's at a huge risk of catching like, oh my god, there it is. And a win for both players. Now 2-1. GG, Montreana gets there. Very well played. But now, when when you don't have that Oak Sage, man, you just you open up the doors to getting hit by those random, like, random invisible bone spirit trains or just bone spirits in general, right? Like, you have no pet to necessarily protect you from those hits. It's just wild. I don't think so. It If buffs don't work, debuffs don't either. Yep. I would agree. 
Yeah. Yeah. And it's by far the biggest, like, heaviest hitting thing on a summon druid is those is those ravens. It's not even close. Like, you, th you think it might be the pets, the wolves, the bear, maybe. No, it's the ravens. Yeah, and that's pretty impressive. With the corner map, too. Mon Montreana, the type of player that, like, there was, there was a decision that Montreana made early on in D2 where he's like, I don't like the map in the center. And he kept it all the way in the corner dudes never changed it ever since it's it's almost like the people that play with quick cast on the keys it's technically with some builds it's technically an advantage but it's so hard because some people have played with like you know f keys or hot keys for so long that switching to quick cast is like it is it puts such a dent in their early game like it makes them so bad at pvp trying to commit to that that like it's hard for them to retrain their brain for it and uh you know same could be said. Same could be said for uh, for you know for doing what Montreana is with the map. Like a lot of people just do, um, you know, they have the map in the center. But switching switching to that corner map, dude. If you've got used to it and that's how you've played, man, you can do it. Look at this overuse of that bone prison. Oh my god! And he trapped himself. Montreana punished him for it. Look at this. Look at this overly defensive play from Trafalgar here, just casting all these bone prisons, not doing shit with them. And he gets zerked by Montreana. Montreana give him a, giving him a schooling. And what's going on? Giving him a bit of a schooling. Showing him, showing him what happens. Bro, this is wild. And he's he's dodging these bone spirits too here, like very well so far. But oh man, I was gonna say it's only a matter of time, I think, before one of those just connects. It's just wild. I'd love to see him with some sort of pet. He's also trying to finish with the throw right now. But man, he could be paying the ultimate price for it. I was gonna say I could see that telly stomp coming from a mile away. I was like, man, this could be over if if. Montreana up worlds here. You could see it. You could see Trafalgar hold that name lock. Like as Montreana was running away, I was like, he's either gonna get bone prisoned or he's gonna stomp him. Wow, I can't believe he didn't just kill him there. He just connected with a clean whirlwind. I think Montreana thought that he had it. I think he he whirlwinded through him and thought that he had it. I thought that he had it too. Like I think he stopped whirling there because he's like, yep, that's it. Like that's gonna connect and that's gonna be it. Like, I think we thought the same thing. Jay, I, I'd hate to embarrass you like that, man, with how kind and generous you've been. Bro, I, I hate to do it. The only dins that have ever beat me, I was lagging. Uh, that's, that's actually not even totally exaggeration, all right? Sound beat me once. We were on West ping was bad all right i'm just saying he beat me once ping was bad never never got the rematch i don't think all right never got rematch on real ping just saying i, I might be a cripple but those din skills it's like riding a bike man your body and your mind just take over. They just take over. It's 3-1 uh, so far in favor of Trafalgar. Nice zerking from Montreana. Getting right in through that bone prison. I love that he whirlwinded his way in there too. Like That was very ballsy, very good play. Like, he knew that he couldn't get a good spot without whirlwinding his way in and chose to whirlwind into the bone prison. Luckily, Trafalgar got the hell out of there. Like, Montreana is playing very well. Nice hits from Montreana. Done a great job of avoiding a lot of damage here so far. And Trafalgar winning the exchange there for that one. But he's got a he's got a long uphill battle. Some nice zerks from Montreana. Now three two. 
Very good duel, an impressive performance from Mon from our boy Montriana, dude. And he does it with the dual sword wielding barb. The brawler. This guy's on a brawler. He's chucking them. He's whatever he's throwing. He's chucking some knives, bro. I think he is. Now that you mention it, I think he is. Which is interesting. Because that will actually get absorbed by some of Trafalgar's bone armor. Because the concentrate is actual physical damage. But there could be a reason for it. I trust that he's he's consing because uh, this is Montreana. And I, I trust that he's done something with this. I, I trust that there's a reason for that. Like, he's knowing him, he's thought this out. And it, it definitely worked for him. Like, it actually worked. I was going to say, dude. I was going to say, it's coming. It's coming. He's going to stomp. Trafalgar getting very predictable with those stomps. Going in with the teeth. Oh, my God. Actually doing some nasty damage with them, too. Bro, he's playing with him now. He's like, all right. He's like, all right. Oh, man. Dude, big hits. Big hits from the throw there. And now he's connecting. And there it is. He gets in. Fancy footwork from Montreana, evening up the score. Very nicely done. I'm so proud of this guy, dude. I'm so proud of this guy. But bro, Trafalgar was trying to toy with him there. But Montreana's putting him right in his place. He's saying, look, you can't be doing that, bro. You can't be doing it. You can't you can't be trying to can't be trying to ace me with teeth. No, it's it's 3-3. Three, three. The draw counted as uh as a win for both. Draw counted as a win for both. It's 3-3. Three, three. Can you leech life off from prisons? No. Uh, prisons are like, they're weird. They count as like uh, undead, where you're not really going to leech much life off of them. I, they don't, it, life leech doesn't really work with prisons. Uh, you can get life off from kill on prisons though. So you're, you will get life on kill from breaking a prison. So they count as constructs. Okay, Eric. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think life leech works on them. In my experience, you can't leech life. But if you kill a prison, sometimes you can actually get a lot of life because it will count as multiple minions or constructs or whatever. So your your kill by like, if you, if you have life on kill, such as from Drax or Enigma, that will count. I'm not sure. We'll have to check the data, dude. Especially with the state that melee is in right now, we like to give we like to give the title shots to the people that that deserve them. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a rematch. Like that's also possible with like v Vegeta versus you, because Vegeta is like undefeated besides versus you. You're you're Vegeta's first loss in the DFC. So like at this point in the stage and at the in the stage in the age of melee. I think it would be rare for someone to have as many wins as Vegeta. Like, so that's also a possibility. I'll have to I'll have to look at the data though. I'll, I'll have to check it out. Fancy footwork from Montreana. Well, no, because eventually someone's gonna rack up enough losses, right? And there's other people like it much like it works in hld right like if you have enough rematches eventually it will deny somebody like other people are going to be catching up with, with wins because they're not dueling those people right so like eventually it'll get there and there it is man montreana with a very very close duel versus trafalgar trafalgar barely gets there 4-3 gg man
I'll make it official on the Discord. What a hell of a guy, man. Close duel. So proud of this guy, man. He's come a long way. Like, Trafalgar ain't no chump. I've dueled him on the Din, dude, and he was a tough Necro. But the fact that Montreano went 4-3 with him is impressive. When I saw that on paper, I was like, oh, man, I'm a little scared for Montreano here. I'm not sure if the Sword Barb can do it. He proved me wrong, dude. He definitely could have done it. He was very close. That was that was nasty. Nicely done. And who is next? Who have we got? Look, we might have to... Bro, we might have to do this. Jay, where you at, man? We, we might have to do it. I hate to say, but... <laughs> Bro, you want to... You want to test out the din? We already... We already embarrassed Llama. Alright, you, you let me know game. You let me know game. This is a central game, probably not going to be ideal. Hold on, let me get my versus Din gear. Are, are you a VT or a Hammerdin? Okay, H Din? Okay. Alright, I'm going to do this then. Alright, we're going to... We're going to do the versus H Din setup. Uh, Alright, we've got that. We probably need cast. Uh, we don't need this. This is where we'll get casts. Yeah, looking good. Yeah, that's fine. Alright. Alright, H didn't set up. Alright, man. Uh, no, just, this will just be, you know, just a little... This little lesson, you know, after dueling the top din, you'll you'll easy all the rest of the dins. It won't even be close. You know, after after this, it's like a fine lesson in the fine tuning of the din. You know, hold on, let me lock the cursor in here. This little little bonus duel. While we do this, though, actually, while you get ready, let's vote for fight of the night for the fine folks that have put up. Some incredible performances tonight. Well, let's start a poll. Wait, no? Yeah, Drax is legit, dude. Drax is legit. All right, hold. It's going to be hard to narrow this down to four. Your vote for Fight of the Night. All right, I think Polytheist. Versus Steez. Uh, Shaman versus Summon Druid has got to be in consideration. And then we've got that one for sure. Llama versus cool dude. I feel like I couldn't win that one because the the prize is forum gold and try sending llama forum gold. We might have to just buy him jaw runes. We'll do it though. We'll we'll buy him some jaw runes if y'all like that one. That was pretty epic. I also liked uh, Vegeta versus Nightfall was pretty insane. Uh, melee champ. That was so close. Back and forth, dude. So good. There's been so many tonight. There's also Lamp versus Max. J versus Havito. J versus Trafalgar. Dude, Montreana versus... Yeah. Dude. This is what I'm putting up. Y'all can vote on that. Hold up. I don't know why it won't let me start the poll here. Oh, oh, I'm too high on some of these characters. Hold up. All right, there's that. This is too much. All right, there we go. There we go. All right. Your vote. The winner will get. Both players will get 500 forum gold as a prize. If it's Llama, we're going to have to buy him some jaw runes with 500 forum gold. Because I'm pretty sure he doesn't JSP. 
will offer him the the option. Montreal on silent colon melee. All right, hold up. Let's get this one round in here. Uh, go Jay. All right, here we go. Okay, yeah, he's uh. Oh, I clicked out of my window. When you duel the top den, bro, it just sets you it sets you up. You you'll never lose against another den, bro. Now you know. All right, so it's uh what game are y'all in? Do you want me to, do you want me to pop in for uh for melee, bro? Silent going melee right now. I don't see a stream active, but I could pop in. Is it ZPK? Are y'all in ZPK? Let's see what we can do. Nope. Yo, just join up on uh, on ZPK if y'all want. Uh, we'll, we'll check it out from here. All right, there we go. Silent. Silent is in the game. And a hostile silent. Silent on a level 92. Yeah, that was sick. Montreal versus Trafalgar. Very good duel, man. I'm so proud of that guy. He's come, he's come such a long way. Those barb skills were on point, dude. Those were really good. Like, man, oh, man. Uh, just one. Just one Nightfall. Easy to crack. Llama banned on JSP? No way. No shot. I'm pretty sure he has a JSP. The, the, there's no shot they would ban him. Like, why Why would N Jaguar ban him? Way back in the day when I did that video uh, about JSP, I actually reached out to N Jaguar to try to get like some sort of response before I made it. He never responded to me in time, but like many months later, uh, he responded to me. I asked him actually a clutch question that I wanted to talk about in the video. And like it was whether or not anyone had offered to purchase JSP, like Blizzard specifically. I can't remember his response. I don't think it was true. Like it was a rumor that was going around. I don't think it was true. Uh, but I'll, I'll have to double check. But um, yeah, like that was that was big. Uh, I got a message from N Jaguar. I felt important back in the day. It was crazy. I was like, wow, man, I've, I've made it. I, I made it. That was that was when I knew. He'd seen my video. That was when I knew. Felt felt like I made it. Was good. All right. Well, Nightfall just jumps in here. Hostiles me. All right, there he is. That's, uh, wait, this is Brutar's Bruno, isn't it? 
Look. God damn nightfall. I hate to really hate to embarrass you, bro. While we wait, you know, while we wait for this duel to commence. Really hate to do you like this, you know. My click and hold skills are really good. Hate to do you like that, bro, but that's how that belt's gonna get taken, okay? That's how it's gonna get taken. Alright. That's how that belt's going down. Alright, you better hold on to it. You better clench it tight. Because Cooley might be the budget din. But Cooley gonna get there. I got jumped. I got jumped. We're, ju we're just being a referee here. All right, this is going to be silent versus silent versus Montreana. Who is who is Montreana in the game? Is is he in here? Is it is it has? Hold up. Who? He's Medusa. All right, he is Medusa. The Amazon dude, Montreana on an Amazon. That's right. He was telling me that he was on an Amazon. Oh, that's so sick, dude. He's on a jabs on. This is the first jabs on we've seen in Melee DFC. Montreana himself. Impossible. The incredibly well-performing Barb tonight. So impressed with that duel versus Trafalgar. Wow, close pull, man. We'll give this... <laughs> How dare you? How dare you give it to Lama? You know how awkward of a conversation that's going to be? <laughs> Fucking A. <laughs> we'll give this one another few minutes. Yeah, hey, by the way, Llama, uh, we won fight of the night, and the prize is uh, 500 forum gold. What do you, what do you want to do? What do you, what do you want to do? <laughs> like, but, like, bro. <laughs> How dare you? All right, here we go. These guys starting it off. Oh my God, big hits from Silent right off the bat. Bro, was he going in with a dual wielding? Oh, dude, he is. He's going in with no shield. Montreana going in with no shield. Very ballsy, very risky, very off meta in melee. No shield is pretty rough. He can use inner sight. But man, oh man, that's pretty rough. No block is like you can get the dodge, avoid, and evade, and probably they'll miss you like 50% of the time. But man, with the defense and the ability to hit, yeah, and he did use inner sight by the looks. But Silent got those smacks early on, dude. Whew. Man, we, we might see Montreana switch it up here. He, he might switch it up. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised to see a slight switch up to block. He he might have been trying something out there to see how good that did, see how much he could rely on dodge, avoid, and evade. And I would expect no less from Montiana. Like chat like testing that out to see if you can actually get there and do such devastating damage that it doesn't matter. But yeah, he does switch to the block because like at, at some point, or oh no, he might just be with bow. He might just he might just be on bow side here. Might just be doing some cube bow. He might still... We, we're not totally convinced that he's given up on it yet. Oh, he hasn't. He has not. Oh, my God. But even that... He even got a big hit in there. And it, like, 20% it chunk silent. Yeah, that's a risky play with no shield. Risky play. All right, bros, we'll, we'll end it. Bros, thank you for fight of the night. Me and Llama, that was really good. Like I said, I kind of felt bad. Uh, I didn't mean to be so cocky. I thought I was actually going to lose.
We get we getting cracked. Oh, here we go. Hold up, I'm just typing a message to Llama. I'll let you know what it says. Holy shit. Montreana goes down yet again. I think it's 4 0. All right, this is what I said. Uh, he actually sent me a message that I didn't even notice. He goes, he says, good duels. 85-15 means I need to play Meteor so much more. Sorry, I didn't notice these messages. It says he needed to, needed to play Meteor so much more. Can't expect to land nine fireballs. I disagree. Uh, as a as a longtime fireball player on the ES Fire Sork, I trash all dins, and it's not even close. Like, it, you need to be Marvel-level din to punish me on a din. Uh, like, it, it's... I'll land fireballs on your ass and Meteor all day, and you won't touch me. Like... You know, it's tough. It's tough. And if you do, I'll laugh. You'll get me to one and I'll laugh. And I'll be like, you still gonna hit me. Like, I'm ES, you know what I mean? But landing, like, nine fireballs, not really that hard. Uh, you know, it just, it takes a lot. It, ta it takes a lot to catch a sorceress. Uh, Din doesn't have a good matchup versus one. Uh, but, that aside, I think the real, the real problem was ES. Like, no ES made it so that hams fucking hurt. Uh, and then I said, yeah. I said, by the way, we won fight of the night. The prize is 500 forum gold per fighter. Want that, or do you want me to pay you in jaw runes? He goes, LOL, our fight? <laughs> I'll, I'll see if he's still in there. Maybe I can chat with him. Hold up. He might still be in there. Yo, Llama, you around? No, I, I don't hear him. It might be AFK. I still see him in the join the stream. Oh, he, he, he might not be. Wanna chat? I'm, I'm still in join the stream. Might be, might be, it might work this time. Mr. Lima. Hold up, we might... 6-0 so far, by the way. Montreana paying the price for no shield. Ah, he says can at the moment, but tomorrow we can. Alright, word, word, word. Alright. It used to be Dwarf or Infernos. Well, he hasn't answered the question. So we might... Uh, we might just skate by. If he doesn't answer it, maybe we'll just... Maybe we'll just put it towards the next winner. <laughs> might have to put it towards the next winner. Telling him I would have needed five or six hammers to kill you with ES.
All right, we'll see this. Update on this, it's 7-0 silent. Feels bad, man. I kind of want to see Montreana eke it out. But dude, no block is so rough. Yeah, I, I really think, uh, like, oh my god, dude. Dude, for no block, he just got some nasty hits. Like, look at this. For no block, he just chunked him like 80%. Okay, what? I think that's what he's waiting on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think Llama is just like newer to the newer to the Sork. I think his Sork versus any other sorceress would be very good. Like that setup with Obsession is very good versus other sorceresses, possibly even other casters, but mainly other sorceresses. When you go up against literally anything besides a sorceress, you want ES. Like can can attest. I don't even build a cold sork without ES these days because it's such a huge survivability tool. Like it's it's just so good. You know, it, like it, it's true. I mean, when I go up against the Hammerden, if I don't want to get hit first of all, I'm not getting hit. But if you are a good Hammerden and you can do like the you know the three piece combo and all of this, I'll probably still punish you for trying it and land a meteor on you and take a couple of hammers. Like, and I'll consider it a fair exchange. Even still, dude, he doesn't last long, but he's chunking. Montreana might be on to something here. He might be on to something. Yeah, wild. Wild. I would love to see that jabs on with an actual shield. I think he's thrown all defenses to the wind. And we can see so far now that it might not necessarily pay off. But wow. Like, we've certainly discovered something. That's uh, that's big damage. Alright, so the Cooley fight of the night. This is a tough one. Uh, I'm going to pick probably the close runner-up. Uh, although, there's so many. Hold on, let me think. Sogi versus Foos was really good, too. Steez versus Polly was interesting. Went on kind of long, but it was interesting. Punch versus Elk Brew was really good. Yeah, you know what? I think it's Punch versus Elk Brew. Uh, not only because Elk Brew uh, was so generous, okay? That has nothing to do with it. There is no pay to win here, okay? There is no pay to win. It's not that. It's the fact that, uh, dude, it, yeah, by the way, Nightfall just cheated. Uh, it's also the fact that the duel was actually really good. Like, it was back and forth. Elk Brew was picking up on, uh, on a lot of what Punch was putting down. Like, he was picking up on his game plan, but Punch is just hyper-aggressive. There's very few duels that I ever see with Punch that I don't just believe they're immediately fight of the night. And that's certainly one of them. So, uh... So I'm going to put it down. First of all, thank you guys for voting me and Llama in for Fight of the Night. Really appreciate it. And I'm also going to give per just a random performance of the night to Steez. I think that's only fair. Like, Llama didn't claim his forum gold, so we're just going to call it. Steez, performance of the night. Uh, punch, Elk, Fight of the Night. I think it's only fair. I mean, I won the forum gold anyway, so I'm just going to re-gift it. I think bringing in... Here's the thing. That's the spirit of DFC, right? Is trying new things like that. Bringing in interesting builds. I think that was really cool. Yeah. Like... That's that's kind of what I want to see. I, I like taking a little bit of control of, of that, too. Because, honestly, like... It, it's fun, but with votes, I feel like it can be manipulated by popularity and all of this stuff. But also with with me giving away something targeted, I like that you guys have a voice in it too, because that's what matters. But also, I like that we can just see something and I can be like, yeah, we need more of that, right? And just like, we can just we can just reward for it. It's not much, but it's something. And it's a, a kind, generation, uh, kind donation from the generous people in the community here so that's what we'll do we'll award that to uh steez for performance of the night punch elk for fight of the night also me and llama for fight of the night 
That was awesome. Thank you guys for that. Big cheers to you guys. Appreciate it. Plus the thunderstorm. Yeah, that's right. GG, man. That was sick. Bros, good night of fights, man. This shit was wild. I appreciate you guys for being here and for joining me for this. Bros, I'm going to I'm going to try. I'm going to make an honest effort to stream tomorrow. I haven't streamed lately in the days that I have usually streamed that I started streaming before the surgery, mainly because it's hard to play with one hand, but also like I've been all kinds of fucked up, like just all over the place. But now I've got this stand up desk. You know, you never know what could happen. It's it's the spaceship. We're, look, it's it's going somewhere. It might look like I'm shrinking. Okay. It, it might. It only looks like that from afar, though. The new setup in the spaceship now rises, and that's just what it's all about, man. So uh, we might be able to try that out. That might alleviate some of the some of the stress, some some of the pain. Uh, fix the. I mean, there's an invisible wall here the green screens don't exist in this universe all right but look the point is we've got some fixing to do but also point is thank you guys for joining me this is always the highlight of my week i'm gonna try to see you tomorrow uh for a stream early on we've got some things to do the next chapter begins okay we're gonna we're gonna do it ggs boys thanks again for joining me great night of fights we'll see you guys next time thanks again peace See you in the Discord if you're not already there.